Anyway, is that the Peloton in the back? Oh, thank you for noticing. Instead of Pickle Rick, I've become, I've become Peloton Rick. I'm, I'm just trying to say, did I, uh, did I get a PB on the Peloton today? Yes, absolutely. If you've ever tried exercising, you know it is one of the most grueling challenges a gamer can undergo. The temptation to let it slip and return to the ever addictive animal slot machine whispers at the edges of your mind. One man decided to take on this challenge, and through hundreds of hours of millennial music, a near-death experience, and countless people talks, he has taken his lower body to an inhuman level of dumpiness. Look at that dump truck! This is the history of Northern Lion Peloton personal best. Then she regressed first, and I just grinded her down, man. It's like three to four kilojoules a song, just adding to the lead, adding to the lead. The resistance 65, cadence 75, high five, high five, high five, just ripping up like 500 leaderboard spots in 60 seconds. Are you bulking for summer? No, I have a job. I'm trying to get in good shape so I don't die. I don't care if my back looks like a stingray. I just want to you know, not die before my time. Live a little bit longer on God's green earth. Spread more joy to the masses. Do you go to indoor cycling classes? No, I've been lifting small weights so that later I can lift larger and larger weights. 30 seconds. But um, I was thinking about getting a Peloton. Not now, but you know, if we move in the near future to a place with more space. Peloton is a very, very fancy uh, indoor exercise bicycle. Or just get a bike. I have a bike, but it does rain like for about five months of the year. There's like a 66% chance it's raining outside. Plus... It, Here's the thing. It's expensive, but like, it's just nice to not be outside as well. You know, I'm becoming like a little bit of a misanthrope, but if I could like spend money for privacy, that's a trade I'm willing to make in a lot of circumstances at this point in my life. No, I'm not turning into a hermit. I leave this house all the time. How else would I get groceries? Yeah, that's the other thing is that, you know, I get uh, chat explained a lot about how to live your life. But I do, I mean, like, I spend all day talking to other people. And then when I'm like, eh, if possible, I'd like to be by myself. People are like, whoa, you don't want, <laughs> why are you so antisocial? I talk at all times. And an increasing percentage of that is, is a social discussion. You know, on Twitch, in a live collaborative fashion, instead of uh, just on YouTube talking to myself. Collaborative question mark yeah that's right I really do do most of the work myself so I don't want to give Chad too much credit you know what you guys should uh, get me for a uh, boss day citizens have contacted their state <laughs> not my boss day. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay me to uh, all right let's, uh, boss day. <laughs> let's hear this one well right. it's not till like October anyway don't freak yeah, out I'm ready. yeah let's let's tell me about boss day you should get me a peloton what, a Peloton? Yeah, no, a Peloton. why are you falling for all these like gimmicky things? I'm not falling for it. You're falling for What's it. What's a Peloton? I'm getting a free Peloton. What's a Peloton? It's one of those. It's like a. It's a bike with an iPod attached to it. Oh. It's not an iPod. It's a freaking <laughs> like twenty inch screen. I know, I know what he's talking about. Why don't you just get an iPad? Oh, we already have one. And about yeah. nine uh, nine Amazon Fire tablets. If you chain them up in parallel, you almost have enough processing power to run Flappy Bird. I don't know what to say, man. Some days you just wake up. I don't know why I thought I could walk into that enemy. That's good timing, because I was starting to get a little full of myself. Some days, though, you just wake up and, you know, you don't even know you're a god gamer until your hands touch the controller. Which, for me, because I'm a professional, usually I would say, you know, I wake up, uh, I drink 40 sips of water, 
uh, out of my hands from the kitchen sink until I feel like I want to hurl. And then uh, I hop on the exercise bike that's in my bathroom. It's a very niche uh, reference. It's a reference to the, uh, a profile of the CEO of Peloton. That was in, uh, I think it was in the New York Times this weekend. Of course, I, I don't like read that stuff to get inspired. I read that stuff to be like, hey, these guys are always kind of weird. Let's, let's see what this guy's unique brand of weirdness is. Hey, I gotta tell you, for anybody that's not familiar, Peloton, uh, they make exercise bikes, and they had, uh, I mean, they're, they're pretty well known for a number of reasons. One of which is, uh, that the bikes are pretty expensive, for sure. You know, like four figures, I think. Um, maybe, maybe even, like, mid four figures? Like, like, three or four grand? Um, now I will say, is that very expensive by exercise bike standards? Yeah. Um, it, it comes with some extra value propositions, you know, you, you get like, there's an, basically an iPad hooked up to it um, that you can stream like live uh, classes from a variety of different instructors. And I, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm instantly coming across as negative, because I actually think like, my, my dad has like a, I wouldn't call it a knockoff, but he has like a fast follow Peloton made by Bowflex, and he talks my ear off about it. Like, literally every time I see him. He's like, you gotta get either a Peloton or a Bowflex bike. And I'm like, Dad, I get it. Quarantine and fatherhood are hitting me hard, okay? But but no, he, he loves it. But anyway, the other thing about Peloton that's very noteworthy is um, they had an ad. Let me caffeinate here. They had an ad that went viral, like, right around last holiday season. Um, where, and you, you may know it, it's become known as, like, the Peloton wife ad, where, like, a, a wife is journaling, like, on her YouTube channel, like, the fact that her husband got her a Peloton for Christmas, and she's stoked, and then she's like, I'll put the crack of dawn to use the Peloton, and, like, I get the reason that people were upset by the ad, like, the reason that it was dunked on, because it's like, you know, I don't know how to say this without... I mean, it's not, I'm not even trying to be controversial. It's a gift that also carries kind of like a, a message, right? Like if somebody got you an exercise bike for Christmas, I suppose it's very easy to look at that and be like, you, you're calling me fat, right? But I talked about it with Kate, like she watched the ad and she was like, I don't get why people are dunking on this Peloton, Peloton ad. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> It's easy to make fun of, don't get me wrong, but also if somebody got me like a, you know, multi-thousand dollar exercise bike for, for Christmas and was like, hey, I care about your health, I would probably be like, sick. I wouldn't be like, oh, give me some Blu-rays instead. Anyway, but I, I understand, you know, I, I'm, I recognize, let's put it this way, I recognize that, uh, you know, this is a why are you booing me, I'm right sort of situation. Anyway, I'm only now realizing that I didn't finish the bit. Okay, so what's what's the bit? Well, like, the guy from Peloton was talking about how, like, he remembers, like, reading at some point that, like, you know, the key to being productive is to hydrate as soon as you wake up. So the first thing that he does is go to his bathroom sink and drink 40 gulps of water, like, from the sink into his hands. It's just one of those things where you're, like... You just can't be normal, right? Like, I, I don't think you can be, like, a normal CEO. The rest of this guy's profile was completely... He was like, I love my kids, and I take them to soccer practice, and, you know, we live in a quadrillion-dollar penthouse in the Upper East Side of Manhattan. All very relatable stuff. There's just this one part where you're like, hey, this, this guy is, like, so aggressively normal for being... Uh, insanely wealthy that you just know like some weird stuff's coming down the pipe and he's like yeah I drink out of the bathroom sink like a dog in the morning he it those were his words not mine he said I do it until I feel like I want to hurl you know they've invented like glassware you know they, they invented cups a long time ago really anyway um so that's that it's the Peloton CEO but again, I, you know, lest, lest you think I was uh, being too positive towards Peloton, I, I was in the end using this as a, as a bit to kind of dunk on the the CEO, so we, we can still st stand in solidarity with one another, at least it's the way I choose to look at it. You ever have, like, my, my, my grandma had this exercise bike when I was growing up, but the exercise bike was, like, completely manual. It was basically just, like, a wheel, and then it felt like it was on sandpaper, 
And then you like adjusted the... I guess it must have had like almost a vice on the wheel, you know, like a like a squeezing device. And then there was a little knob on the... Uh, on the handlebars, and the more you turned the knob, the more uh, friction it would apply to the wheel to make it turn harder. Or to make it harder to turn, I should say. Um, we, we've come a long way. There's no doubt about that. We have, we have definitely come a long way with respect to... Uh, with respect to exercise equipment. Oh, no, 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 but it was so good too! Okay, I'm alive, baby! Do you think you'll ever get back into the biking game? Um, honestly, like, I think I might just buy an exercise bike. Yo, get a Peloton, then we can challenge. Oh, you get- do it, I was gonna say, because basically, like, last year, my parents, uh, were like, hey, like, your dad got a Peloton, and he, like, really likes it, can we get you one? And I was like, oh, don't do it, like, the baby's coming, and, like, we don't have that much space. And then, you know, it's been like another six months of being indoors since then. And I'm like, you know what? They were right. I should have gotten the Peloton. <laughs> should have, I should have taken them up on that. So I think, Dude, I'll, I don't know if I'll get a Peloton, but I'll get something, something similar. Imagine playing Isaac with your legs. That's what a Peloton <laughs> is. <laughs> it sounds kind of negative. Really? Yeah. Like a loot box. So like, you can like pick your coach. I mean, yeah. there's a billion, there's and a million. Challenge of them. other people What's too, it? right? Yeah, it's like there's like you can there's like a live leaderboard so you can see like who's done the class or you can go hey I want to go against people in my same age bracket or okay, whatever yeah. so you get ranked but the best part is you like I mean it's kind of what do you call it parasocial paranormal relationships <laughs> I don't think that that's more of a mathis thing oh. <laughs> But um so you pick like the coach that I mean you can take whatever coach video you want but like there's some coaches that you're like, yo, they're pretty good. Oh yeah. You know, and the one that I like, when she, when she's about to turn up and be like, hey, it's about to get hard. You need to turn your dial up. She's like, yes or yes, and I'm like, uh, uh, <laughs> where's my option? And then she already got you. You know. All right. But yeah, I think I might get one. Like, uh, basically, I'm just like. You know, I I know that like oh, there's the Peloton like uh, they're they're more expensive than like other varieties, and then there's like uh, oh, they had that commercial that everyone dunked on, and I'm like, dude, I'm like, what? Too, just... Peloton had a commercial that got dunked on? Yeah, there was like the the Peloton wife commercial. I never. It's, what is it? It's like I'm not gonna dredge up like. I mean, you dredged up old. Michael Douglas. I mean, let's get dredging. Yeah, but that's, I mean, it's just like, it's not even, there's no meat to, to grind from it, you know? Oh, like, okay. there's no. It's just bad. Yeah, well, well, it's, it's, not, marketing, it's not right? bad. It's just like, if you weren't there, like, it's like, hey, oh. did you know people on the internet were mad for a reason 18 months ago? Like, let me tell you about it. But, but anyway, like, so you're I, saying there's yeah. a lot of options. No, I'm just saying, like, now I'm like, I don't care. I'd rather just, like, you know, pay for it and then have it here and then maybe use it and lose, like, 20 pounds. That seems, well, I feel like, <laughs> seems yeah. like a better option for like my overall happiness than being like, well, it's not perfect. So instead, I'm just going to <laughs> just I'm going to maintain an air of moral superiority by not ever getting it and then just die when I'm like 57 instead of 78. But I, I feel like there's a there's like a dad chart where it's like, OK, roughly around, you know, when you're having a baby and the pregnancy's going on, you, you know, you, you, you double up and eat. And yeah, then you're like, who cares? You get used to life, and, to, and then <laughs> until life gets normie again, and then once it gets normie, you're like, yeah, I should probably do some normie stuff, like work out. Yeah, you're it like, I'm not, like you're I'm like, not gonna yeah. be the parent of a newborn forever, so the excuses are quickly uh, like falling by the wayside. <laughs> is basically what it's all about. Stop asking me when I'm gonna do hot tub streams. The answer is never. Due to my copious amounts of body hair and current incarnation of the dad bod, um, I. I couldn't weather the slings and arrows of, of chat if I took my shirt off on camera. Just get over it, okay? At some point, I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm gonna buy a Peloton. I'm gonna get freaking jacked. It's gonna be incredible. I'm gonna turn into Lance Armstrong. I've already got the testicular configuration to make it work. Then I'm gonna get laser hair removal on my entire body, except on my head. Instead of a laser, I'm gonna get uh, a hair transplant, and then I'm just gonna be like, what? It just, I went, I just changed my style up. It's not a hair transplant. I just, like, I got it cut different. And then I guess it started growing back. Um, and then you're all gonna be sorry. Then you're all gonna be sorry, man. I, I could pick out one 
Now I could pick out maybe four or five MLB players, but aren't they all jacked now? Or um, no? Um, I, I mean, like I think they're pretty big. Although there have been times where you know, like, it, there, there's this joke uh, about how like you'll see a boxer and they'll be like ripped and then they say their weight and they're like 75 pounds lighter than you <laughs> and you're like oh man i gotta get my life in order that's kind of I'm, I'm now at that point when i watch baseball like so some guy will walk up to the plate and i'll be like that guy's freaking huge and they're like oh yeah he's 173 pounds <laughs> and i'm like i gotta get a peloton man this is crazy <laughs> he's 173 pounds i want to get back into running i think i'd probably cycle though because uh I mean, it's just more fun. <laughs> I do understand, like, despite what I just said about the treadmill stuff, like, uh, I'm, like, the exact opposite with biking. Like, I en I enjoy running on a treadmill. Well, I, I enjoyed it once I got into it. I enjoy cycling outside. Exercise bike, I hate it, man. Like, for whatever reason, I just, like, it feels like... I, all I feel is like the strain in my in my muscles. Then when I'm outside, I'm like, ooh, nice. Uh, wow, beautiful weather. Whoa, is that a new gelato place? And yeah, the seat. Something about the seat not moving. Like I feel like it just absolutely shreds my sit bones. But the seat kills. Anyway, I gotta get back into working out. But we're not. We're we're getting close, but we're not quite at like that level of baby autonomy yet. But it's. It's getting close. I'm also... Will you get back into lifting? No, I don't think so. In fact, like, I... Admittedly, like, 2019 to early 2020 uh, was, like, the best shape I've ever been in in my life. But now that I have a child, I'm like... Why, in, instead of trying to, like, get a 450-pound squat as a guy who is, like, a YouTuber, why didn't I just uh, jog? Then I could have gone to the into the pandemic being, like you know, 170 pounds and lean instead of like 205 pounds trying to build like a strong man body to lift heavy stones in Iceland or something. Would have served, yeah, it was fun, don't get me wrong, but it would have served me a lot better, I think, if I had, if I had been like, I mean, if I had known that the pandemic was gonna come, I might have tilted things in a little bit, but I guess that's the that's the thing is you did well. I didn't know it was coming anyway. If you did, why why were you saying anything? So now I'm like I just want to. I mean it's a long way away. Don't get me wrong, but I'm like I gotta become one of those like 50 year old guys that's like uh, like I don't want to even do like an Iron Man or anything like that. I mean that's so far into the future it would be hilarious. I just want to be one of those old guys who's like yeah I jog every morning. Anyway, well, that was fun. Uh, am I the asshole for buying my girlfriend an exercise bike? Can I, can I alienate everybody? I still, to this day, am not dunking on Peloton for the Peloton wife commercial. And maybe I'm missing the nuance in it, okay? So the Peloton wife was a, a, a viral dunk campaign where it was like an ad where this wife was like hey my husband got me a peloton and then she journaled like you know up at 4 a.m drinking juice on the peloton you know and she was like you know she did anyway she she was working out hard on the bike and the whole campaign got dunked on because people were like wow what an asshole like her husband basically got her a present that was like lose some weight so you can be a supermodel and my whole like, when and when I watched it, I was just like, man, I wish I wish someone would buy me a Peloton. This shit is expensive. You know, it it would make exercising more fun. If Kate got me a Peloton, I'm not this. I'm not dropping a hint. They're very expensive, and we don't have a lot of space. But if Kate got me a Peloton, would there be a part of me that's like, she's calling me a little chubby? I would be like, yeah. She's not wrong. <laughs> That's why I want the Peloton in the first place. I would uh, like I would welcome it. I would take it as a as a positive sign. But anyway, let's. Let, so I I always thought the dunk campaign was like a little too much on the Peloton, but it, it there is a, there's a gender difference for sure. I know I get what you're saying when you're saying you don't understand you're a man. It's because when a wife calls her husband fat, it's based, right? That's what you're trying to say. Like it's so much harder to be a man because 
Like we're constantly body shamed like that. I'm picking up on what you're saying. I totally get it. Okay, am I the asshole for buying my girlfriend an exercise bike? The last three years have been rough on my girlfriend of four years. She's lost a few family members, lost a job, but luckily for a new one, lots of stress in her life. She turned to comfort eating to cope and put on a good amount of weight, nearly 100 pounds. For about three weeks, she's been saying, I need to lose weight, I need to work out. If only I had the stuff here. So hearing that and wanting to help her out, I bought her a Peloton bike for her apartment without telling her first. Wanted it to be a surprise. She took the gesture, not as I intended. She took it as my boyfriend telling me I'm too fat. My intent was, hey, I know you're always talking about losing weight, working out more. Let me help. Okay, tell me you're a uh, software engineer without telling me you're a software engineer. There was problem. I applied solution and you have the audacity to be upset with me. It makes no sense. Please debug. Rubber duck, debug me. Explain to me. Okay. Um, there is like a little bit of an asshole vibe just in like the first couple of sentences. The last three years have been rough on my girlfriend of four years. She lost a few family. Like, I get that he's not saying, hey, some people died, so I bought you a bike. But even still, I'm like... You know, lost the job, luckily got a new one. She's got a lot of stress. She turned for to comfort eating to cope and put on a good amount of weight, nearly 100 pounds. I don't know, something about that is... I don't know, that sentence just kind of, like, weirds me out. I don't know that, like, I don't think... I guess I'm, I'm a, I woke up on the uh, different side of the bed today. I don't think he's an asshole. Maybe I'm being the guy now who's like, she can't be mad. He bought her a $2,000 bike. He, I mean... I don't know, because, like, I'm putting myself in... I, I can't put myself in her shoes as much as I, as much as I would like to, because it would strengthen my point, right? But, like, this is one of those things where I, I'm really, like... Listen to me, okay? It's not, it's not actually about the issue at hand. I think, like, socially, there is learned behavior, and w one of those learned behaviors is you don't buy... Your significant other, especially if they're a woman, you don't buy them exercise equipment. You don't buy them a gym membership. You don't buy them, you know, an exercise bike. Because the, the learned behavior in society is that triggers an alarm bell that it's like it's over the line and it's seen as like, I bought this for you because you're fat. Which is there's probably is situations where it's true. But simultaneously, she also might have just wanted the damn Peloton. But apparently she didn't. And she's saying, I got to work out. I would start working out if I just had the stuff here. He got her the stuff and she's mad. I think she, I'm going to say it. I think she's being a little bit of the asshole in this situation. If, if we take OP at their face value, okay? If she really said, I need to lose weight. I need to work out. If only I had the stuff here. And then he bought her a Peloton. And she's openly mad at him for getting the Peloton. I don't know, man. I'm like... If she was just in like enjoying, you know, the her lifestyle, and then he bought her a Peloton unprompted, kind of an asshole move. If she said, "I would love to work out. I just want the stuff here," I take that in my brain as like this problem wants a solution. Apparently, what it was actually is, I know that I. Put on a little extra weight. I just want you to know I have a good excuse for it. Please don't try to help me at all. That's all I'm saying, okay? What would you do if Kate buy you a Peloton? We covered that earlier. I would be stoked. Because I know I put on a little weight. <laughs> and I would be like, yo, was that a Peloton? That's sick, man. I'm not saying you should all, that everybody on earth should be like, oh, great, a Peloton. I'm just saying, for me, I would be like, that's fine. The other way around? Well, I, mean, I don't know. Like, I don't. Did, I mean, I, I, I'm getting stunned because I just don't know how to answer the question. I mean, my wife has never expressed an interest in in getting an exercise bike, so I think that would just be a bad gift. But it would be a bad gift for a different reason. It wouldn't be because of the insinuation. It would be because I bought her a Peloton, and then I'd you know be in her office every day, like, hey, can you give me a Peloton? Can I can I ride your Peloton real quick? Hey, I'm just going to sneak in here for like 45 minutes and ride your Peloton. Is that cool with you? Like, it, it would be the Homer Simpson bowling ball gift, right? Where I would just get her something that, that I wanted to actually have myself. I got to see the comments, man. I, I've never felt like more at odds with society. By the way, before we get down here, I'm sure there's going to be comments that are like, you're the asshole. 
you admit yourself things were stressful for her and people in her life that she loved have passed on and then you had the audacity and i'm look if you read it in the most malevolent light possible i understand okay but she said i need to lose weight i need to work out if only i had the stuff here even if she said like my understanding of human communication which is fucking twisted obviously but if someone said i need to lose weight i need to work out i'd be like oh yeah me too yeah we should totally do that and then just keep kicking the can down the road until it becomes a bigger problem where the mood strikes right if she said if only i had this stuff here that's like the the executable at the end that's like i'm i have a problem in need of a solution imo my that's my take on the subject this i need to lose weight i need to work out idle conversation yeah me too oh you know uh, the only thing rising in the pandemic is my cholesterol hey if only i had this stuff here that's where you've invited a, an extra step in in my opinion but okay soft you're the asshole definitely should have had a conversation first like asking her what kind of fitness gear she would like and letting her be a part of the decision Am I, am I, okay, so the conversation part, I think, makes sense. However, am I the, am I so fricked up that, like, asking her what kind of fitness gear or equipment she would like and letting her be a part of the decision is, like, I also think that the same logic applies. Like, if he's an asshole for getting her a bike, I think if he was like, hey, specifically, what kind of uh, exercise equipment would you like to have? I think that's almost, like, the same style of assholery. It's like you're, you're, you're trapping her in a box now one way or the other. Like, I think this, this creates the situation where we're suggest. Look, I'm not trying to defend the Peloton company. Those, their treadmills did kill, like, a couple of kids, okay? Now, the bikes seem very nice. They seem very nice indeed. I'm not trying to insult the bikes, okay? I'm just talking about the company. However... Also, the CEO doesn't drink water from glasses. When he wakes up in the morning, he, he drinks 72 ounces of water out of the bathroom faucet like a damn psychopath. But anyway, um, I think we're maybe throwing the baby out with the bathwater here, okay? Let's not... It, is it that he bought a Peloton that's the problem? Like if he got her some uh, resistance bands or like a Bowflex or the thing that electrocutes your abs, she would be like, oh, thank you, but don't, be no bikes. Like I don't understand. The Peloton is like the Rolls Royce of stationary exercise equipment. If she's mad that he got her a Peloton, I feel like if he bought her like a, a, a dumbbell rack, she would have freaking like taken his head off or something like that. I don't, I don't know if the equipment's the problem, but I do agree that the, the conversation, I mean, everything on am I the asshole is more like, you know, one conversation would have solved the problem, right? Like, but that's why the subreddit exists. So I'm glad that people are bad at talking to one another. My wife often mentioned to me that she wanted to work out. I did nothing. After a couple of months, she finally told me she wanted a stair climber. Worried about the backlash if I did buy one, I dragged my heels on getting it. Look what you done, society. You proud of yourself? You made this wife's life that much more inconvenient because of your response to the damn Peloton ad. She was like, I'd love to work out, wink, wink. Husband was like, can't buy or something. I'll get canceled. She's like, I'd like a stair climber. Husband's like, nice try. You think I was born yesterday? Buy you a piece of exercise equipment you specifically asked for? I'm not trying to get canceled. She finally flatly told me to go and get it. I was shaking in the planet fitness T -t told told people to put their phones away no photos of me buying this stairmaster hey who's this stairmaster for it's for me it's for me okay it's for me anyway i'm just i don't think this guy did anything wrong i i, I can't believe he deleted his account man i don't think he did need i'm willing to dig my heels in on this one i don't think he did anything wrong justin's being a, a good person and going to the gym oh yeah 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 nice which we could all use a little bit more of you know going to the yeah. gym bro i get so let me let me start you i'm i'm start a i'm a peloton husband okay <laughs> you say i'm a pelican okay where's this going <laughs> this new dlc my yeah. wife got me a peloton for my birthday and it's great because i said many times i said i don't understand the peloton wife hate if my wife got me a peloton i would be stoked and then she got me a peloton 
but I gotta go pick that up from the post office. And and I, that. I I looked it up. I was like, how much does Peloton weigh? That's just 140 pounds across what like five boxes. Fuck? How am I gonna carry that shit from the post office? Man, <laughs> bring so your this vehicle. Is what, this is where I ask. Mm. What the fuck's a Peloton? Oh, it's uh, it's the bicycle thingy it's, with it's, the TV built in. Yes, it's it's oh. a, a smart it's a smart TV bicycle. Can you like hook Twitch up to that? I think you you have to watch um, like the Peloton uh, trainers no. that go like, "Hey, you! I see you slowing down there. Pick it up. You can do it. You We're all in this to. together." I don't know if this is a universal Dan thing. There's a, I, I, my dad is a, a, a good role model, for real. I, I just got an exercise bike. Um, my kid got me one for my birthday. I have become a, a Peloton husband. And, uh, yeah, no, no, I know about the treadmill. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I'm not gonna, f I'm, I'm gonna do my best to, to stay safe. I'll, I'll wear one of the, like, life alert bracelets. Don't worry about me. But my dad has the, the same one, and he's actually gonna trounce me. I'm, I'm actually, like, embarrassed. My dad's in his, like, he's approaching his late 50s, I guess. I'm not even in my mid-30s yet. He's, he's gonna smoke me. Like, I'm gonna have to keep, it's, I think it's gonna be a great motivating factor, but I'm gonna have to keep this up, like, for at least a year to even hang with him. Like, the first year is just gonna be him. And, and I, I, I welcome it for him, you know? I think there's something... Um, kind of aspirational in that, in being a father who even, you know, when his son is supposed to be in the peak physical condition, or at least the age of his peak physical condition, is, uh, well, I mean, that's probably, I'm, I'm maybe a few years past that, but still, um, is, it, you know, you're still staying competitive. I think, that, I think that's healthy for him, you know, it's, it's aspirational for him, aspirational for me, but it's going to be embarrassing for him. I'm going to have to endure a lot of comments. Wow, I bet you never thought your old man could put out wattage like that. And I'm, Dad, I don't even know really what that means. I only figured out how to clip these dang shoes into the bike like <laughs> 20 minutes before I started the ride today. Anyway, is that the Peloton in the back? Oh, thank you for noticing. You, you may or may not believe this, but I've tried. This is as far in my office. Like people think I've got the screen here to flex. But genuinely, it's just because my office is exactly mathematically aligned to fit everything. So as a result, you you can see sort of the... You can see the screen there. Did you buy it for Kate and she got offended? I, I get the meme, don't get me wrong, I get the meme. But it's quite the opposite, actually. She bought it for me and I'm freaking stoked, man. Copying Justin's bit. No, you will never. This is not anti Justin, but you will never see me stream it. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm excited to, to restart my fitness journey. Chat, chat has remarked upon the Peloton, without a doubt. The first thing they said is, did you, um, did you buy it for Kate and she got mad at you? And I said, no, quite the opposite, in fact. I said, quite the opposite. She bought it for me, and I was very happy. Streamer plus dad is perfect combination of organization plus you piece. Dude, honestly, like, I'm... I got the, the that side of adult life totally handled. Like, I, I do my chores, like, every night. It's crazy. I know that it, you're, like, every night, like, legit, every night. Do the dishes every night, cook, you know, five nights a week. Um... I, you know, I don't mean to brag, because the week rolls over on Monday. I got I got a two-week streak going on the Peloton right now, because I worked out on Sunday and on Monday. That's two weeks of workouts in the, in the bag right there. <laughs> Duly noted. I filled a humidifier every night, scooped a litter box, obviously, emptied the dishwasher, reload the dishwasher... It's nice, man. It's nice to be on the ball. So you're off Reddit for the most part these days? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Yeah. <laughs> but There's I, really no subreddits I enjoy anymore, so I don't really go there anymore. I just like, so uh, Kate got me a Peloton for my birthday. Yeah, I was going to ask you about loud. that. Um, but it, it's been great, uh, but on the Peloton uh, subreddit a little bit. But it's legitimately such a non-toxic place that I don't feel right. 
Like, I feel, it like, feel like... Reddit. Yes, it, do it doesn't feel like the internet. People are like, I had such a great a ride today. My instructor is so much fun. She really inspired me. And I'm like, geez, I, c I don't know if I can stay here. Like, this is... <laughs> doesn't feel right at it all. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> What's that monitor behind you? It's, uh, my wife got me a Peloton for my birthday. I wasn't, well, I mean, I was like joking. Like the premise of my tweet is a joke, but I really was getting my ass beat um, on the leaderboards by like people you know, on the Peloton profile. You can like on the leaderboards, you can see their uh, metadata if they provided it. And like so many times, I'm like, my legs are on fire. My chest is like, it, it feels sore. I'm like, <gasps> and then I'm getting passed by like, you know, wine, wine grandma of, there was somebody passed me today on the leaderboard. I swear to God, their name was mum of 77, which I'm assuming they can't have 77 kids or they're like, a, I don't even know, like a spider, but Maybe they have, maybe they were born in 1977 and they have seven kids. Either way, she was fucking smoking me, man. Which is why I made that, or may, maybe her son play, or maybe her, or her daughter plays football and their number is 77 or something like that. Sure. Um, but either way, I was getting passed by people who were like, it was like male, great grandpa. I was going to say great grandpa lover. <laughs> it was like, Male, 70s, great grandpa, 1928. And then they were just like, their wattage was just crushing me, man. It, they were sending me uh, into the shadow realm, which is why I made that tweet that was like, uh, oh, congrats or whatever to all the 70 year olds passing me on Peloton. Like, I don't really think it's fair that I get matched up against you when you have 64 years of cycling experience, but I digress. You're pro th there's people who run Peloton bots. This person is actually named after the Tom Hanks movie, Charlie Wilson's War. What is wrong with you? But apparently there's people who run bots to, like, cheese the Peloton leaderboards. Humanity, uh, B, normal 2021 challenge. We failed again. Don't worry, we'll get him next year. But also, I don't think I was getting beaten by bots. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not putting out an impressive amount of power on that thing yet. <laughs> I, think, I think I was getting legit destroyed by, like, you know, 70-year-old men who have been doing it for a while are you part of the streamer dad peloton group i have added no tags to my to my peloton at all every once in a while i'll get a high five from somebody and i'm like do not perceive me they always have like some insanely specific dad or uh, tag on their uh, profile which is like you've received a high five from like you know USMC Spartan 333 and then their tag their hashtag is like working blue collar dads on Peloton in the mornings Eastern time and I'm like what are you come on man this it's too specific some of you may have noticed um you know not in this video but if you watch other videos um my wife indeed for my birthday she turned me into a peloton husband instead of pickle rick i've become i've become peloton rick and i know people have strong opinions about peloton for a number of reasons one of which is that um look i i don't know the details of the proceedings okay so one thing i was what i was gonna say is their treadmill resulted in some deaths but I also, with, without, all I'm gonna say, okay, all I'm, all I'm saying, I don't know the specifics, okay? All I'm gonna say is that, and this is not taking the corporation's side, I bet it's not the only treadmill on earth that's led to, you know, injury and loss of life. That's all I'm saying. It's why, even in like the late 90s, you get on a treadmill, you had to like strap a, a, a red clip to your shirt just in case you had a heart attack uh, heart attack heart attack you had a heart attack while you were uh running that way you couldn't like you know sue the nordic track company or something like that i'm just saying it's it, it i'm not again i'm not just because i own one i'm not saying it wasn't due to a fundamental design flaw or something like that i'm just saying you know it's a tragedy at the same time i don't know the specifics okay so that's one reason another one is that and I, I've, I've talked about this a few times. I apologize if you've heard it. The, there was a viral commercial with, like, the Peloton wife, as she became known. 
that everybody dunked on. It was like a, a, a vlog that this actress had made. Um, like, she's the actress in the commercial, and she was like, oh my god, my husband just got me a uh, Peloton for Christmas, this is so exciting, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, like, the ad is long, and it shows her, like, getting up early to work out, and, like, you know, the ad got dunked on a lot um, by people who, I, not, I don't want to say astutely, but it's not wrong, necessarily, to look at an ad like that and be like, there's an interpretation of this where she could be mad because her husband basically got her a chore for Christmas. That being said, I always thought even back then, even when the, I, I remember like, uh, it was probably two or three years ago, I was on Twitter and there was an ad, or like I, I saw it get retweeted into my feed that was like, oh my God, you have to look at this completely tone deaf Peloton, Peloton ad. I can't believe someone in the marketing department approved this. Maybe this was like my first, um, you know, uh, descent into full boomerdom. I didn't reply and go like, I don't see what's wrong about this, but I, I did like, you know, I, I watched it and I was like, it just seems like an ad to me. It doesn't seem like there's anything particularly crazy. And uh, I was always surprised by the idea that, like, some... I mean, maybe it's, a you know, a difference, d depending on, you know, who gets it for who, let's say. But uh, I, I was surprised by the number of people who were like, this ad is, like, not, not unacceptable. Nobody was like, this is, you know, outrageous. But a lot of people were like, you know, this, this is, like, so tone deaf for a company to have, like, the worst husband of all time get his wife an exercise bike for her... Uh, for Christmas or her birthday or whatever. So I, you know, Kate and I have talked about it before. I got out of shape for sure over uh, COVID and the surrounding, you know, dad duties in, in that period as well. And I know it. She was like, would you be like a, a Peloton? Would you be mad at me if I turned you into a Peloton husband? And I was like, no, I'd be stoked. <laughs> I don't need my wife to, you know, insinuate to me that I... Uh, you know, could stand to lose a few pounds and improve my ability to walk up a flight of stairs without getting slightly winded. I I can observe it in myself, and it's uh, it's worth changing. So, you know, I, I look. All I'm saying, I'm having a good time with this so far. I think people sometimes they get way too like, you know, they get way too worried about the, oh my mistake, the perfect way to do things like. Uh, you know, like, you know, the Peloton's nice, but you don't need a Peloton. You could just get a trainer, like, for your existing bike and, like, drag your existing bike inside of your house and then connect it to an iPad that's hooked up with the Peloton app and blah, blah, blah. And, like, you, you totally could. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, like, we already got it here and it's, like, a one-stop uh, shop. Like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a solution and uh, I'm using it. I'm having a great time with it so far. So it, it, I have to be honest, I, I have previously, I've, I've been like a bit of a weirdo when it comes to cardiovascular exercise. I always thought that using a stationary bike was insanely boring and you, and running on the treadmill was superior to running outside, which is a situation that I know not everybody agrees with. Most people, I think, maybe they find the stationary bike boring, but most people, I think, I, I've heard them describe running on the treadmill as like torture. Like, outside is an adventure, but a treadmill inside, that's torture. I always like the treadmill more because it gives you, like, uh, um, like you control your, your pace with buttons instead of, like, your legs, which I think is, uh, it, it allows you to kind of chart your progress that much more easily. And, you know, you can watch something on your phone or listen to music instead of just looking at people outside. I guess you could listen to music while you're running outside as well, but I'm just, you know, I don't know. But the weather's bad, doesn't matter, you know, it's still perfect conditions inside, most of the time at least. If, if you've got like a landslide inside, you've got other problems to deal with, let's put it that way. You could put your run off for a day. But uh, this is like, I, I have to be honest, I've been enjoying this stationary, but I've never had like, uh, if you're not familiar with the way that the Peloton apps work, they kind of, they give you access to like, live classes. Um, they give you access to live classes with instructors and stuff like that. And there actually is like a video camera uh, on the front of the screen. Um, so instructors can see you. I turn that off immediately. Look, I, I get that that's part of the point. And for a certain type of person out there that appeals to them, you can, you know, make new friends that like going to spin class with you. And uh, you can see them and say hi, maybe. I turn mine off immediately. I don't I don't want anybody popping into the class being like, oh, is that my sixth favorite YouTuber? And I'm like, 
like huffing along to Bruno Mars or something like that. Um, but there's also like on-demand classes and stuff like that. I've never, I've never had an instructor for like a spin class because I always thought it was just kind of like, I don't know. I, maybe this is a, an overly boomer take to begin with, but I was always like, you know, they, you know what they say about riding a bike? It's just like riding a bike. You know, once you get it, you don't need that much instruction. But it's it, it's more. I I almost feel like it's it's like fitness YouTube. Like the way that you might be listening to this to put you in the kind of position to like fall asleep. That's what the the instructors are there to do. Is like as as cynical as I normally am and jaded as I normally am about stuff like this. You know, when you're 20 minutes into a run and your legs are hurting a little bit and then. Somebody goes like, you can do it, keep it up. Remember, it's not about you versus the leaderboard, it's about you versus you. I'm like, you know what, she's right. <laughs> also, I never noticed how much I liked Ed Sheeran before. Why are all these right? Ed Sheeran is like the soundtrack for the Peloton world. But it's been good. The, the funny part for me is just, you know, remembering that it takes time to get back into it, like... Um, I, I'm getting smoked. Like, there are leaderboards, and at first, you know, because, like, I've, I've gone through the f fits and starts with fitness before. As a, as a young, able-bodied man with a, not a huge fitness base, but a certain fitness base at various points in my life. Um, anytime there's been stuff like that, I've been, like, you know, I expect to log on and be, like, in the top half. That is not the case this time. Getting a little older... Um, pacing myself a little bit so that I don't, you know, succumb to injury and then it becomes just a, a very expensive, like, clothes hanger inside of my office. I'm getting passed by people. Their Peloton name is like, you know, Richmond, Virginia, mom of six, age 60s from Virginia. And I'm like, you know what? Get it, sister. By all means. I, I'm, I'm taking my ego out of it for the first time in my life. And I gotta admit, you're crushing me in the wattage right now. You know, more power to you. I, I guess you get really pumped up by uh, this Ariana Grande song. I'm not hating on Ariana Grande, okay? They let you pick rides based on, like, you know, your fitness level and stuff like that. But they also let you pick rides based on music. I'm still looking for the one that matches my musical tastes, which is, like, maybe you could open with, like, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly soundtrack and then play, um... About 75% of music has the right to children by Boards of Canada, and then just the same Steely Dan song again and again and again. Um, that That's... I haven't seen that yet, but maybe one day. Um, I'm not... I think people, like, I want to, I guess, nip it in the bud. I think people are going to see the Peloton monitor, and they're going to be like, oh, this guy wants people to know that he uh, owns a Peloton. That's not true. I mean, I don't really care, but at the same time, I just in general, I do not wish to be perceived. Because you see it, I want to nip it in the bud and be like, I'm not saying I'm like a big time, you know, spandex bike guy. I'm just making an effort. I'm investing, you know, in my own health and wellness. Let's put it that way. So that's going to be our next arc for sure. I'm going to I wonder if I'll become one of those uh, one of those psychos. Hey, did you see Hey, did you guys see my splat score yesterday? This is the highest splat score I've ever you know, uh, look. I'm not knocking orange theory. I'm just I, I've never been and as a result it scares me. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. Also, like I mean, I'm already kind of one of those psychos cuz I'm going to bed at like 10, waking up before 7. I was like, "Well, what's the next step?" One of the next steps is mutual funds, but having read a random walk down Wall Street, it doesn't interest me. I'd rather invest, you know, broad-based, uh, globally diversified market cap weighted index funds with a low MER. And so, I, given that the mutual funds are out, it's like, it's just straight into over-the-counter uh, arthritis supplements like glucosamine, Robaxacet, and so on. If I'm not going to get into those, i got to become one of those morning workout sickos. That's like, oh, 7 a.m., you know? Have a shot of espresso and then get on the bike. I live for it, you know. Peloton's wild too, cause like, and and this is not. Look, I, I love the bike. I like the software so far, um, and the convenience is out of control. But it's also like, kind of a social network. Like, just just in case you were wondering, like, why uh, people like with the hum humanity be normal 2021 challenge, we failed it yet again. There is a, a feature on the Peloton where if you see someone riding on, like, the leaderboards, you can click on their name and give them a high five. Very wholesome, right? What could possibly go wrong with that? Well, um, unfortunately, there is no way to block people 
Um, so what has happened to uh, some people out there, particularly women, is that maybe they've got a profile photo that's like, you know, their own face. Uh, and then there's some creeps out there. I'm not saying it's only men, but, you know, anytime I see a peeping Tom in public, there's... Maybe the women that do it are more sneaky about it, but it's usually like a 70-year-old guy with a pair of, you know, Coleman binoculars sitting on a bench near the beach or something like that. I hate to stereotype, but there's a, I think, a, there's a reason that the horny old man is a bit of a stereotype, I suppose. Regardless. Um, so what will happen is, like, you know, they'll, this, this guy will, like, be in a lady's class and then give her, like, a high five. And then whether or not she high fives back, they'll send her like a high five a minute and then like try to follow her on the app. And then when you, you know, they, they read it, I, I, they wrote, I should say, I read an article about this and they like, you know, check their profile and they're like, he has like three billion other friends on Peloton and they're all women who match like my exact type. And I'm like, oh no. Come on, man. Like, you're trying to d turn Peloton into, like, a, you know, boomer Facebook dating for people with the sub-15% body fat? Like, can't, the, can't people just go for a bike ride? Why you gotta be so weird about it? <laughs> I, I think if you're worried about that, you gotta, um... Well, first off, this is why, like, I think I very much limit my own interfacing with social networks that I am, like, not already a part of. You know, I'm like, try to, try to, if I'm, if I'm joining like, you know, something like Peloton, I'll try to be pseudonymous maybe, uh, or, or anonymous. Like, I'm not too anal about it, but still, the, I don't, I don't necessarily want people, you know, finding my profile and being like, look at this, it, it, when, when he listens to, uh, You're Amazing Just The Way You Are by Bruno Mars, his heart rate goes up 20%, you know, it's like a little invasion of privacy. But it is, it's also like, man, they gotta stop designing these apps to be like a social network. I get that that's one of the ways you make them sticky, so people stick around. They're like, I got a lot of friends on Facebook, that's how it starts. You get a lot of friends on Peloton, then all of a sudden one of your friends is like, do your own research, and you're like, I gotta choose between my morals and my friends, and I like my morals, but I'm very attached to my friends, and then all of a sudden, you're protesting in front of City Hall, you know, you're having fallen outs with your family. I just, I, I worry about the the increasingly social networkization, like the, the roll-up of everything into uh, a social network. But I, I kind of think we're like, we're a little past it. That's my, my hope, at least. Like in, in the early 2010s, everything was about gamification. We're gonna game, you're never gonna do chores the same way again. Why would you do chores for no benefit when instead you can get an app that when you do a chore, you log the chore and then the chore allows you to show your friends that you got, and then you can, and from this point, and such as, um, you know, you get the idea. The Peloton's been going well, I've been getting, I'm gonna, you know, Cliff Notes my own tweet. I apologize, maybe you enjoyed the tweet. This will be like a greatest hits type bit, but, um, I, you know, I do think it's a little bit messed up that I have so many, like, 75-year-olds will pass me on the leaderboards and then they'll give me a high five. Like, I get it, you know, you're, you're good at cycling. I'd probably be good at cycling, too, if I had been doing it for literally 64 years. Um, but I've only been doing it for, like, 20, so if you could just cut me some freaking slack while I'm trying to... I'm, 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 I'm in the power zone right now. I'm getting my butt kicked. You know, you're sending me a high five. I can't even have a conversation right now. You're taking it too far. Anyway, it is a uh, so Wednesday doing well. Just kind of just just chilling this week, like you know, getting up to stuff. I, I mean, there's only so much you can do, like anecdotally, like like in the means of anecdotes with like you know what's been going on in my life, which is you know what you see before you right now, also streaming, and then, you know, going on a little uh, exercise bike ride uh, early in the morning. That's about it, like, you know, there's not there's not a whole lot I can really pull out of that unless you want to hear what, like, my, my average wattage output was. Um, but I'm not going to tell you that because that's private. <laughs> Mostly because it's not uh, impressive. But anyway, yeah, this, I mean, that's pretty much been it. Honestly, I've, be, I've become a morning psycho, as we knew would happen with the baby. You know, you always, I would read stories or, you know, blog posts or whatever from people there, especially like in middle age, for some reason, like middle age people that work out, 
It all, it never struck me as like, you know, they did it, they worked out at 5 a.m. out of necessity. It was always like, oh, they wake up at 5 a.m. Geez, for some reason, they just love waking up at 5 a.m. Turns out, uh, it's, it's just like one of the only ways to fit all the stuff that you gotta do into your day. Not that I'm waking up at 5 a.m. I'm merely stealing valor from those that do. Yeah, honestly, the only thing I'll say, I, I never want, um, when I talk, because I think you gotta be, a, not careful, but aware of this. You know, I don't want you to take my, uh, any conversation that I have about the fact that I've been exercising as an endorsement of the fact that you should spend a ton of money on specifically a Peloton. So just keep that as a grain of salt. I'm not trying to be one of those guys who's like, oh, there's absolutely no other way that you could engage in exercise without, like, you know, a proprietary piece of furniture in your home with a tablet attached to it. Hey, that's a pretty good item. I'm merely using it as a point of reference, okay? But I gotta say, I, I think, weirdly enough, using the Peloton has made me more uh, aware of why people watch streamers and YouTubers. <laughs> you know, like, I it's funny, I find myself, uh, it, I used to, you know, after I would weightlift, I would go... Uh, workout, uh, like cardio-wise. I would get on the exercise bike, I would put on Netflix, and I'd let it run for, you know, half an hour or whatever. But even, like, watching Netflix, even if you're watching something good on Netflix, it always felt like kind of a drag, just to be, like, pushing the, the, the pedals around and around at, like, a relatively steady state. But just weirdly enough, like, I guess the human brain is kind of, like, wired, at least for some people. It's like, when there's a even a one-sided conversation or commentary, it lets you, like, access a different part of your mind to get a different amount of, of motivation out of it. It's, it's very weird. I did not think that I would be that kind of, that kind of person. But, like, it really, it, it does hit a little bit different. There's no doubt about it. It, it actually feels like, you, you know, you have, like, some context for the workout. The way I think about it, it's, it's like, you know, you can learn everything you need to learn in your undergraduate classes at university just by reading the textbook, but it's kind of nice sometimes to have the professor there to be like, you know, hey, here's the very important stuff, here's the stuff you don't have to worry about too much just yet. It's helpful, but yeah, I, I'm happy to report I did not get bodied by 70-year-olds uh, today. I, I put out some pretty good wattage. I'm feeling good. That's, that's about it. Yeah, no, um, it sucked really bad. Oh. Also, like, this is not like, um, I'm not like a birthday guy, but yesterday was my birthday as well, so that would like... Hey, happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you. Man. But I was like, just, I'm, I'm just like an emotional... Just doing all day long. The, the, the greatest <laughs> gift. I'm, I was like an emotional wreck. Like, we, I was so stressed out. You know when you get that, like, that, like, tension, 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 and then release? It was like, we was stressed out all day. <laughs> Came back to our, uh, oh, I'm gonna die? No, okay. Came back to our in-law's <laughs> place, and like as, as soon as we walked into our in-law's place, they pulled out like a Cookie Monster Costco birthday cake and started singing happy birthday. And then my nieces gave me like two handwritten cards that were like, you know, Uncle Ryan, you're the funniest uncle of all time. I'm so happy we got to spend your birthday together. And I was like, I'm just losing it, man. I was like, I was choked up. Just trying not to make things awkward. This is just, I, I, I cried a little bit during my Peloton ride today, too. I'm still, like, working the emotions out after after yesterday. So the, the instructor was like, you can do it. And I was like, she's right. I can do it. It was a it was disastrous. Oh, oh yeah, you um, get, get a Peloton. If you're really interested in, like, uh, crying uh, on the exercise bike while Florence and the Machine plays, I would highly recommend getting a Peloton. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Did you get one? I did. The, uh, my wife got me one for my birthday. Really? Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's... And you got some Florence in the machine, and you've just been crying? Uh, well, I only cried once. And it was the a... machine, or the ordeal, or the baby. I don't know. Or... You know what you gotta do? You gotta get on that thing Most and just start going like the fucking clappers. But <laughs> listen to Enya. You know what I mean? Like just like the biggest, just <laughs> like the biggest contrast ever, right? Like you're listening to like the weirdest, slowest music, but you're going crazy. Well, the instructor sets Physically. the music, so I've been listening to like a lot of my favorite artists, like Ed Sheeran in particular. I'm a big oh, fan. No. I th yeah. people think he's like easy listening, but he goes pretty hard. Like he talks about like doing it sometimes. Oh man, yeah. It's like thinly veiled and, and metaphorical, but like he he goes pretty hard, man.
Dude, but Justin, I feel like you would appreciate this. And I'm gonna take a lot of heat from chat, but I think you're like my you're my shield maiden here to help me out. Uh -huh. um, until I got the Peloton, I didn't realize how many people like are fucking crazy about the Foo Fighters. <laughs> like I I always thought people were like, eh, you know, like they they got some good songs and then some that are kind of like generic. But then uh -huh. if you go to like the Peloton community, people are like, I bawled my eyes out during the Foo Fighters ride with uh, Christina. There's, <laughs> oh, no. I never, I always put on the Foo Fighters. Exactly. Like I, <laughs> I always put on the Foo Fighters when I need to set a PB. Like oh they, it's just universal. Like everybody's crazy about the Dude, Foo that's Fighters. so funny. I had no What's idea. Funny, so it's funny you bring that up because like a, a couple weeks ago, there I saw someone tweet like, "Have you ever met someone who's a fanatic over the Foo Fighters?" <laughs> and I was thinking, and I was like, "I really haven't." I know a lot of people who are fanatics about Dave Grohl, but never like I, the Foo Fighters. Dude, yeah. I took like a ten-minute cool-down ride or something with this one instructor who was like, the whole time she was narrating like Foo Fighters stories, and she's like, "I'm sorry, I've got to stop talking." I gotta let you hear the foo more often. And I was oh just- Oh my god. She was like, <laughs> laying it on so the thick. The foo. The foo. She was like, the it's foo. a spiritual experience. I know it's gonna be hard when you listen to this song, god. but don't go too hard, okay? <laughs> like, try to I just restrain god. yourself. God. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> I, fuck me. I swear I saw Dave Grohl at a bowling alley once in New Zealand. <laughs> It, it, it was either him or someone who looks literally, and like, I'm not trying to stretch it, literally exactly like him. <laughs> and he was American. He had an American you, accent over it was. I should have gone up and asked. I'm becoming a total boomer psycho. I committed like a, a huge faux pas. I have been waking up earlier. I set my alarm for like 7.15. Usually I'm up a little bit before my alarm. Since, since I started working out again, it's getting even crazier, right? Like, once you get in the habit of it, you're more tired when you go to bed. You tend to get better sleep, or fall asleep faster at least, which for me means, you know, instead of spending a half hour, like, listening to historical audiobooks, I basically just fall asleep pretty much right away, um, which saves me half an hour, it gives, or it gives me an extra half hour of sleep. Uh, so I've been waking up like 45 minutes or so before my alarm at like 6.30 in the morning, and just, like, when it happens, I'm like, awesome, I'm up early! But I committed a terrible faux pas. I left my alarm on for 7.15, left my phone in the kitchen, clipped in, it's the, the bike is one of those ones where the shoes actually like make a, like a ski boot almost. They make like a hard connection with the pedals. So it's very, you, you can't get in and out in like a moment's notice. You need like 10 seconds to clip in and clip out. And then I was, you know, I got like a little bit in the, a ride this morning, and then I heard like, you know, boop, 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 and I was like, what is the, well, this song's like, they're, they're remix, I don't know any of the songs they play on Peloton, just for the record, but I was like, man, they're remixing like the uh, default Samsung Galaxy wake up song into this, that's weird, and then after like literally two minutes, I was like, oh my god, I'm so stupid. <laughs> I left my phone in the other room, it's playing its alarm. My wife is still asleep and is also under the weather. Um, so I, I urgently clipped out without, you know, falling off the bike and literally like snapping off my legs or the ankles and uh, I think I got lucky. I don't, if she woke up, I don't think she woke up, but if she woke up, it was one of those wake ups where like, as long as you wake up and go back to sleep within like 30 seconds, I feel like you have your body protects you, right? Like it gives you no memory of uh, what woke you up in the first place. NL, you sound sick. I hope you get well soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. I do feel like I need to point out that I'm like so twisted that uh, when I sound sick is usually when I actually feel good. When I sound normal, I feel like bad. But now that it's like. All the illness is right up here. I'm ready to go. You got nothing to worry about. I'm, I'm just trying to say, did I, uh, did I get a PB on the Peloton today? Yes, absolutely. Did I come in the fourth position out of four people that were present on the ride? Yes. But some of the people that are doing Peloton rides at like 7 a.m. Pacific time are 
freaks. They're obsessed, man. They're psychos. You can't. I can't keep up with them. What kind of wattage you pointing? Are you putting out there? I don't want to tell you until it gets impressive. So, see yourself. Okay, there you go. Two wins. Two wins. These early wins are important. We're in 2000s nostalgia. We are not in 2000s nostalgia. Maybe in some avenues, we are. How so? Fashion, for sure. I don't know anything about fashion. I'll give you that one. Mom jeans, okay. It's still fashion. Like, there's a Matrix movie. Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll give you new Spider-Man as well. Like, the fact that people are like, Tobey Maguire, Tobey Maguire. Okay, sure. You got me on that one? Maybe, maybe we got a little 2000s nostalgia coming back. Boy bands are popular. Dude, I don't want to get the BTS army on me. Because I, I, and not only am I a fan of uh, some K-pop, my wife listens to it all the time. I find myself tapping my foot, bobbing my head. But uh, I lived in Korea. Ergo, you can't criticize me, right? However, I was on like the Peloton subreddit last night and there was a post from like a middle-aged person that was like, there's, wow, really? Like there's so few little BTS uh, content in these rides really peloton and then somebody replied there are 127 rides that have a bts song and then the person replied yeah but most of them are probably just dynamite and really one song per ride army knows what i'm talking about we need more we need a specific bts ride that has like this song and this song and this song and i'm like there's 127 Rides with, with BTS, like you're riding a bike, right? Like, you, I, I'm not anti-BTS, I'm just like, you, you got like a ton of content. They're probably like one of the, the 20 most represented artists, you know, on the service. And then you're like, 127 rides is not enough? Yeah, there's not a single Tom Waits ride. Where you, you boot it up and the guy's like, all right, Cadence uh, 80 to 100. We sail tonight for Singapore. We're all as mad as hatters here. You, like, it's all just, you know, Elton John and ACDC and stuff like that. There's not, a, there's not a single Tom Waits ride. Yeah, dude, honestly, a Guided by Voices ride could slap pretty hard. Because the songs are like 30 seconds long. It's the perfect interval for high aerobic work. They, but everybody would think that their headphones were broken because the songs were all recorded on, like, you know, four-track recorders. How's your meniscus? Honestly, it's rained almost every day from November onwards here. Uh, and I have not felt my knee pain flare up. As a result, I'm inclined to give myself a clean bill of health. After seven years of complaining about a torn meniscus and never seeking any kind of treatment ever... Because the one time I told my doctor about it, she said, sounds like it's just a motivation problem. And I said, all right, I guess I'll just go die then. Just let Mother Nature heal it for me. And I, I think I'm good to go. I think I'm back to, back to copacetic. Rip bozo. No, my doctor's really good. I mean, like, honestly, that's... It sounds bad. I'm not saying any, everybody else should live like that. But that's, like, um, what I need sometimes. It's the same, not to make this, like, a Peloton episode... But it's the same on the Peloton when, you know, people are like, I love this instructor. And then I take a ride with them and they're like, you, you can do it. You're beautiful. Love yourself. I'm like, oh, shut the fuck up. I like to strike a balance where like, you know, most of the instructors I like are like, you know, hey, this is going to be hard, but, you know, do your best. And I'm like, OK, that's good advice. That's something that I, I can get down with. Jay, you, I, I'm just being honest, man. I think I saw you go back like four hours there. I should put that on. You got to put the bike outfit on. I am a, I'm a Peloton boy. But I can't... Uh, I feel like I'm like assuming the role of somebody better at cycling if I put that on. Like, I'm still, a, I'm still like a baby. I got baby wattage. I only have a, uh, I only have a four-week streak. My, my five-week streak is coming up on, uh, next Monday, I think.
How many watts? I don't want to tell you because it's bad. Let's just say someone in chat said, if he won't tell us, it's definitely sub 200. And I was like, dude, I wish I was at 200. Come on, I'm not at 50 watts. That's ridiculous. What is 50 watts is like 20 resistance, 60 cadence? Don't make me laugh. That's an insult. What wattage do you think President Biden is on? I think I would be upset if I was not beating Joe Biden on the Peloton. Like, not just because he's almost three times my age, but because he's got other stuff to do. I mean, he's not 93 years old, but he's like, I don't know, what, he's like 84 or something like that? He's only, Joe Biden's only 79? I thought for sure he was like 82. I mean, oh, look, I'm not saying 79 isn't old. I'm more saying like, I mean, it's like young by Joe Biden's demeanor. <laughs> So I'm not complaining. I'm relishing. I'm actually I'm in a good routine right now, even though I've been sick. I've been I've been riding the bike every day. Certainly feel like I'm making some progress there. Looking forward to it. Like I, eager, honestly, to go to bed uh, every night, even a little earlier than typical for me lately, which is earlier than it's ever been for me. Well, as an as a working adult, at least. Even when I worked in Korea, it was like you know, I started work at like noon maybe but sometimes as late as two or three you're there till 10 or 11 but still i'm like excited to go to bed it's like uh, almost embarrassing to admit but i'm like oh tomorrow i get to go on a a bike ride on my stationary bike <laughs> so when i like wake up and it's 6 45 i'm like oh sick like i beat my clock today i said beat my clock my clock so I know in the morning, I, I know this sounds like, you know, a character that Amy Poehler would play in a, a movie. But just to know that, like, you know, I, I got to, the rest of the day, I, I got a lot of stuff to do. But for that, like, 30, 45 minutes, it's just me and my Peloton instructor. I'm not getting the Peloton because I don't want my scores getting crushed. I understand. I mean, honestly, I, I, was, I was on a wave today. I set a PB. Beat my previous PB like 7-8% higher or something like that. Brought the leaderboard back. I was like, I bet I crushed it today. It was like 8,800 out of 14,000 lifetime. And I was like, man, that's... You look at the people around you on the on the leaderboard. It's, you know, father of six, 60s, Biloxi, Mississippi. And I'm like, damn, dude. Just takes time, though. Look, how could I not? Maybe we just need a little game bots gambit. Go ahead, zap me. I knew you didn't have it in you. Hello. Oh, okay. It's going to screw up my gold split, but that's okay. Hello, baby. Hello. Here you go. How you doing, honey? You see, you see, Chad here. This. Yeah. Hi. Me. She does say "uh oh" every time she sees the peloton. <laughs> um. It's okay, honey. I can't bike away. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh oh. Uh -uh. May I zip it up? Please? Can mommy use the zipper? Look at that. Hey, bye-bye. 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 Bye -bye. <laughs> okay, I'll see you in a couple hours, okay? Bye-bye. Pretty cute, huh? And then uh, the the other thing is my, my parents... Uh, they were trying to figure out what to buy me for my birthday. I have sympathy, you know. I turned 33. It's hard. What, mm -hmm. do, you, what do you get a 33-year-old adult for their birthday, you know? 
when you're their parents. So they kept trying to buy me like um, padded bike shorts for the Peloton. They're like, your dad loves these. And I was like, no, like I've biked enough. Like I know you get sore in the saddle. And then like a week later, you know, your butt is just hardened up. You're good to go. So don't waste your money. So instead, they uh, just sent me subway gift certificates <laughs> and i'm i when i opened it i was stoked i no joke she sent me um she sent me a safe and i'm pretty sure that the reason she sent me the safe was so that she could remind me to get my will done oh because she's she's been on me about it for like a couple years she gonna uh, kill you man no i don't i think she's just like in case something happens like you know uh. I think she's going to murder you. So she, she gave me a, a safe, and then the next day, the card with the Subway gift certificates came in. And then Kate was like, you should take a photo of the gift cards inside of the safe. And then be yeah, like, oh, no. <laughs> I didn't I do like it because I was like, uh, I was too lazy to set it up. But I was but like, But dude, you could actually like, you so should do good. that. And then tweet it at uh, at Subway to get a mm -hmm. easy sponsorship. Be like, you know, I cherish these so much. You know, like, dude, keep... that's it. yeah. That's I, I love. I like that Subway Canada doesn't know where they stand. Like they, what do you, how do you mean? Like, well, they. I I talk positively about them. I talk negatively about them. But uh, then one time they were doing a promotion. They came in and dropped a hundred gift subs, and I didn't even say thank you because I wow. was like, that's not the proper channel for for marketing. It's true. Yeah. Like, I, like if, if an individual dropped 100 gift subs, I would say thank you and also, are you okay? Like, are you intoxicated? Yeah. Um, but if a corporation comes in and drops 100 gift subs, I'm like, you know, David Miyazaki's inbox is open. Dude, if you want to touch grass. Yeah. <laughs> touch grass. Dude, by the way, so this is not, I'm not going to bat for the Peloton Corporation. I'm also, I'm also going to issue uh, some spoilers for the Sex in the City reboot. Did you see that? Um, in the first episode of Sex in the City, Mr. Big rides a Peloton and then has a heart attack and fucking dies. And then Peloton issued a, a statement. They issued, I was laughing so hard, they issued a press release on Saturday that was like, uh, well, he did have a heart attack after riding our bike. He also lived a lavish life full of big steaks and cigars and cocktails and stuff. I'm like, you don't have to issue a a PR statement because like a fictional character died in a television show. Like they could just give him like x-ray vision in the next episode. It's all up to the writers. I was laughing because it reminded me so much of the I think you should leave sketch. It was like, you know, it, it's the cigars you smoke that'll kill you. It's the T-bone steaks you eat that'll kill you. Remember it was the night that I said Mr. Big will never be Carrie's uh, one true love because he doesn't have a curious mind. Tiny boop squig shorterly. I did see that they they cut an ad for Peloton with Ryan Reynolds. To new beginnings. To new beginnings. You look great. Well, I feel great. Should we take another ride? Life's too short not to. <laughs> and just like that, the world was reminded that regular cycling stimulates and improves your heart, lungs, and circulation, reducing your risk of cardiovascular diseases. Cycling strengthens your heart muscles, lowers resting pulse, and reduces blood fat levels. He's alive. Uh, where he's like, uh, oh, and, and Mr. Big, where they're like, oh, and, and he's truly alive or something like that. And I'm like, man, it's, life is on easy mode for Ryan Reynolds right now, man. Peloton came out with the Peloton wife ad. He just hired the actress to be in an ad for Aviation Gin and reaped all the PR benefits. Mr. Big gets killed by a Peloton. He gets a phone call the next day. Hey, how would you like uh, $2 million? Sure, okay, fine. What do I have to do? I don't know. Read like six lines in your own office, probably. Speaking of Christmas, what's on um, Ryan Gary's Christmas list? Well, honestly, Kate got me a... Uh, a Peloton for my birthday. So oh. like, I'm just for Christmas, you know, just I, I've become that boring guy who's just like, you know, some time off, some time with the, with family and chance to get some some wattage in. How have you been finding your Peloton? Uh just getting getting stronger every day, you know? And enjoying it. Uh yeah, I think it's all about like like oh I hold on, I'm gonna take a shot at him. 
Okay. Like you said, it's all about finding like an instructor that you like. Yo, so, but Peloton, so are you like, how many days a week? Do you, are you doing it every day? I am, I'm doing it every day right now. But like, I, I know from, from running and from biking before, you know, you do a couple of days in a row, maybe you do like some, you chase your PB, and then you, you do like a day where you just spend uh, 45 minutes on the bike just at like a, a reasonable pace in order to build up that mileage a little bit, you know, let your legs rest and then you go back a little bit the next day. But I, I'm enjoying it every day right now, honestly. Like, uh, it's it's like my me time in the morning. Who's your uh, who's your go-to instructor? I So I've only used a couple of, uh, maybe like four instructors. There's a couple I I like for like stretching. Like Hannah, Hannah Corbin for stretching is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, for biking, there's a lot of them that I just do not vibe with whatsoever. Like, you don't have to call names, but like, what's something one of the instructor does that's like, uh, like Wolves C? Not pedaling <laughs> so that you dance instead is, <laughs> is one of the things where I'm like, come on, man. I like, like we're in this, I'm here for a workout. Like making it more of like a spiritual thing than, uh, <laughs> than like an actual exercise thing. Same uh -huh. thing, like I don't, I don't mind like some light motivation, but when they spend like the whole half hour being like, you know, you're beautiful, you can do this, like this is, it's all about you right now. I'm like, man, come on. And then there was one lady, I took a, a Foo Fighters cool down ride with her. And the whole time she was just like, I'm so sorry to be talking over like these Foo Fighters masterpieces. Like, I know it's so hard to not go all out while the Foo Fighters are playing, but like, you got to respect yourself. And I was just like, lady, it's just a bike. Like, it's not that big of a deal. But uh, I, I, my, my number one go-to guy, which is why I have not used your instructor recommendation yet, is Sam Yo so far. I'm a, okay. I'm a Sam Yo guy. He's lightly motivating, but mostly focused on the mechanics of riding the bike. And uh, he's been, it's been good so far. I've enjoyed basically, it. basically more silence than yapping. He he's, he talks, but it's not. It's more about like he'll repeat the callouts like seven times, which I think is good. Instead of Have being you, like you know, <laughs> the, the, just getting on the bike is great. Every moment is your moment. Take it. It's inspirational. <laughs> you know. <laughs> have you um, have you got a shout out yet? No, or do I, you do them I, live. I haven't done a live class yet. They don't have great. Uh, like uh, West Coast ones, honestly. Oh, so if, so for people who don't know, on a Peloton, they have like streamers say my name. So like they say when you've <laughs> hit your 10th ride, 50th ride. And so sometimes like the instructor will call you out, like streamers say my name. They, yeah, gotta, I, I love it too, because like <laughs> the, the shout out is like the same kind of autopilot that the streamers have. <laughs> I dropped by the way just now. Okay. But they'll do like, uh, you know, hey, spin for Zinfandel. Happy 750th ride, and I'm like, man, 750 rides, and you get a like a three second uh, <laughs> shout out. Mind you, you get it in front of everybody forever. Don't get me wrong, but oh, it's it's so good. <laughs> so yeah, so my, I'll try your guy. What's his name? Sam Yo. Sam Yo. I'm gonna give him a shot. You got to give. So uh, I'm I'm a big Ellie Love fan, just because it's like a little, not much. It's a little bit of like the. Not spiritual stuff, but just like a little bit talking. But yeah. it's just it's just a lot of positive sauce, you know. It's like good music, good sauce, and it's like uh, like it would be like someone saying, "Hey, you're killing it." Okay, I got no problem with that. Yeah, but it's not like become one with the bike type thing. But I, I definitely think you're right. Like the the main thing with the Peloton is like. There's nothing like seeing somebody on the leaderboard who doesn't even know that you're their worst enemy <laughs> and then just being like, that's my to-do list today is like beating this person. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm coming after you, by the way. Uh, on, on, the, um, on the Peloton? Yeah, so what, so what I can do is, so since you've done some classes, yeah, I, can, yeah. I can do the same class and then just tag you. So I can see exactly what you did at what time, and then I'll just when it gets to the end, then I'll just turn it on. You just don't do the cooldown. <laughs> just, <Yeah. laughs> just sprint right through the cooldown. <laughs> well, you don't have to like you don't have to do that yet because I'm still catching up to you. But it, I've done a couple. Uh, like I think your your max was like 50 ahead of me for a half hour, 
And I've I've cut that to uh, maybe it's like twenty ahead of me now. Okay. So I'm I'm starting to build those those leg muscles, but you know, hey, iron sharpens iron too. Feeling pretty good. Yeah. I also got in my bike ride earlier this morning. Just feeling nice as we, uh, you know, not to be a downer, but as we potentially head into another, you know, lockdown 4.0, 5.0. I don't know. I mean. All you can really do, I guess, is is focus on the the positives of it. I mean, and that's not true. I hate when people say that. You can also discuss the negatives. <laughs> you can you can commiserate over the negatives of uh, you know a new COVID variant rising up. You don't have to just exclusively be like, ah, oh, well, just focus on what you got. You can, you know you know let people be annoyed as well. I think is fair. But you know, I think I'm I've I've learned from the past few lockdowns. I think I'm I'm. Uh, a, a more mature individual, you know, I am now like, I, I'm, I'm almost loath to admit it because it's a really bad look now, but the first like two weeks of March 2020's lockdown, we were lucky enough to not really be affected on a health or employment level, I'll acknowledge that right out the gates, but it was almost like, you know, when you think you might get snowed in at school, you're like, oh, this is different, like it's uh, an extreme event, and I'm sure that capable people are freaking out and hopefully making up plans to handle this and, you know, make it, make sure we're all safe. But on the flip side, whoa, I'm, I got a sleeping bag in school. Like, you know, I was like, what? I have an excuse to order a lot of Uber Eats. Oh, I'm watching movies and, you know, hey, a forced two-week vacation from the gym. Let's eat a lot of Cheetos and Sun Chips, you know? That uh, reality set in pretty fast. But, uh... You know, the first lockdown, I, I don't know if we are, actually. I shouldn't get people, you know, nervous or anything. I, I don't know if we are headed for an, another lockdown, but the first one, Kate was pregnant. It was a complicated situation. You know, I mean, there were no complications with the pregnancy, but it was just more complicated than, you know, day-to-day <laughs> -to -day life, I think it's fair to say. <laughs> so it was just like, I didn't know what the heck was going on. I squandered it, but this lockdown, man, I got an exercise bike. I'm I'm looking at it like, you know, the way that some people probably look at like basic training, which is like, hey, a great opportunity to get in shape and, you know, hopefully no nothing negative happens. Ha ha ha. Maybe it's not funny. Anyway, I apologize <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> so that's why I tweeted today. If we go into lockdown again, I'm coming out with a 10 out of 10 dumpy. I'm out of excuses. Now, one of the reasons I tweeted that is because I think it's funny. The other reason is because I've been watching a lot of Sesame Street this morning. So to make a tweet that is a little bit more, um, you know, 14A, or as you call it in America, PG-13. <laughs> uh, what do you expect from a country that doesn't even make their, uh, their monetary bills different colors? Now you got, you, you tell them you got to look in the corner in order to... In order to tell whether or not you're giving somebody a 5 or a 100, that's crazy, man. Well, you could just always remember which president is on each bill. Shut up. Honestly, just shut up. So yeah, that's my day so far. A little bike ride, a little super dad. Dude, the story, I, and I, I apologize, because whenever, I, I always enter this story, there's a large barrier to entry. People assume that because I have a Peloton, I have become Peloton guy, who's like, you gotta get a Peloton. I'm not like that. Yet, I acknowledge a lot of things about it. You know, you, there's cheaper solutions that accomplish similar things. It's not a perfect company, but you gotta laugh at like the last week and a half of their marketing. So they were, I, and I'm trying to remain as spoiler free as possible, but there was a, and we'll definitely take that. There was a major show that came out uh, with a new season and a major character rode on that peloton and then uh freaking died of a heart attack that's bad pr now of course in the real world um like in a sane and just world that was not ruled by clowns <laughs> myself included maybe um that you would say that's fiction no big deal but in in our world where the uh one third pounder meal couldn't succeed at McDonald's because people saw the three and assumed that it was uh, 
a smaller hamburger than the quarter pounder, even though obviously anyone with like a fourth grade knowledge of how fractions work would tell you that that's not how that works in the slightest. It caused the, the company's fortunes to fall a little bit. They, you know, they've been going through some tumultuous times and they, uh, the stock price fell like a further 10% as a result of that. But then, check it out. Check it out. They got the actor who quote unquote died uh, and had him shoot a fast follow ad really quick that was like, check it out. He's not dead. He's actually living the best life he's ever had in his entire life. And then, like, two days after that, when everyone was patting themselves on the back, that actor got accused of sexual assault <laughs> by two different uh, women. I'm not laughing at the situation, I'm just laughing, like, out of commiseration for the people who must be working at the Peloton marketing department that are like, uh, really? And then, um, one of the instructors, and uh, you, you may know this band, by the way, when I brought it up on stream, people were like, I know that band. But uh, one of the Peloton instructors is, wow, engaged uh, to the lead singer of a band. And uh, at a concert, like within the last week, she said, I have to pee, who's thirsty, invited a man up on stage and then just f unloaded a full bladder right into his mouth, which honestly is just hilarious to me and is also you know i look i don't want to come out in like defense of it but you know it's, it's rock and roll it's not my kind of thing but you know people are supposedly biting the heads off of bats and you know throwing animal blood in the audience and stuff like that at some of these concerts like you know it, it, i find it more funny than like morally objectionable i suppose Obviously, this is the kind of thing that the even though it's a one layer removed from the company itself, like it's an employee's personal relation, and honestly, should be that employee's personal relations own business. We we couldn't get the well. I don't know. Maybe we'll go down one floor, then we'll come back um, to the alt path. But you have to admit, it's very very funny. Like, doesn't it seem? I I haven't. I've only seen like three episodes of Succession in my entire life. But doesn't it seem like what in my head I imagine would happen on an episode of Succession? I digress. It's, it's just a, a funny anecdote. It's not even my anecdote, obviously. But just love. You know, I think I got my my bike on like November twenty first or something like that. And uh, you know, since then it's been like ah. Uh, Hey, I've really had a good time with my Peloton recently. Oh, that thing that killed that fictional character that I loved, and also one of the instructors uh, is getting married to somebody who unloaded a full bladder of pee into a dude's mouth. Can I add, by the way, the dude was, like, actually stoked. If you watch the video, which, you know, <laughs> maybe you want to, I don't know. But he was not, like, under duress. He wasn't like, no, don't do it. He was like, whoa, this is rock and roll. He was having a good time. Which I, I do think changes things. So, I mean, of course it does. If it had been a situation where, like, they, you know, forcibly moved him up on stage and then, you know, urinated on him, that's, like, genuine extreme assault. <laughs> it's, like, it's like a, a mega crime. But if they, you know, it was between two people who knew what they were doing, even if it is at a rock concert in the public eye, hey, you know, it's mostly just two people that I... You know, probably won't be inviting to my Christmas party, or at least I'm not going to let them use the ensuite. Let's put it that way. Anyway, though, uh, doing well. <laughs> Apart from that anecdote, doing well. I I think ev the more people you add to a community, the worse it gets over time. Full stop. That's about it. <laughs> there is a medium, though. Like, a community with, like, five people in it is is also disastrous, but maybe, like, in a different way. Because, like, one, uh, you know, idiot can control, like, the entire flow of the community. But, like, a community with 100,000, like, anonymous users that post every day is also, like, is also crazy. But I think, I, I don't mean to be, like, super negative about community, but the same thing is, like, true on, like, the Peloton community is just full of absolute psychos, at least on Reddit. There's just some people that are like, the 30 minute 2010's Ed Sheeran ride changed my life. I was sweating, I was crying, I had a spiritual moment, like... People, people are taking it like, way too seriously. <laughs> but then there's also people that are like, uh, in today's 
high intensity interval training and hills ride, Olivia talked four times more than I consider to be acceptable. Anybody else want to like, you know, send her a death threat? Like people are, they've taken it way too far. It's just, it's, there's just extremes. Put out a high intensity interval training on her. A hitman. That'd be, you'd, you'd get a shout out on the leaderboard if you had like that name. That was like, you know, hitman for hire, H-I-I-T man for hire. When I ride, I, I watch Twitch or the TV. Dude, honestly, I like the coaching just because, like, I think they push me harder than I would push myself. Like, I always thought I didn't like exercise bikes because, like, you know, 30 minutes of steady state resistance is so annoying. But when the coach is like, hey, crank it up, I'm like, oh, all right, let's do it. And then I'm like, I can't do that. And then wouldn't you know it, I do it. Look at that. All the, like, uh, the stuff where they're like, you can do it, you're beautiful. I'm like, you don't know me, shut up. But when he's like, you know, we're gonna we're gonna push 90 to 100 at you know 40 to 50 resistance, I'm like, oh shit, let's send it. I would never punish myself like that. Have you been indoctrinated into tracking your watts? Yeah, it, it tracks your watts for you. I don't want to tell you my watts per kilogram because anytime I put it into like a watts per kilogram category, um, like a calculator, I should say online, like. It, it basically just pops up the result in red font and then goes like, yeah, keep trying, sweetheart. So, like, we got some time still, but there, there's been a lot of improvement lately. Just takes time. Speedrun could be a Matrix name for sure. Oh, dude, there, there's so many names they didn't use. I can't believe they used Tank. They should have called somebody, like, Emulator. Shitpost. Shitpost Runner. Xbox, uh, uh, paramedic, stonks, comp troller. I don't know why, now it sounds like the the weird part of By the Way by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Troll face, shit post, doom scroll. I just looked up those lyrics, they're so dumb. Excuse me, I'll have you know, it kept me very motivated during my um, 2000s 30 minute rock ride on the Peloton this morning. Little disappointed in my wattage, then I have to remind myself, hey man, like I'm still I'm still a little bit under the weather just to get on the bike feels good. Wattage, good name, so true. Jay, are you here? Like I'm not trying to be like the the Peloton guy, right? I don't really care. It's gotta be like a legit one of the best logos of the 2010s. Company aside, the logo is sick. It's just a P? No, that's what you think it is. If you look at it askew, it's a tire with a with an axle through it. It's it's a sick logo. I wouldn't expect you to understand. Like it takes it takes an artist's eye to see it, which is why I asked Jay. That's just the pedals and crank assembly. Oh yeah, dude, that's even better. Dude, you just opened my mind. That's like when Jay told me that. The Minnesota Wild logo is like a bear. I was like, what are you talking about? It's just a blob. I was incorrect, and he was correct. That Minnesota Wild logo is a bear. I enjoyed seeing that bear immensely when the Canucks eliminated them in five games during the bubble playoffs on an incredible overtime goal from Chris Tanev. Dude, it's so funny. It snowed in Vancouver again, which is pretty rare, especially for like it to happen two times in one week. Um, I've just been watching people like try to drive their bikes through the snow, even though like the bike lanes and stuff are unplowed. They're just like, they're plowing it themselves with their little Schwins through like 10 centimeters of snow. I just can't even imagine how much energy they're using. But also I'm like, I mean, if, if that's how you get to work, I'm like, I don't know what the heck you're supposed to do. I guess you got no choice. But then I thought of a great idea, which was, what if, like, Kate, I got a great idea for, like, a second job for myself. You know I've been training on the Peloton. Yeah. Getting pretty strong. Legs are getting all sorts of, like, blue veins on them and stuff like that. Next winter, I'm going to get a bike and put a snowplow on the front of it. What, what's so funny? <laughs> and I'm going to start plowing the bike lanes. Who's going to give you that money? I don't know, the city, maybe? Yeah, with the budget of... Oh, look at that. 
Yeah, but imagine how strong I'd be. I don't know where the snow would go. I think I'd just end up with a very, very large amount on the front of the plow, but... Would you become a Peloton instructor? I don't think we're at that level. I've only been using it for like a month. But if they'll have me... <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, it seems like kind of like a lot of work. Like, they I have a lot of respect for the Peloton instructors, even the ones I don't really, you know, vibe with that much. Two tap toad, we'll take it. Two tap toad, because like they um, are doing all the things that they're telling you to do, but they're talking at the same time. That's like insane. It's like being an Isaac streamer, exactly. Like, I, like I don't know what these people are made of. It's it's insane. It's it's kind of like streaming. But like they're sometimes they get like a little out of breath, but I'm like, man, you're in good shape. I mean, it is your job, but still, like, I mean, there's episodes of Isaac where I'm like ass at Isaac and ass at talking. Dude, my dad unfollowed me on Peloton today. I went, I went to Peloton to see, uh, cause I, I have, I have two followers. One of them is Dan. One of them is my dad. Because I don't want to, like, treat it like a social network. It's like me time. But, I, you know, I wouldn't mind comparing to my friends. But certainly not, like, you know, strangers and stuff like that. But I went today. I had one follow. I lost 50% of my followers on Peloton. Because my dad unfollowed me. I'm pretty sure what happened is he, he went to click on my profile. And there was, like, a button that said, like, following. And then he's like, yeah, I'm following. So he clicked on it. And then, like, it unfollowed. And now because my, uh... Because my profile is private, he has to send a request to follow again, which sends an email to my wife that then she she has to relay to me. I mean, if he just followed me because, like, I didn't reply to my mom's text fast enough, I'm going to be a... I'm going to be surprised. Let's put it that way. Hello, Daniel. Hello. How are you doing, Daniel? We, we, we PB'd today. By six seconds is something. Kind of like how on the Peloton today. I don't know if you checked your social network stats recently, but I PB'd by uh, six kilojoules today. <laughs> he unfollowed you? No, that was my dad. And we, we set it up. We sorted it out. This is why Dan calls you a nerd? Everybody's a nerd on the Peloton, man. You're using your, you're climbing the leaderboards. You're looking at people only spins for wine and you're like, oh my God, this person's putting out crazy output. What am, how am I supposed to keep up? And then you realize they're like, it says like F, 70s, Lafayette. And you're like, what the heck? I'm, I'm M30s, I'm getting my ass beat. I get like one high five a ride. I got two today. One was from someone, they, they like BM high five you, like when they pass you on the leaderboard, they high five you, like, you know, on your left. Whatever, doesn't bother me that much. But then I got uh, a pop-up while I was on my ride that was like, um, hey, this person's killing it. They've done 45 days in a row. So they were like, do you want to high five them? And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll high five them. Then after I high five them, they high five me back. That sweet, sweet dopamine. Yeah, high five is is basically like a Facebook poke. I don't really understand. Like, I guess the purpose is supposed to be for encouragement. I BM high fives all. Oh no, you get BM high fives all the time. That you know what? I I'm not a, ashamed to admit. You know, it's, hey, it's your bike ride, right? Do whatever you want to do. If I'm about to, if I have a chance to set a PR, I go into like a dead sprint when it's supposed to be the cooldown. That's when I should start giving high fives to all the people as I rip past them on the leaderboard. They're enjoying like their deep breathing. Resistance 20 to 30. Cadence uh, 80 to 100. And I'm the resistance 65. Cadence 75. High five, high five, high five. Just ripping up like 500 leaderboard spots in 60 seconds. Oops, did I beat you? <laughs> Sorry. I'm happy to report that today I did an older Peloton ride where there was a one other rider and I just freaking shellacked them. I was loving every second of it. Oh, man. Did their metadata indicate that they were 50 years old or older? Yes. 
nevertheless. Thanks for the dopamine, ma'am. What the heck? Doesn't your butt hurt from the Peloton? You just get over it in like... I would say in like two weeks. You just get over it. It hurts for a little bit, and then... You just, I don't know, you develop like some anal calluses or something like that? Can you show us? <laughs> oh, man. That's a good comment. That's, that's the good back and forth I like from Twitch chat. 98% of people are like, there's padded shorts you can buy. 2% of people, can you show us? That's the, those are my people right there. I'm looking forward to having a little time off, but I gotta be honest, I've reached the point where I think I'm kind of like a Peloton psycho. Like, I'm not trying to convert people, and I say that every time, because I also don't believe in the idea that that's what someone who sounds like they were trying to convert people would say is a valid criticism. That's probably, it, there's got to be a, a logical fallacy named for that, right? That's like, hey, did you kill, uh, hold on, a uh, good answer, Give, come up with a good answer, good answer, good answer. Did you kill Jimmy Hoffa? There you go. Long enough ago that people can't be offended, but also famous enough that people know who he is, or at least that he's famous for being dead. <laughs> Did you kill Jimmy Hoffa? No. Well, that's what someone would say if they killed Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah, of course. That's not a valid criticism. Your Honor, isn't that what someone would say if they did murder Jimmy Hoffa? Holy cow. But I'm now at the point where I, I'm happy that I'm, I'm going to be away from the house a little bit, seeing some family. But I am not thrilled that I'm not going to be at the Peloton because I got a 48 to 50 day daily activity streak going on right now. It takes a long time to rebuild that. I mean, it takes approximately 48 to 50 days. I, I, I'm not trying to be cagey. I just don't know the answer. It's, it's somewhere in that range, at least. So I think what I'm actually going to do, you would think that, you know, you would just be an adult at age 33 and I would embrace that, you know, I work for myself and the the tool works for me so who cares about arbitrary milestones nah man i'm not letting the street go like that <laughs> so they're gonna download the app and while i'm away i'll do a little like uh you know like a 10 minute stretch every morning or something like that you think i you i i want that platinum badge man i want those digital high fives i'm always maybe overly anal about that stuff because i the way that habits have gone for me in the past, and I think this is just a personality flaw that I'm hoping to get better at as I get older. I've definitely gotten better at it over my life, but like I still room to grow. But like when I'm in something, I'm all in. I'm reading about it. I want to, you know, not be the best in the world because I think that train has sailed for just about anything. Maybe the senior PGA Tour is still open to me if I really get a, a move on. Um, but to be the best that like I can be, to do it in the most efficient way that I can do it, you know, I, I care about that stuff when I'm into something. And then like after one day of not doing it, I'm like, I miss it. And then after two days of not doing it, I'm like, I never want to do that again. <laughs> so I always I try to be very protective of my of my healthy routines when I've got them intact because you know it, it just takes like Oh, we're going away for like a few days and then the day you come back, you're like, Oh, I didn't sleep well last night. What's one more day? And then you're like, you come down with the sickness and then you're like, okay, now that's like a week on top of all that. And then you're like, well, at this point, like I might as well just never do it again. And then, you know, you come back next New Year's Eve or something. So I try to, I try to be as protective as possible. And you know what? If, if maintaining an arbitrary number of days in a row, if that's the... If that helps me, then maybe that is the bike serving me as a tool instead of me serving the bike. You know what I mean? I forgot you had bad rhythm. Excuse me, have you seen my uh, Peloton cadences? I am in the, the suggested cadence range. 85% plus. Easy 85% plus. Sometimes my legs are just tired and then I maybe dip under it a little bit just to rest, but... 
because you keep pushing through your cooldown period. Yeah, I think I I don't think Dan's still here. Dan, I don't know if I'm ever gonna set another PB on the Palaton. I can't do it, man. I always I'm like right in line with my PB for like the first 20 minutes of a 30 minute run. I don't know what the hell happened, man. But I like I'm blowing myself away in the last 10 minutes. I think I was doing like a dead sprint in the cooldown once. I'll I'll never be able to pass it. Good Peloton ride this morning. Still getting smoked by, uh, you know, people in their 70s. But again, I think that they have very little else to do. <laughs> I'm dead. Look, that's a judgment. I'm just, it's it's the copium I tell myself to... Well, and also, I, I will say that I think, depending on, you know, your youth, you might have had superpowers, you know? Like, relative to middle-aged and, and older adults. Not that I'm necessarily middle-aged yet, but... I mean, let me put it this way. Rather than beating around the bush and talking in, like, you know, allegories or whatever, um, anytime I would get, like, out of shape in my youth, you know, like, my teenage years, I always felt that, like, within two weeks of starting to work out again, I had already gotten into fairly good shape. Certainly by, like, a month... Your body is just like, oh, we're going to, like, work out now? Okay, like, here's progress. Progress. Here's some free progress for you. Here's some progress. But I no longer assume that just because somebody's a little older than me, I no longer assume that I'm going to just be better at a physical thing. Nowadays, I definitely think I've reached the age where I have to work. It's probably easier for somebody in their early to mid-30s to put out some, you know, bonkers output when they cycle. But somebody in their early to mid-30s who's only been doing it for two months versus somebody in their 60s who's been doing it for three years, I'm putting a bet on the on the 60s any day of the week, man, without a doubt. Now, if you're 21, I think you might have a case. I think you, you might be like, oh, what's this? How do I even clip in? And then you're like, oops, I just put out, uh, you know, a 400 watt uh, half hour ride. 400 kilojoule half hour ride. I don't know how physics works, but anyway. Right now, I it, it's the Peloton is a weird world. I don't know how many people out there are, are using either the app or the bike themselves, but maybe you find it relatable. When I see someone in their 30s, I know I got a chance. When I see someone in their 50s or older, I just give them a high five as they pass me by. Because I know there's no shot. I think it's like a, th there must be like a selection, right? Like if you're still using the bike at age 50, you probably competed in the Tour de France. Obviously I can't back that up, but it made for kind of a funny punchline, I hope. Peloton's going out of business. Honest question, why do so many people in chat read individual stock news? Like, do you think you're Warren Buffett? The Nasdaq's not gonna sleep with you, bro. Why are you so obsessed? They're all old? Nah, man, old people don't watch, like, the stock news. It's literally, like, 23-year-old Wall Street bets washouts. Old people are out there, you know, just reading the newspaper on their porch. Everybody else is like, look at this, it's oversold. Look at this RSI. They literally stopped making bikes? Yeah, because they made too many over the... I'm like, I, look, I don't even have an investment in Peloton, just to be clear. But they obviously overstated demand during like a once in a century, hopefully, pandemic. And now they're like, we got like a warehouse full of these bikes that are quite frank... <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> quite frankly, like super expensive. So let's stop making them for a bit so we can at least get rid of like the, uh, the inventory we got. In my opinion, as somebody who knows nothing about business, though, I swear to you, I'm press. I'm resetting this one just because I, I think I think we gotta do the slow walk for a bit. It would be better for their business if they sold more bikes. Oh, and the Nobel Prize for smartest uh, business CEO goes to Twitch Chat. Incredible. Where are you available for consulting services right now? I will say when so like in the pandemic. Well, okay, it's not the best terminology anymore. Summer 2020, I think Peloton stock hit like $180 a share, something crazy, right? Up from $20 at IPO. Then it's come down over time. They had to recall all the tread pluses um, because of grievous injury and death. 
Um, so that affected it. And then it was still coming down as gyms reopened. And then, uh, then it killed um, a character on Sex in the City and it came down a little bit more. And I, in a, I, I don't buy individual stocks because I'm smart. But I will admit, even I was in a group chat with my friends and I said, dude, Peloton stock is down like 75%. And it just dipped another 10% because of an act of fiction that occurred on an HBO TV show. How much lower could it go? And then, in the month since then, prior to yesterday, it dipped about another 35%. And then I said, really this time, how low could it go? That was 72 hours ago. And then yesterday, they were like, we're not making any more bikes for a bit, or treads. And it dipped 26% or something after hours. And I was like, you know what? That's a great reminder to just n not think you're smarter than the stock market. <laughs> it's like three different times I was like, it can't go lower than this. And then, I think that what happens for most people in the modern day is they just buy it at one of those to begin with, and then whenever it goes down, they go, damn institutional investors, it's the damn whales trying to liquidate my 10 shares. They're not gonna get my 10 shares. All this market manipulation is so crazy, like, it's the only thing that's stopping this company from going to the moon. You guys weren't ready for that one last January. Now, now people are starting to come around a little bit. Um, there's starting to be a few more plus twos than there were last year. You might be mad at me for Peloton posting, um, but again, I always like to make it clear. You know, I'm not trying to get you to buy a Peloton. I just have very little going on in my life <laughs> that is able to be mined for anecdotes right now. In the summertime, she'll probably go back to activity gym. She'll start saying sentences and stuff like that. There'll be some very funny and heartwarming moments. It'll, it'll be great for everybody, okay? But for now, this is, we're kind of in like a holding pattern. It's the winter season. It is what it is, right? We're just not really doing much. I'm not trying to Peloton post. I'm, and at least I'm not trying to do it to like convince anybody to buy one. You know, that's your own personal decision you could always just get like a schwinn and then strap an ipad to it right and then you know watch these videos but it's happy to report i did after my incredible sleep last night i did set a new pb on the peloton that i previously thought was uh unassailable and then i plugged it uh, because i'm like you know you start to think you, you you forget like what it takes to become like you know good at something most things in life you to get good at them you don't have that, like, natural mastery by default. You might have, like, a waiting, you know, one way or the other. But, uh, you know, it's... You, nobody is, like, they pick up a book once and they're like, I need to read Anna Karenina, you know? Instead, it's it's a gradual process. But I start thinking to myself, like, wow, I'm a good cyclist, man. Oh, man, I don't know. Maybe I could, like, be in races or something like that. Like, not the Tour de France. Not for another six months or so. But <laughs> if I could maybe just, you know, there's got to be something local, right? Like, maybe a 30-minute Ed Sheeran race that they do on the Peloton from time to time. They ever do those IRL? Nope, I wonder why. Um, then I plug in my, uh, my stats. I plug in my output to a watts per kilogram calculator and it turns bright red and says okay slugger how'd you get your dad's internet browser might want to put in a couple extra decades on the bike before you even think of entering like a fun run uh, you know it's a process it's a learning process but i was six thousand out of twenty seven thousand on the leaderboard today for my 90s rock and light arms ride 90s rock ride and light arms. 90s rock and... Uh, I don't know how you would phrase this sentence. Anyway, so that's all I got going on. The Peloton did kill another fictional character I saw. Sometimes people ask, they'll come to my chat, it's like a gotcha. They're like, hey NL, how do you feel about your Peloton now that the stock's down like 40%? And I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, how do you feel about everything you own now that... The S&P 500 is down like 11% over the course of 2022 so far, you know? Like, it's... As long as the bike still works. If the company goes out of business, I'll be upset because, I don't know, I'm going to have to start watching, you know, like, SpongeBob SquarePants or something on the 
on the Peloton screen. Or as my chat suggested, I could just jailbreak the, the Peloton Android tablet and turn it into a Game Boy Advance emulator. The most amazing. This man found a way to build the most expensive Game Boy Advance emulator ever created. Inspiring. But, um, you know, until it happens, I'm not going to worry about it too much. As long as they keep the, the Sam Yo archive pumping, the credit card rings up every month. How's the Peloton going? It's going well, thank you, thank you for asking. Sam Yo had a, a wonderful Lunar New Year ride today, featuring many great uh, songs, including Boombia by Blackpink. Really gets the blood pumping on that two minute progressive climb to end it. Hello, Daniel. Dan, we got a new PB today. This is not gonna be it. On the Peloton? Oh God, no. I, my, I started pedaling in the warm-up on the Peloton today and I just knew it. We, we were not gonna be pushing PB. I mean, you know, we still crossed 300 output, so I, I was happy about that. But uh, it felt like my knees were gonna explode. So I was like, let's take it easy. Quick caca in chat, by the way. Quick caca as we face the camera, thank you. I can't help but feel like Maybe your plan sort of backfired on this one. Nice microbe. <laughs> NL, how was the Peloton ride today? Thank you for asking. Did a wonderful 30-minute um, classic rock ride with my favorite instructor, Sam Yo, Bat Chest. And I, I expected, honestly, I was going to go into it with kind of sore legs. But after the warm-up, I was like, we should chase a PB. And I, I PB'd by like nine kilojoules. I was like, this this was a good ride. Rocking to Def Leppard. He is a little bit too pro Def Leppard for my personal taste, but that's okay. You know, nobody's perfect. I've, I feel like I've definitely gotten a lot more um, awareness of the Def Leppard uh, catalog as a result of, uh, of doing those rides. Like, I don't just know... Uh, Pour some sugar on me. Now I also know, you know, f f f foolin. Pretty sure NL shredded behind the scenes. It's true. I mean, I've been riding my bike uh, daily for about two and a half months. You don't even want to. You don't want to know. Do you see how quickly I bodied that vaccine? Well, I said every day, but like I didn't ride it yesterday because I was recovering from the vaccine. But almost every day. I will say, so I was riding on uh, Saturday morning. I was like 70% of the way through the ride. And then Dan, who was one of my only Peloton friends, joined in the class. It was like, your friend joined in the class. And I was like, I cranked it up. I was like, there's no way I'm letting this guy embarrass me. It was a home field advantage. Because I was in my, my favorite class. It was a Sam Yo class. But I, I went. I was like. Bling, 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 bling. I was like. I'm going to. I want to make sure this guy knows he's on my turf. When's the Peloton stream? Don't talk to me about Peloton. I just hope the company stays in business. I, I do hope. Because I think the CEO today said that he's going to be transitioning to a less operational role. Like he's going to be on the board of directors instead of um, being the CEO. It's, I remember, I told you like two years ago, I read that interview with um, the C, I think the New York Times did an interview with the Peloton CEO. And I was like, this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He's literally, he said every morning I wake up and I go to the bathroom sink and cup my hands under the faucet and I drink about 40 handfuls of water straight from the bathroom sink. I do it until I feel like I'm about to throw up and then I start my day. And I'm like, this guy is not capable of running a, something in the S&P 500. Are you crazy? You never heard of a cup? But I'm like, I, I'm torn because it seems like a lot of people, I mean, I don't think like the Peloton service is going anywhere, but they might be allow me to put on my, my unnecessarily business guy hat. They might be an acquisition target, but I, I hope they stay, you know, as independent as they are right now. Cause like, it just pisses me off that like, I, you know, no disrespect to um, 
the company, the, the companies, I guess, that I like independently contract for. Mr. Sergey Brin, Mr. Jeffrey Bezos, Mr. Andy Jassy. But like, I really don't want to have to use my Google, Amazon, Apple, you know, just insert account here to sign up for everything. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to have every login for everything in my entire life associated with my Amazon account. There's, there's been too much rolling up lately. We need to have some, some rolling down. Did you get a new PR on the Peloton this morning? Thank you for asking, but I did not. Today, honestly, I just, I woke up normal time, got on the bike and I, I, during the warm up, I was like, you know what? I'm just not feeling the, uh, the glycogen in the legs. Ended up, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say embarrassing myself, but, but output was a little lower than I would like. Ended up in the, oh, so close. I think in the two, 280s or 290s. Go ahead, laugh. Lost to boomers again? No, I was first on the leaderboard today out of the three people that were riding alongside me. But I don't even want to, I probably don't even have to mention that the other two people were in their 70s, so... <laughs> Still felt good. You destroyed those old guys? Yeah, old guys. Old guys, that's what they were. That's who I destroyed on my Peloton ride this morning. That's who I spammed high fives to after I passed them. All those old guys. <laughs> Has the Peloton killed any more fictional characters lately? That depends if you heard about the guy from Billions. But it didn't kill the guy from Billions. He just went to the hospital. It was the other show where the guy died. <laughs> Serious question, how many heart attacks have you had on your Peloton? That's pretty good. I like that. That's pretty, that's pretty funny. We're back with SM64. Can you believe it? Yes. <laughs> Certainly, probably. Don't worry, you may hear a little, little congestion. I promise you. I mean, like, like two days ago, when nobody knew I was slightly, slightly under the weather. I'm 99% today. Nobody, two days ago, 48 hours ago, I was so strong, nobody even knew I was under the weather. My Peloton output, 284 in 30 minutes. Oof. Yesterday, people said, are you getting sick? I said, no, I'm almost over it. Peloton output, 304. Today... People are like, you still, are you okay? Don't be afraid to take a day off. Today's Peloton output, I think it was like 312, okay? So if you're watching the, the Peloton output as a secondary marker for my health, I'm doing well. Now, mentally, I don't know, but I do have some tea with me. You can be a hater all you want. I would put it up here right, right there with them. Doesn't bother me at all. Not concerned in the slightest. Wrong, wrong, wrong. They all taste like... Unless you're... If you're drinking a glass, I could understand. But, like, if you're just adding it to something, it's all the same shit, man. Don't even get me... St I never consume soy. Okay. I bet, like, to be honest, if you put me against you in a strongman competition, I bet on me. There's probably some people in chat that would win. But on average, if you, if you took a sample of chat... Of people that were like, I never consume soy. I bet I'm stronger than you. And I'm just being honest. I understand not wanting to consume so much soy. But like uh, the difference, uh, you know, if you walked into like a Starbucks and you're like, I'll take a cappuccino with oat milk. And they're like, oh, we only have soy milk. Like you would walk out. I could pick you up over my head. That's just my personal opinion is that I could pick you up over my head. I also think, and I don't even think this one, like you might be stronger than me. I would crush your ass on the Peloton without a doubt. That one is not even an option. I'll be pedaling like a 55-year-old when Brian Adams' run to you comes on. You're not going to touch the wattage, okay? You might think that you're strong because, you, you know, you like soldered your motherboard or something like that. Maybe. Maybe you think you're strong because you grew a beard. Maybe you think you're strong because you look strong and you wear shorts in the wintertime. I don't know. I'm willing to be wrong on that one, okay? I'm willing to step up to the Atlas Stones and see who can pick up the biggest one. And I'm willing to be wrong and shake your hand afterwards. On the Peloton, I would crush you. It wouldn't even be close. How was the Peloton ride this morning? Oh, thank you for asking. Uh, no big deal. Just set a new PB. There was a thread on the Peloton subreddit that was like, how tall are you? 
and what do you set your bike seat height at? I read through the thread when I was on the toilet this morning, and everybody was like, someone was like, I'm 5'2", and my bike is set at 16 height, and I was like, I'm 5'10", and my bike is set at 16 height. So I cranked that shit up, and I think that having a, a, a more appropriate bike fit helped me get a little extra wattage this morning. I think I was kind of riding it like a like a low rider. I was riding it like like Ryan Nyquist. Much better for your knees as well. I believe that. I believe that. Yeah, that's how I I, I sat on the bike and it was like your knee should be almost fully extended when you're at the bottom of your pedal stroke your pedal stroke and then I extended uh, to the bottom of my pedal stroke and my knee was bent at like a a 60 degree angle. And I was like this isn't even close, man. This isn't even close. No wonder my hammies were getting so much work. So I honestly, I felt like it was an easier ride today, but I PB'd by like, maybe like 4%. And I was like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I don't have like anything else to say about it. Because I only have like two friends on the Peloton to compare myself with. One is my dad. He doesn't have a Peloton. He just has the app, so I can't even like you know, stunt on his scores, because you can't see his output, you can only see, like, his calories burned. And then, the the other one is Dan, but I think he only has a Peloton, like, at his gym, so he's not doing it as often. But I also don't want to add anybody else on the Peloton, because it's me time. So it's it's kind of like a personal problem, for sure. You came out the damn back to tank? I feel like I came out the damn back to tank this morning, thank you, I feel like I did. No, I don't want to add you on the Peloton. Like, not to be rude, but like, I, I, I'm not saying I'm a celebrity. But the only reason you would want to add me is because you know who I am, which by definition makes me a celebrity no matter how small the magnitude of attention placed on me is. So, like, I'm just out there trying to enjoy like a nice ride to improve like my cardiovascular health. But I feel like if I added people from chat, like every day they would be going out with the bloodlust just to try to like, like it would be the best day of, of their year if they could just crush me on the Peloton where I would just be like doo -doo 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 -doo. I also don't want to come to stream sometimes and have like, let's go triples. I don't want to come to stream sometimes and have a hundred people be like, hey, why was your output like only 293 today when you average like a 315? I might be like, I don't know, man. I just kind of slept weird last night. Like it's too much personal information for, for strangers to have. Or God forbid if I like miss a couple days. Or like, you know, some days I'm like, I don't feel like I'm gonna PB today. Hold on, this is an important moment. I'll take Hollow Heart for whip any day of the week. Some days I'm like, I don't feel like I'm gonna PB today, so instead of doing a 90s classic rock ride like I did today, I'll do uh, like a 2010 pop ride, because I know the music sucks and thus won't get me fired up. I don't want people showing up in chat and being like, hey, oh, egg, Madge, you made me ride to uh, Pink and Katy Perry today. Ooh, I, I didn't make you do anything, man. I just needed a slightly more low impact day. But I choose not to do the low impact rides because they don't have any time out of the saddle. But the time you spend out of the saddle is one of the easiest ways to get your average output up. And also it kind of feels like a break after you've been grinding in the saddle for so long. No, 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 no. I, I do not average 315 watts. That's crazy. But now you made me feel bad because you said average 315. Whoa, that's crazy. I average like 280. I don't average 280. I average like 180. 180 watts over 30 minutes becomes like, you know, 320 kilojoules or something like that. That's not an oof, that's pretty good, man. I'm in the top 10% of the leaderboard pretty much every day. Now, am I competing largely against men in their 50s and women doing, you know, prenatal biking classes? Yes. But I don't judge them based on that. It sounds like you're judging them based on that. I think, honestly, some of them, like, are stronger than me. Like, nothing scares me on the Peloton, like, being neck and neck with, like, a, a, a somebody's profile who's, like, you know, they have a University of Georgia Bulldogs avatar, and their name is, like, Big Dog 74 and then in the metadata, it says men's 50, or male 50, and then, like, 
a Fleetwood Mac song comes on, I'm like, oh shit, I'm about to get torched. I can't summon the same kind of adrenaline for Fleetwood Mac. Like, I mean, if they played like a Beach House song, I would probably leave them in the dust, but they they don't have the rights to all those yet. Then maybe Florence and the Machine is like the closest they get. I was neck and neck with Dirty Grandpa 669 on the Peloton yesterday. That's fine. I love when you end up on like a ride that only has like three people on it on the concurrent leaderboard. And then like there's always some Floyd Landis dude who like after the warm up, he's like 75% above everybody else. Then he just starts sending out high fives. High five, you finished the warm up. High five, you finished the first Red Hot Chili Pepper song. Shut the fuck up, Chris Froome. Piece of yeah, I get it. You're strong, okay? I get it. You've been you've been on the Peloton for a long time. You don't have to send me eight high fives on a ride just because, like, you know, you're unemployed. I'm just trying to improve my cardiovascular health. Nice shot, nice shot. Yeah, they, don't even get me started, man. You start doing the shout outs in the ride. Hey, uh, Pello for wine. Congratulations. It's your 8,300th ride today. Congrats. It's not your 8,000. What are you, do you, you're telling me? You've been biking for uh, 4,800 hours? The company's only existed for like six years or something like that. Like, come on. Uh, biking for tacos! Congrats, 6,500 rides! I'm like, you bullshit. Bullshit. Five minute warm up, 10 minute warm up, 30 minute ride, 10 minute cool down, five minute cool down. You liar. Scumbag. <laughs> Sorry. The Peloton metadata on the leaderboard is the closest I get to Facebook. I didn't realize how open people are with their data. Like, in one username, and a little bit of metadata attached to it, willfully offered by, like, suburban Midwestern ants, you you know their whole lives. Their name will be, like, name of my child plus how many children I have plus my favorite sports team in the year I was born, and then in their tags, it's, like, recovering lawyer. I'm like, I could... I could find you in a heartbeat if I if you send me too many toxic high fives on the freaking Peloton. I did see the post on the subreddit that said with my current route I could get a sum of best at 18 minutes. But I feel like that's like someone saying like hey you could run like a 10 second 100 meter dash with your legs. <laughs> it's like you're probably right but I still think that the we got a lot of work to put in before, like, we're gonna get to that point, and that's fine, because I'm having a fun time with it. Maybe not with your legs. Um, excuse me, I've been riding the Peloton every day. Had a little bit of a, a light day today, only had 3.30, uh, output on my 30-minute 90s classic rock ride. But to be fair, I got distracted because the instructor played Give It Away by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I was just thinking about Justin judging me. Go one day without mentioning the Peloton challenge? Dude, I don't like go outside. Like, I got no anecdotes. It's just driving and the Peloton. That's it, man. That's it. I got nothing else. Just let me have it, okay? That's all I got. You're just lucky I haven't talked more about Lane Break, man. Saw someone post on the Peloton subreddit. They're like, you know, Lane Break is the new game that Peloton added where you use the bike as a controller. They were like, it's really hard in the rhythm sections. I wish they would add the ability to pair Joy-Cons to your Peloton. I was like, are you, have you lost your, you get that this is like an exercise machine, right? You really want to pedal your, you're going to be at like a 140 BPM heart rate and you're going to be sitting there with your Joy-Cons like tap, 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 tap. They, they said, I'm an established rhythm game player. And I was like, well, this is a bike. So I don't know if, like, your opinion is valid here. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's, like, a little rude. Man. Your opinion is valid, but, like, you know, it's valid in the sense that I believe that you believe what you're saying. But I'm also like, well, this is a... Sir, this is a bike. I'm not gonna play, like, you know, Ozu on this thing. Also, I don't want to go up against established rhythm game players in Peloton Lane Break. I want to go up against, like... 48-year-old public defenders. I guess the way it's supposed to be. How's your nut today? Thank you for asking. It's fine. Honestly, I think everything down there is going great. I think because I've been riding the Peloton every single day, I've built up kind of like a scrotal callus, so I just can't feel anything down there. 
I'm like John Turturro's toe in Mr. Deeds. Like, you could hit it with an ice pick or something. I got nothing. Or a fireplace poker. I'll be fine. Have you considered that you'll never PB again? I have, and honestly, I think I would still just keep playing Mario 64 just because it's fun. You know, I was reading this thread on r slash Peloton Cycle. You know, the Peloton subreddit. Because if you go to r slash Peloton, it's just nerds who like watching competitive biking. Which is just insanity to me. But you know what? People watch motorsports, so like, who am I to judge? Anyway, um, there was a thread that was like, what's your uh, number one fitness milestone from the previous year? And the top comment was a guy that was like, I took my... A fitness test this year and didn't regress from last year and I'm 58 years old so that's like a milestone for me and I was like yo you know what that's a healthy relationship to have with uh, with any hobby I think is that you know not regressing is progress that's big pog by the way White Knight Lancelot thanks for the gifted subscriptions thank you so like I, I think it's it's the the domain of the juvenile to assume that you will always be guaranteed better results just by wanting them, you know? There's a lot of stuff that's kind of outside of your control. That's why you just gotta have fun with it. Did you send a high five? I No, but I did send some high fives out on my ride today. I don't even, I, look, nobody cares but me. There were only three people in my, uh, in my ride session today. It was me. A man in his 70s and a woman in her 40s. First six minutes of that half hour ride, me and the woman in her 40s were neck and neck, man. Neck and neck. I, I, I almost hit a point where I was like, you know what? I'm going to like high five her and then I'm going to regress a little bit because I'm getting like a little, I'm, I'm putting out more wattage than I find sustainable. Then she regressed first and I just grinded her down, man. It was like three to four kilojoules a song, just adding to the lead, adding to the lead. By the end of the ride, I was up by like, no! <laughs> by the end of the ride, I was up by like 30 kilojoules, and then I sent the high five. Oh, man. And the dude in his 70s, I sent him one just because, you know, he was, he was hanging in there. But what the hell? That was my mom. She said, you're toxic. That's fine. I don't care. I have, like, some of the least toxic Peloton uh, interactions of all time. You know, like, there's probably, like, 10,000 people on the Peloton named some variation of, like, Let's Go Brandon. I just can't imagine, like, where you have to be in your life to make your identity online exclusively, like, I'm afraid to swear at the current president of the United States of America. Like, that's your... That's your personality. I used to make fun of people who were like, uh, you know, college football team underscore my child's name. But now I'm like, dude, that's honestly, at least that's like a, something we can have a conversation about. It's just... Or people whose entire, like, Peloton profile is like, you know, masks underscore don't work. And I'm like, what, really? Like, that's your, your, you're basing your entire identity online on being like, anti-mask that's gonna be your defining this is like your anti-mask era you're gonna get like 400 rides you're gonna get a letter in the mail from peloton with a t-shirt that says like hey masks don't work congratulations on your fitness journey like what the hell are you doing just make it like your dog's name followed by the school you graduated from like a normal person like tomo was here yeah exactly oh look at that pale red and your third grade teacher and your mother's maiden name, etc., etc. The year you were born, your bank pin number. You could just no, don't take Lord of Spelunky, okay? Lord of Spelunky is my name. I actually prefer Lord of Spelunky to like Northern Lion at this point, just because it's funny. Isaac Baby, let's go. That's another good one. I think people are like trying to make me nervous. I legitimately, like, don't care. <laughs> there's no, there's no, like, oh, don't choke, you know? It's, I'm having a great time. One day, before we, we're gonna, if you look at every single data point, you're like, man, this is like a long journey. If you're enjoying every step on the journey, before you know it, the S&P 500 is gonna be back at 5,000. 
You don't need to look at the intraday charts. You don't need to look at the green candles and the red candles. Just stick to the investment strategy that you outlined in a less emotional moment, you know, with your financial advisor or, you know, with the little book of common sense investing and just fucking chill out, like close your app. Like I, I could just close live split right now. In many ways, it is like a Peloton ride. Hey, here's the thing, right? I remember when I first started riding the Peloton, I was like, oh man, it's like such an aspiration for me to get like a ride over 300 output in half an hour. And it seemed like it was impossible. You know, you're hitting like 250, 260, 280, 250, 270. Then one day I crossed 300. I ain't ever come back, man. Now I'm looking at like 400 and I'm like, that shit is so far. Like that's almost impossible to imagine. 400 output over 30 minutes. Just keep on trucking, you know, three months down the road, you're going to end up with a 400. You may never see 300 ever again. We may not get a sub 2156 today, but one day in the future, we'll look back on this moment and we'll be like, man, remember when our PB was 2156 and we were like, that shit's impossible. We got a good thing going here. Let's, let's not let a very meager time save cause us psychic damage. Built in time save for the future. The hater Goomba is there anyway. I didn't even look. I was like, not necessary. Not a good throw, but we can two-tap this son of a gun. Beautiful. Gotta remember, it's always better to underthrow it a little bit. Which is why I yeeted that one full speed in the opposite direction. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ready for the quick double. Two quick ones. Fire! I can live with this. Good. Now you gotta do a full speed swing. I felt it early. It's not gonna be legit PB. It might be fake PB. Am I in, did I swing Bowser in the other direction that time? Fake PB is 2231. Real PB is 2156. So we're, we're like very close, man. It's going to be a fake PB, but, but by like two seconds. Ooh, okay. Okay. I told you we were closing in on it. I was fake here. That's still a really impressive run. That's the first time we've knocked on the door of our old route PB. We're getting there. Didn't, am I insane or did Richard Dawkins make a tweet about young Sheldon? Where he was like, I don't know if anybody's heard of this, but there's this show on American television called Young Sheldon and it does a great job of showing off the, the plight of an intellectual child. He did, okay, so I didn't dream that shit. Richard Dawkins is so funny. I wish he was real. I gotta be like, I'm the Richard Dawkins defender, unfortunately, because I like bought a paperback copy of The Selfish Gene when I was like in my first year of uh, biology lessons. And I'm like, this show, like, honestly, like all of his other takes are like brain dead, but like, he was a really good like biologist for like a while before he was like, I don't want to be a biologist. I want to be a celebrity that's famous for being stupid. He did the opposite of the Mike Judge. Like he he gave up on a on a career in biology where he was like a pioneer to just get like dunked on on Twitter every day. I guess there was like a 30 or 40 year period in the middle where he was like, I don't know, being like, I don't believe in God or whatever. And here's a book about it. That's right, he did say uh, young Sheldon helps him pass dull time on the exercise machine, which also feels like one of the most British sentences I've ever heard in my entire life. 
dull time on the exercise machine. You know what you don't see that much of anymore? He needs a Peloton, for sure. Uh, Richard Dawkins, I will buy you a Peloton if you delete your Twitter account. And that's not a joke. Oh my god, you know how much good press I would get for that? You know how many insane tweets I would get too? It would like, oh man, it would pay for itself in no time flat. He's got to buy his own subscription though. And I'm not getting you the bike plus, okay? You got to turn your own resistance knob. You pay for the bike and the subscription separately? Yes, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it. But you got it. Essentially, you got the premise. By the way, I'm... Just so you know, like, look, the character of Northern Lion is based on the exaggerated personality and quirks of streamer Ryan Letourneau. He's a, a product of fiction. That being said, like, I... The things I say on stream, I usually do believe kind of, at least. So, like, I'm very happy to be able to validate my previous take that if my significant other got me a peloton i would not be upset i was not only did we talk about this once during react court but even when the uh when the peloton wife shit was going on i was like i don't see why all these people are like oh that husband's so bad he bought his wife like an exercise bike I get it. If you live in a 1990s sitcom, you would be like, Are you saying I'm fat? Ha ha ha! Woo! Oh! If you live in the real world, I think I would be like, I, my bit from back then was like, I would be like, thank you so much for the exercise bike and for caring about my health. And then my wife got me a Peloton for my birthday. And the whole time I've been like, thanks for getting me that Peloton. It's really helped me make some healthy lifestyle choices. Was she calling you fat, though? Yeah, like a little bit, for sure. I mean, I was I was getting a little soft, for sure. Why was I getting soft in the middle? The rest of my life was so hard. I need a photo opportunity. I need a shot at redemption. Don't want to end up a cartoon in a cartoon graveyard. You know what I mean? Like, if you be my bodyguard, I would be your long-lost pal. I would call you Betty, and you know what? If it strikes you, if the mood strikes you, Betty, when you call me, you can call me Al. I have a real mana problem. Um, I don't think it's going to come to a head just yet, but it will change at some point. That we, we We're going to need some extra mana. You should see a doctor about that. Yeah, right when I get my blood work done to see if I got a vitamin deficiency because I got a sore throat because my daughter's in daycare all day around kids who have 25 siblings that are open air classrooms with no masks on in the middle of cold and flu season. I will see a doctor when I have a, a Peloton ride where the output is below uh, 300 uh, in 30 minutes. As far as I'm concerned, I can't be sick as long as I'm still pumping out like 340s every day. Show calves. I'm not gonna show my calves, but I'll tease you, okay? Because I'm an idiopathic toe walker and I grew up uh, a little chubby, my calves have never been a weak spot for me, but especially with the Peloton, oh man. I was doing a little 10 minute uh, post-workout stretch today. I was like, those don't look like my calves anymore. Those look like a cyclist's calves. I was, I was pogging up. Let me just say it, I was pogging up. Calva, Calva? Why are you getting outpaced by 50-year-old women? Excuse me, I'm not. It's usually 60-year-old men. And I've already explained my rationale for this. Is because 60-year-old men, many of them are also retired. They got nothing better to do than be cyclists, right? So, like, I've got a full-time job and a young baby. Like, I have things to do. All they have to do is, like, look at their 401k and then, you know, spend an hour a day doing a Kendall Tool 80s rock ride, okay? Anyway, I don't have I don't have Peloton anecdotes today. My only my only Peloton anecdote is I I continue to go back to the lane break mode that they just released, but they don't release new uh, tracks for it at a regular enough interval for my insatiable appetite for cardio. So I just keep listening to like the same one or two. And every time I finish a ride, I'm like, man, I gotta listen to like all of Jagged Little Pill, man. Give me banditry first, although I do want the shredders to pop. It's been so long since I listened to the whole album, but every single, with the exception of Ironic, which is ironic because it's probably its most well-known single, but every single off the album is, is sick, man. 
I love when she does the the weird thing with her voice too. When she goes like, slap me with the splintered ruler. You know what I'm talking? Ruler. I can't really even do it. You know what I'm talking about? Not really. <laughs> okay. I mean, you ought to know. is a is a great song, man. Thank. Congratulations on a hundred Peloton rides. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. You've scratched me. I did. I I hit a a hundred Peloton rides yesterday. I hit one o. Well, technically, I hit one o two today. Technically, we hit one o two today because I want to do more Peloton lane break rides. Um, but. They only have one 30-minute ride, which is David Guetta hits. And I've been doing that ride like once a week. But I don't want to listen to the same six David Guetta songs every single day. So I mix it up sometimes and I run some, uh, I'll run some Rock Riot 1. That it, I'll tell you the track list, okay? Tra it's a 15-minute lane break workout. Track 1 it starts with a bang immediately. Alanis Morissette, All I Really Want. Track 2... Uh, something by the Black Keys. I think it's called Howlin' For You because in the song, the guy goes, Baby, I'm howling for you. But I also feel like that's kind of every Black Keys song that I know. Third song, Boys and Girls by Blur off the seminal 1996 album Park Life. Final track, it's a Muse song. I believe that the song is called MK Ultra. So I'm... She's a brick hammer. So to be honest, my my whole the the reason that I do the ride largely comes down to uh, Alanis and Blur. But at least like Howlin' for You by the Black Keys, at least it's got a nice driving beat that you can you can come out of the saddle and put that resistance high. And then I follow it up with some uh, usually uh, fifteen minute David Bowie hits. Starts with Young Americans, then goes into, um, I think, Let's Dance. Changes is definitely on it. Rebel Rebel's definitely on it. I, uh, they need to add more 30-minute rides. I can only hear the David Guetta songs so many times, man. I also must tell you, many people said, when I said that I had a cast iron immune system, it's so properly seasoned that all of the, uh, the germs just, uh, you know... I can't get off my horse, thank you. Um, all of the germs just uh, kind of like slide right off. They doubted me. And you were right to doubt. I woke up this morning with a, like a little congestion and a little sore throat. My daughter's been sick for a few days now. It's not uh, unprecedented in this uh, era of constant daycare pathogen transmission. But I've also, first off, and this is not a meme, this is reality. I PB'd on my Peloton ride this morning, so how sick could I be? And then, I've also just kind of been like, I've been like talking shit to whatever virus it is. I know how that sounds, but like, I've just kind of become like, like I'm trying to win versus the virus in the marketplace of, of banter. Like, I, I've been going like, you know, you're nothing. You're just like a little uh, protein capsule and like a little strand of RNA. Like, you're actually so pathetic. That's so sad. You know, my body vaporizes like probably 50 million of you every time I put my toothbrush in my mouth or something like that. Like, you think you're so... What, what are you? You're just... You, you're a little... You got a tesseract and a single strand of like RNA inside of it. Big freaking whoop. I'm a man. I got a dick. I got a single ball. You're nothing. You're not even science. You're so pathetic. Scientists have not yet decided whether you're alive or dead. Do you realize how sad that is? First off, be wary of plague. Therefore, try frenzy. Be wary of blood loss. Therefore, all the more reason to try rump. How do you feel about that? You might say is NL sick. Yes. I told this story in chat already, but uh, my baby... Started to be sick maybe uh, Friday. Today is uh, is the following Thursday. I was actually doing very well. I felt no illness uh, whatsoever. And then I was holding her maybe on Tuesday. You know, and when you hold, I just got my mouth open. I'm just relaxing. Babies don't go like ah 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 a chew. They just go tch and like. 
do that. I felt droplets of of baby sneeze, like it hit the back of my throat, and I was like, I know I'm I'm done. I'm toasted. So I'm I'm pretty sure that that's what happened. It's pretty wild though. Yesterday I was like, I'm definitely starting to feel sick, but not only did I Peloton, I PB'd. And then uh, today I was like, there's no chance I'm getting on that bike. Are you crazy? I can't believe how many times, you know, from March 2020 until like last November, how many times I said, you know what's crazy is I can't believe I haven't been sick since the pandemic started. If only I knew the, that... It would come back and, and, you know, we would make up that pace as soon as my daughter started daycare. Oh, man. Because to be honest, if I, I think I'm running the numbers correctly here. I think I've been six, seven separate, distinctly separate times since November. And I'm still setting PBs on the Peloton. I set one today. I don't know how powerful I'm going to become, you know, in the summertime when hopefully we get sick. I don't know, maybe two-thirds as much. <laughs> it's probably not going to be zero, but... I, I'm a little scared. I think it's like I'm going to be... I'm Pavel Bure training with, like, a parachute on. I take it off, I'm going to be the, the fastest skater in the NHL. They might conscript me to be an instructor. I don't know if I could take it, man. It's a lot of shouting out people for their uh, milestones. Come on, Pello for Pino. There's no way you had 6,000 rides... You've only had your bike for 18 months. What do you mean you've had 6,000 rides? One minute warm up with Ali Love times a times 5,000. I see you. I see you. You 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 karma farmer. NL, do you still lift weights? No, I. Uh, I've talked about it before. I was pretty. I was doing five three one. I was doing. Uh, I was squatting. I was deadlifting. I was overhead pressing. There's one more workout. I forgot. What, oh, the bench press, of course. How could you forget about the bench press? Then, when COVID started to take off, but before everybody... Before basketball players got it, so everybody was like, it can't actually affect me. I was like, maybe this is a good time to like take a week off from the gym. Because this whole disease stuff is getting a little spooky. And then I just never went back. But I'm doing the, the Peloton for cardio now. And I've decided it was folly to try to be a big strong man. I don't want to be a big strong man anymore. Now I want to be a uh, dick skin. But I don't ever want to change my diet. I just want to bike longer. A few years ago you were saying you hate doing longer and longer cardio. Yeah, things change. A few years ago you were probably pooping your pants, sucking on your mommy's titties. People change. I'm 24 years old. I stand by it. Dick skin is, I mean, in the way that I'm using it, is when your body fat percentage is so low that you can, like, see the outline of your kidney when you take your shirt off. I'm definitely not actually going to get there. I, I've been eating way too many corn nuts for sure. I've been crushing the Peloton rides after the corn nut days, though. I gotta tell you, we set a new PB this weekend yet again. This is not good. But this is good. Be wary of ambush. Personally, if you want to get an applaud for that message, all I would suggest is maybe moving it a little further back on the bridge. Oh, this is no sweat. Dude, I love being over-leveled. This makes up for all that time we spend under-leveled. Let's go. This is like when you're trying to beat your PB on a Peloton ride, and then the instructor goes, okay, we're going to spend the next three and a half minutes out of the saddle. You're like, dude, I'm going for high score status right now. What's your high score in a 30 minute? 360. I got it in a... a 30 minute Samyo climb ride. Unfortunately, the music for all of those rides is just Calvin Harris over and over. I'm not necessarily anti-Calvin Harris, I suppose. I'm just sort of anti-bad music. <laughs> oh, no. Today, I had, I had to work for a, a 343. That's the way the game goes sometimes. Sometimes you're like, uh, 
You know, your legs are just feeling better. Could have been what you had for dinner last night. How much water did you have? Begging you share your FTP score. I've not done the the um, the FTP test because everybody that does the test says that the test was like horrible, like not bad quality, but just like a lot of effort. It just ramps up slowly for 30 minutes. Yeah, that sounds like... I'm, I, it's a good thing to do, I'm sure, so that you can do Power Zone and understand what you're doing with Power Zone. But, like, it sounds, it sounds annoying. Hello. Do I have the box cutter? I do not have the box cutter. The box cutter, I believe I placed it back in the drawer because that's where it was originally on the couch and then the baby started wielding it. And then I moved it somewhere. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, 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 why was it on the couch in the first place? I'm on baby duty yesterday. Baby picks something up, starts running around. I'm like, what's this? Oh, just a knife. No big deal. Anyway, I should do my FTP test at some point, but again... The reason I've been stalling on it is because it seems like it's a hard workout. <laughs> 30 minute red Taylor's version ride is, is still hard enough for me. How's the Peloton? It's pretty good today. Felt a little sluggish at the start of it. Ended up pumping out a, a 333 Guilty Spark. Not that bad, but it's not a, not a banner day, but you know, that's why they call it training. How did you get your average so high? I, I mean, it's just doing the workouts, honestly. Like, I don't have any secret. I I don't, also don't think it's that high, for one. Like, let's start there. But if your best is 2.30 in 30 minutes, it just comes in time. Like, uh, my, my first month probably was just like, oh, man, I hope one day, like, I'll be strong enough to get to a 300 in 30 minutes. And then you just, like, you know... You just get there with, with practice, you know? No, not 300 kilometers in 30 minutes. Just think about what that would... That would be 600 kilometers an hour. It's like f as fast as a Boeing 787 airline at cruising altitude. That's why they were so amazed. Why? I mean, are you? if you're doing 230 in 30 minutes, I mean, that's still pretty quick. 400 kilometers an hour? I will say... Like, I, this is BM, but in the ride I did yesterday, it was a little bit of a milestone for me. Of course, everybody that I was riding against had no idea that uh, I had this chip on my shoulder, but I ended up having more output than second and third place on the ride put together. Not all time, just on that, the people who were there on that particular day, in that particular session, and I was like... Don't stop till you're numb. Grateful Mama, 40s Florida, and then some dude in his 70s in uh, West Virginia. Say my name. This is still, oops, all David Guetta. I, I compromised my music tastes on the Peloton in order to get my preferred instructor. I can't even remember what I did. I think it was an 80s rock ride, which is not so bad, but it's like a lot of, like, Bon Jovi played, like, We Built This City by Jefferson Starship. Like, there's some, like, ass songs, for sure. Sam Yo, how'd you, how'd you know? That's my guy right there. If there has not been a, a new Sam Yo ride posted, then I go to Lane Break. And if there has not been a lane break ride posted that isn't David Guetta, then I go back to uh, Sam Yo and do a ride that he did in like 2020. Because when I sort by like not taking 30 minutes, I'm all the way back in like almost pre-pandemic era. I'm, I'm just whipping through them. We built this city as ass. It's more, it, like it's, it's bad. But it's substantially worse when you remember that it's also the members of Jefferson Airplane who, you know, were at least a noteworthy band in the 60s. 
What's the point of having instructors on your workout? Is it a weird parasocial thing? No, not at all. Um, it's honestly to push you harder because if you just get on the exercise bike, as soon as your legs start to hurt, you're going to be like, ooh, ouchie, ouchie. I need to go a little easier. Oof, ouchie, ouchie. So instead, you've got someone who's like a personal trainer who's like, here's what you should be doing right now. Go a little harder. Go a little harder. Go a little harder. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm not trying to flex, okay? It might be a little different if you're doing like some kind of, you're doing like Zwift training or something like that. But your 30-minute rides when you watch American Dad and my 30-minute high-intensity interval training and Hills rides with Sam Yo, we're not the same, okay? I gotta change clothes midway through. Think of it this way. How does your class act when the teacher's in the room versus how does your class act when the teacher's out of the room? That's a very good point. Why do we even need teachers? What, isn't, so the teacher, the teacher's basically just like a cassette tape? I'll just learn on free code camp. I've been doing free code camp for nine years and it's working out perfectly for me. I'm glowing today because uh, on the weekend, I received a high five from my Peloton instructor, which I don't know if there's a little movie magic going on there, but while I was taking a Peloton ride, on demand, not a live one, on demand, I got a high five from the instructor. And I was like, yo, Pog. Then I high fived him back. And now we're best friends. Dude, I gotta tell you, so you know I Peloton post every day. Um, I've been complaining about how Peloton has not added any more 30 minute lane break rides for me to gamify my fitness experience. Well, guess what? They dropped a 30 minute lane break ride this weekend. And it's not even David Guetta. It's 30 minutes uh, high intensity interval and hills dance music. And I said, you know what? It's not my genre of choice, but I'm starved for new content. I'll give it a try. Lo and behold, I get 22 minutes into the ride. Guess what they play? David Guetta's When Love Takes Over featuring Kelly Rowland. Shit never ends, man. I don't know if they got like a, they, they bought a bunch of David Guetta songs at a yard sale and they're just trying to like use them. I, it's like my favorite David Guetta song, but I'm just, I'm kind of sick of like anytime I want to do a long lane break ride, I got to listen to David Guetta. Yet they've only got one Alanis song and it's in a 15 minute rock riot where I also have to listen to the Black Keys. What are your thoughts on yoga? Honestly, I, uh, I have, you know, I've been using the Peloton. When I have the time, which it depends on how the morning's going, you know, with the baby is kind of like, it's inconsistent. I've been doing like post-ride stretches. I feel like post-ride stretches are like the, it's a gateway dr uh, drug to getting into yoga. I found myself like at night when I have a little spare time being like, you know what? I could do like a 15 minute yoga thing right now or something like that. But there's like, so some of the stretches incorporate like yoga poses. There's a couple of poses like I can't do. <laughs> like at all. <laughs> like my, my calves are so tight. It's related to like my like idiopathic toe walking. I can't really, I can't get my heels to the floor in a downward dog position. It feels like literally it's like, like the rock has grabbed my calf muscle and is going like, like stretching it as, as hard as he can stretch it. Can you touch your toes? I can, I can touch my toes now. Took a little bit of work. Hamstrings uh, used to be really tight. They are, they're doing, they're doing a lot better now. Can I touch your toes? Hey, now. No. I don't even let my wife touch my toes. Not that she would want to. <laughs> How tall are you? I'm six, seven. See, well, I'm six, seven in shoes. I'm six, six, like, not in shoes, which is probably what you're asking. Yeah, I'm six, I'm six, six, uh, Six six like two forty seven percent body fat, and I had to shave my head because I'm training for the Olympic swim team. But 
actually like I have a really full head of hair. But I need to maintain aerodynamic by dynamicism. How was your Peloton ride today? Thank you for asking. I did a 30 minute Sam Yo climb ride and set a new personal best. Not by much. My previous 30 minute personal best was an output of um, 360 kilojoules on another Sam Yo climb ride. On this uh, on this ride, I got to 363. So it was, you know, like a a very small improvement, but you know, an improvement nonetheless. You can't PB uh, every single ride you do. Just to just to extend the capacity a little bit feels good. Peloton update today. Um, thirty minute, two thousands ride. I think my output was uh, three forty five. Pretty good. I I didn't feel like a PB today. I was just I was happy to just crank out some pretty good output. Which American president could you beat in a body swapped fight? Well, I'm physically weaker, and any president that would beat me in a fight, I feel like I could beat them in a body swapped fight. Like Obama 2008's body, my brain probably beats Obama 2008 brain, my body. Obama would dummy you. <laughs> Well, no, but I have his body, and he has my body. And his body is not even close. You forget the miles of Peloton you're doing every day? Well, I mean, if we were doing presidents I could beat in a Peloton race, I'll just, or like in a Peloton output competition, like I'm crushing Biden, that's not even close. I'm crushing Trump, that's not even close. I would think that retired Obama could probably beat me on the Peloton as of right now. I also think retired George Bush, isn't he like a half marathon runner? I think he would have a reasonable chance, quite frankly. Bill Clinton, either one of the rare presidents where either now or in his presidency, I would smoke him on the Peloton. In his presidency, he was a little heavy set and preoccupied. And after his presidency, he's old. Ronald Reagan, I would smoke on the Peloton. But then I do, I do have to say, uh, and Bush Sr., I would smoke on the Peloton. But I also have to say, once you get back a little further, like once you go back to like presidents that were presidents in the 60s and the 70s, I feel like they thought that exercising made you like a communist. So I feel like I just start, I go on like an undefeated run for a little bit there. Eisenhower is kind of like, he's always my wild card. Because if you look at a photo of Eisenhower, like, he was like old man ripped. And young men always overestimate the value that youth has. Like, yeah, two athletes in, you know, a sport, the one that's at their prime at like age 26 is going to be, in apples to apples comparison, better than the same guy at 40. But like, if you're just sitting on your couch, you know, eating like wheat thins, and you're going up against somebody that's running half marathons, I knew it. The the 55 year old running half marathons is gonna dust your ass. He's gonna smoke you, cause he put in the work. So I don't know, I think I, think I definitely, I crush most of the presidents in the 20th century on the Peloton. Eisenhower, I'll give him a shot. There's also some, I just like, just look at a photo of Woodrow Wilson. He looks like a guy that can cycle. I don't know if bikes were invented back, you know, in the early uh, 1910s. Maybe he was on the one with the one big wheel, one small wheel or whatever. He just looks like the kind of guy that could, that could bike. Pre or post polio? Woodrow Wilson had polio too? No, you're thinking of FDR. No, I mean, I was thinking of Woodrow Wilson. Chad might be thinking about FDR. I'm usually thinking about FDR because I mean, I'm just going to say it, FDR. How many presidents have there been? Originally, I was going to make a joke and say that he was in the top 48 presidents. 46? Okay, 46. But, like, if we're, if we're being sincere, you got to throw FDR in the top five. I know it's, it's so cool on the internet. You just come up with a, a loophole. Uh, none of the presidents are based, actually. Okay, motherfucker, that's not what I asked. I said, which, one are the, which ones are the most based? 
You're too much of a coward to answer the question? That tells me something about... You're not going to make it in the impending climate crisis unless you can make tough decisions like this, okay? Air or water? Which one are you taking in today? Uh, I'd like both. Okay, guess what? You get neither. What about the invasion of Haiti? I went to a Canadian school, so I've never heard of it. Ergo, for the purposes of this discussion, it's not germane. Don't hit me. I took so long to wake up there. Also, now do every other president. There's like one president in history without an invasion, and I don't even want to touch that one. You, you guys are going to take that the wrong way. <laughs> Lincoln's, there's no doubt Lincoln's up there, okay? I understand. It's a very, like, you know, it's a very modern take. Actually, Abe Lincoln wasn't, like, a moral hero. He just was, like, you know, he did what he felt was best for himself in the moment. Yeah, but, like, he did administrate the winning of the Civil War. That was a good... That, things would have been a lot different if that one went opposite way. Put a lot of respect on Ulysses S. Grant for that one. Put a lot of respect on... Um, Who's the other uh, the general I always forget? William Tecumseh Sherman. Put a lot of respect. I'm dead. Not a good sip opportunity. Put a lot of respect on both of them for that. It was also one-handed. I know, it's heavy, right? You can, I, it took two grown men to lift that Peloton. And I was not one of them. Uh, uh. What are you doing? She's doing her impression of daddy on the bike. Daddy on the bike. Okay, so we are in Romania, Croatia, Albania, Bosnia, Serbia, Switzerland, Latvia. Damn, what's her at? By the way, I've got a great uh, tweet brewing. So on the Peloton, workout summary they just released um a new useless feature that shows you what muscle groups you've worked out the most just keep clicking <laughs> okay i'll take it um because i only bike my workout composition it shows like the body and it's got heat maps where you do the most work and it's just an ass that's highlighted <laughs> and like the tops of my legs, my hamstring, like my quads, my hamstrings, and my calves. And then the the report that it spits out says like glutes, 19%, quads, 18%, hamstrings, 18%, calves, 13%, obliques, 5%, other, uh, like 3%. And I wanted to tweet, but I need people to know it's a joke and not like actually me being full of myself or saying like, I got a great ass and your head is all the way up it. But I want to tweet, and the tweet would just be a photo of that, and then it, the caption would be, God making me in the character creator. Is that, that's plus two? Okay, let's go. I'm not gonna do it though, because I think some people would take it the wrong way. Like, I don't think they that they would be like, I'm offended. I think they would be like, why are you like trying, oh, you work out for like five months, and now you think you're like hot stuff? You're not that hot, you're bald. And I'd be like, no, I'm just saying like, I gotta, like a weak upper body and a fucking round thing in your face. Like Sir Mix-a-Lot desired. I will say, for me personally as well, I think I've figured out, and it's taken me a long time to get here, but I, I think I have actually genuinely figured out my best weight loss tip. And it's going to seem very counterintuitive. Well, okay, one tip is stationary bike on the peloton for 30 minutes a day every day but that's hard to uh that's hard to uh enact that's not gonna happen overnight the other one and i've you know i'm 33 years old i've, I've run the gamut on trying things my number one weight loss tip eat a fucking huge dinner whenever i how i get myself in trouble is i Sometimes I'm like, for dinner, I'm not even going to have a starch. I'll just have some salmon. I'll have some kale. And then I just won't snack at night. And then like two hours after I eat dinner, I'm fucking snacking. I think you should never bet on yourself having self-control ad infinitum. I don't think it's possible. 
If, if people, they, they've not invented like the wetware to get that into your brain yet. You're going to crack at some point. So that what I think you should do instead is just eat a dinner that fucking stuffs you. And then you won't, you'll be less likely to snack at night. Then you get like a 11 hour fast between dinner and when you wake up in the morning. And all of a sudden you'll look at your calorie budget and be like, wow, I didn't have 400 calories of like peanut butter out the damn jar last night. And look at that. There's progress. I'm, get, I'm scared by the amount of plus twos I'm getting here. Because I thought it was mostly a joke, although I do believe it. <laughs> or at least, I, I shouldn't say I believe it, but it has been working for me. Thoughts on uh, weight gain tips? Uh, eat peanut butter out the damn jar. That one's like a... That one will work for you, I promise. Because that's just, that's what it does. Eat a, eat a small dinner, tell yourself you're not going to snack, and then have a one kilogram jar of peanut butter in your fridge. That's a great weight gain tip. I'm looking at Pelotons. You got the bike plus or the regular bike? So let me tell you this. I have the bike. I think it's great. Everybody that I've seen on the Peloton subreddit where I spend all of my time asking questions like, Who's y'all's favorite instructor? Anybody got any great rides for when they just need to cry it out in the saddle? You know, just the socializing. That's why it's called social media, man. Everybody says when they have the bike, they're like, I wish I got the bike plus. I don't know why, but that's... What, so I'm, I've, I have the bike. I'm happy with it. Almost everybody says they wish they got the bike plus. But it is, um, I don't know, like $700 more expensive or something. I don't think there's shills. People go off on the Peloton subreddit, man. They like... People are like upset. They're like, hey, I got the bike for delivery last week and the pedals fell off? What should I do? That's true. It has auto-follow resistance and also a swiveling screen. If you like to do stretches or, or yoga on the floor while also being able to see exactly what they're doing. That's, that's the big thing. I also think it's like sturdier construction, but I'm, I don't know. I mean, like, let me hit you with the classic, like, Peloton caveat emptor, right? I love my Peloton. I use it every day when I'm at home, at least. Um, and it's uh, made it... The, the best thing about it is it's very easy to stay consistent when you have an exercise machine in your house. I also think it's better than steady state stationary biking because with an instructor, you're probably just naturally going to go a little harder than you would ever push yourself normally because it's, it's like inconvenient or, you know, it, it kind of like feels bad sometimes, like your legs will hurt a little bit. Um, but you can definitely get like the same experience at a much cheaper price, either from, you know, a company like Nordic Track, uh, Nordic Track, I should say, or alternatively, you know, if you have a, a bike, you can just put it on like an in-home bike trainer or something like that. You could you could also do that. If you're looking for a one size fits all solution where you're going to pay a little extra for the convenience, I would recommend the Peloton. But I can only speak to my personal experience or your public gym for 10 bucks a month. Yeah, but people like they'll be smug. They'll be like, imagine paying 50 bucks a month for your Peloton subscription you use every day. When you could be paying 30 bucks a month to the gym that I never go to because it's like 20 miles away and some mornings I'm like, oh, I just don't feel like going. What if you hate capitalism? I don't know. Well, I, you know what I would say if you hate capitalism? I would say you got to figure that shit out. That's going to... I'm not saying you're without merit. I'm just saying it's going to make... What, you're just going to get heart disease because you hate capitalism? Like, grow up. I don't know. Do the Patrick Bateman. Do like a thousand sit-ups a, a day on your floor or something like that. Or just on the street, in that case, you know, because you don't want to pay rent. If you want, you can work out for free. You can go to like one of those public parks that they have in South Korea where they have like the elliptical machines <laughs> and just <laughs> stick with it like that. You can just go outside, do some burpees. Yeah. You can just run. No one's, it's not illegal to run around. Touch some grass, go for a jog. Yeah. I'm just saying, here's my thing, okay? Peloton is over, overpriced. But I also can't deny that it it is the its convenience is the reason I'm in the fitness routine that I'm in right now. So, is Peloton worth the asking price plus you know 50 bucks a month for what you get? No, but for what it's given me, yes. Like would you pay $50 a month to just lose 5 pounds? 
Because that's basically what you got here if you, like, also do the work. I would pay 50 bucks a month to lose five pounds for sure. Well, maybe not right now, but, like, at the start of the journey, for sure. I would die. You would die if you lost five pounds. A month? Well, not, like, ad infinitum. Everybody would die. Didn't you used to bike outside? Yeah, but, like, honestly, I... You, like, just because you don't like Peloton, that's fine. You got to acknowledge stationary biking in general has some advantages. Like, it rains where I live like five days a week minimum. Oftentimes, it'll go like two weeks straight while raining. Also, like, I don't want to get hit by a car and die. And also, I don't want to... Um, like, I hate to say it because, like, you know, hell is always other people. I don't want to go into... Because Vancouver's got great bike lanes. I don't want to be in the bike lanes and have to deal with slow cyclists when I'm trying to work out. They're just trying to, like, get, you know, to the seawall and they're, like, half drunk from, like, tap and barrel and stuff like that. Like, I like this guy. He's so positive. But I also don't want to have to deal with, like, the Lance Armstrong motherfuckers that are, like, all clad in Lycra. I'm out there, like, I'm in zone two. They're out there like, on your left, they're like clipping you with their handlebars and shit. I just, I, I like being, you know, comfortable inside of my house. I, I can leave a puddle of sweat without like feeling bad about it. No, I don't like her up for the Peloton, but I do shave my legs. Help really helps with the wind resistance. I see it kind of like super auto pets, right? I mean, you got to make the decisions in your life. Don't get me wrong. Some people only play Super Auto Pets to, like, die with the most efficient moves. Like, I would never spend, uh, you know, w w four gold on a Flamingo to then just pill it to give an Ox plus two in Melon Armor and give the unit behind it a 1-1. One -one. And some people are like, damn, dude, if I got to spend seven gold in rolls and then uh, three gold uh, to purchase a monkey, I'll just do it and win. And I think that's kind of where I'm at right now. Life is like Super Auto Pets. I'm I'm rolling a lot in the shop by uh, by using my Peloton, but also at the same time I'm watching that trophy count climb. I mean, today in my uh, in my session I was rank five out of 138. I'm just I'm not trying to brag or whatever. I mean, there were a lot of like M60s that I passed on the leaderboard, but at the same time it was like, it was pretty good. It was pretty it was a pretty good ride. Okay, hold on. I got to focus on driving. You know, I never go left here. Let's go left here. They should add a chat feature. No, they already have, like, uh, a high five feature, which is also pop, pop. Let's go. Pop, pop. That you're damn right. Yes, sir. Pop, pop. Um, which is very annoying. But I do high five people. Not often for toxicity. Unless they got, like, a fucked up hashtag or something like that then when i blow by him i'm like check this shit out motherfucker high five pop pop yerp dude i gotta tell you these these miss vicky's chips oh man just one Just one. One of Canada's great uh, additions to world cuisine. Yeah, Miss Vicky's chips are, they're Canadian Norwegian. Weird, right? Maybe just a quick third one. Just one more to like, just remember what they taste like. Hmm. Just to tide me over, okay? Now I'm ready. Now I'm now I'm good. Now I'm good. I don't need any more. Three is the perfect number. Plus, I've been good. I had a 356 kilojoule Peloton ride this morning. 30 minute Sam Yo Motown ride. Represent. Act like you've been there before. I forgot to break a pot. How's Peloton going? It's going well. I will say, like, <laughs> I did do a 30 minute Def Leopard ride this morning. And I think I don't ever need to hear another Def Leppard song as long as I live. I, that was like seven Def Leppard songs. And I'm like, Animal is not so bad. That's one that's like, and I want, and I need, and I love, 
and it, that one's okay. And then like, uh, you know, hysteria is okay. But I don't need to hear all the other. I don't need to hear pour some sugar on me ever again. I don't need to hear photograph. I kind of, two steps behind, a little cheesy, but it's, it's kind of, I got a certain soft spot for it regardless. I just, it was just too much Def Leppard. Like, I feel like I, I could do a 30 minute queen ride. Cause they like occupy a couple of different spaces, right? Like they got their own, I think I bombed, let's go. They, they straddle many different genres. You got your killer queens, you got your my best friend, you got, you know, uh, somebody to love, you got a we will rock you, we are the champions, you got a bohemian rhapsody, et cetera, et cetera. But like 30 minutes of Def Leppard straight is like, man, it's just a little much for me. I powered through, improved my VO2 max. I will say my, my numbers have suffered a little bit as my baby is in the midst of uh, week two or three of her sleep regression here. So like last night, I slept, I would say like 11 till six, which is maybe 11.30 to six, which is not that bad, but not what I would ideally like to be getting. I'd like to be going to bed, you know, maybe around 10 and getting up around 6.30. Cause you know, there's 30 minutes of me just choosing the perfect podcast to listen to for two minutes until I fall asleep. But my wife put the baby to bed and then fell asleep on the floor in the nursery. So like, I was just saying like, to her, I was like, rip your spine. And then she's like, no, I feel good. But I think my, my not that anyone cares, my Peloton output has suffered as a result of diminished sleep. I haven't set a PB in like three weeks. But to be fair, I've also been doing more rides that are in the saddle focus, which is always worse for your output. So anyway, I know it, because you asked hyper-specific questions, I'll give you hyper-specific answers. I know a lot of people care. That one's just to ensure that um, no new uh, viewers will ever watch this because we got an immediate uh, oral cue from this uh, water bottle. It's pretty sick though. It's a Peloton water bottle. I don't want to brag. It's signed by all the instructors. I mean, not literally. It's just ink. I guess it's always just ink. But anyway, great cycle, this brother, courtesy of the Peloton. Glad to hear it. I had a pretty good ride. I got to be honest with you. Again, the people will tell you it's kind of like... Um, it's analytics poison to be out here talking about your Peloton ride every single day, but I had a good one. I had a good one today. Um, my favorite instructor doesn't release classes as fast as I would like, okay? So I started taking classes from another instructor, and I gotta tell you, he's a little harder. He's a little, he's got me sweating even more. Stop asking me to do a Peloton instructor tier list. It's, it's, horrible content that like eight people would watch and they're human beings you're asking me to rank people man i don't want to do that not to mention i'm not qualified for that i only take classes from two instructors i used to only take classes from one instructor but then they're not making enough classes i gotta feel like it's probably like you know peloton's like giving them time off i don't respect that <laughs> As someone in the, the Feed the Beast business. There's been a week without a new class? Come on, man. I know there's thousands of old classes. They just don't hit the same. Be an unwashed husband. Not true, by the way. I was two minutes late today because I managed to fit in a shower after my personal best Peloton ride. Mm, swap me. Get killed. Get owned. Get killed. Congrats on the PR. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any, out, anybody out there riding in the Ben Aldis army? Anybody riding hashtag pillow for wine? OMG, not me ever. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I just found out what bloating is, and it happens to me a lot with a lot of foods. You have, uh, like a, a gluten intolerance, maybe? I don't know. My stomach protrudes like I'm pregnant, but it doesn't hurt. It just makes me look pregnant, and I think it's kind of funny, so I'm okay with it. Mm. That happens to me, but uh, like when I sit down. <laughs> if I stand up and I put my arms like over top of my head, I'm like, man, I'm pretty. You're selling fit. yourself short. You're an <laughs> athlete, all right. I, I've, I've, yeah, you're still on your your Peloton, right? Oh, I, I set a new PB today. There we go. Believe What's it or the PB? not, PB a Peloton. Um, my my Peloton PB today. I think I had a 377 kilojoule ride in 30 minutes. Is that like is that like similar to Pascal's? Um, I wouldn't. I'm not that good at physics. I would Fair my enough. my 
power to weight ratio places me at the bottom category of amateur cyclist racer. But if like two months well, ago, like I put it into the calculator and it was like, keep training. I put it into the calculator like two weeks ago and it was like, you could enter a race and come in last now. And I was like, that, that was enough for me. That's good. That's like, that's good. I mean, you can enter the race. They're, they're not going to like laugh. I'm not going to take so long that I'm going to slow down the race behind me anymore. I'm there so long that the union has to get paid for four hours extra because they have to stay and hold the banner so I can race through it. That's kind of base, though. Yeah, you know, I'm just actually a, a socialist trying Looking to help out. Looking out for out. the workers. Hey, the, we, that's, what I like. that's why they always have those tables with like 10 people holding water cups that you just pick up and then throw on the ground. Yeah, yeah. That's union work right there. And then guess what? You throw it on the ground, more union work. Absolutely true, I think. I litter because I'm helping unions. <laughs> Hey, NL, tell us about today's Peloton ride. Thank you, Paid Chatter. It was a good ride. I think total output ended up being around 360, which I would say is in, you know, like that's the upper 20% of my rides right now. Gain more red aether. Is that, what does that do for us? I have no idea. But I will say, I want to talk to these Peloton instructors. You know, I was doing a, a high intensity interval training ride. And every time you do an interval, the guy was like, I want this to be the best interval you've ever given me. What happened? There's a portal thing? Ah, oh, whatever. It's called practice, sweetheart. This is why I'm getting 360s and you're out here, you know, you getting the three day streak on the Peloton and we're just begging for high fives. But like every time, there's like 20 intervals over the course of the ride, right? And every interval, he says, I want this to be the best interval you've given me today. And I'm like, I can't maintain that kind of upward momentum, man. It's just unreasonable. Like, I get you're trying to be motivating, but I'm, I'm giving this shit all I got on every interval. It just seems unreasonable to expect every single one to be the best. Why is he British? I'm going to guess, like, because he was born in England. Stop asking me if I want to box another creator, dude. I'm I don't, I'm just a guy. I just like I'm I'm not I'm not involved in the in the meadow or as I call it because I'm so old. The Facebook. I'm just like a dude. Just let me just let me be. Dan thinks he could beat you with six months of prep time. So first off, that's two things. One is he thinks he would lose to me now. So that's a compliment in and of itself. Um, secondarily, ask Dan how his Peloton streak looks. Uh, especially if you take out five minute sleep meditations. And then tell me who's been more dedicated over the previous half year. I just got my 26 week streak today. And that's not even like one 10 minute um, feel good ride with Ali Love once a week. That's six, seven rides a week. Usually with a little stretching, lately a little yoga thrown in over top. He said the Peloton doesn't hit back. That's a pretty good response. Can't disagree with that. Dude, this is tennis. How's Peloton yoga? I'm the wrong guy to um, to talk about yoga because I don't know what I'm doing. I just take like a 10 minute beginner class. The first class I did, he said, this is gonna be easy. And then my lower back was like shaking. He's like, get in the reverse tabletop pose and then do, I don't know, 45,000 uh, bicycle crunches. And I was like, okay, I'm dead. And then the next one, it was like, this is a 10 minute exploration of the tree pose. And then he's like, stand on one foot. And I'm like, no problem. And then he's like, dig the base of your foot into your groin and extend both hands above your head and close your eyes and uh, do the alphabet backwards from Z to A. Uh, and then forwards, skipping two letters at a time. And I was like, okay, so like long story short, I fell down a few times, but I still, it felt good for me. Um, then today I did some, some hip stretching in the so-called pigeon pose. And uh, I felt like that was the first one where I was like, okay, I'm actually getting some value out of this. Like, I'm not just embarrassed. I'm actually like, I'm, I, this is good for my body. Yeah, a lot of people talk about yoga with, with Adrian. Adri Adrienne? Adrienne! I'm not familiar with it, but uh, we're going, we're going past you. We're going past you, you gave us the moment. Somebody rotated, surely. Surely, clueless. Somebody rotated there. Good, good play, good play. I don't know about all that. I do the I do the ten minute beginner yoga on the peloton. If I had to rank the poses I've done, 
Child's pose, that's a good one. It, it fixes my, my screwed up uh, lat muscle. Pigeon pose seems good to uh, open up the hips a little bit. I feel the stretch, and in my yoga amateurishness, that makes me feel like obviously it's doing something for me. Tree pose, I need to work on my balance a little bit. I don't know the others. Downward dog, sure. I mean, I like it because it's an easy one to remember. That's all I got. So I'm something of a yoga master, I would say. I already dressed like one in PUBG, and now I embody the, the characteristics of one. What a, what a freaking goal, dude! It's Zane again! What about the throw it back challenge? Yeah, I haven't done that one. I'm hoping that maybe I could do a 10 minute like uh, Jess King throw it back challenge this week if I can find the time. We'll see if the, the baby's a little, you know, she's a little congested right now. We'll see if the time is available. Do you like lane break? Tony, you're gonna get me like, this is too inside baseball Peloton posting, okay? My problem, so lane break, I do like. There is a problem. Why do they release one 20 minute lane break class? Let's go team. Why do they release one 20 minute lane break class every two weeks? There should be 10 lane break classes coming out daily. They don't even have to get instructors to make them. They just have to program like a, an audio surf note chart. It's so, it, I, and I, I, I know that people are like, you know, oh, do you do it then? If I had their tools, I could actually do it. Cause I've played Guitar Hero. Like the fact that they have like two new rides a month, which means that, and they're always like, five minute Missy Elliott ride. I don't want a five minute Missy Elliott ride. I want like a 30 minute, you know, Rush Classics or something. 30 minute Fleetwood Mac ride. I got no problem with Missy Elliott. I just don't want to go through 45 seconds of loading screens in order to do a five minute ride that's like barely going to get my heart rate up. 30 minute Kid Rock ride? Nope. I'll ride with almost any, anything. I'll do a 30 minute EDM ride or something like that. That doesn't bother me. Sometimes some of the instructors I like, I see that they got a 30 minute country ride lined up and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. No, uh, daddy's gonna get some work done on Wee Bowling, okay? I'll see you this afternoon, honey. Night, night. Night, night. It is work chat, stop scabbing. Yo, I finally get to use the terminology against other people. Yeah, oh, okay. So what I do is not work, but when you have to uh, listen to your wife tell you about her day, it's emotional labor. I've seen you post in the Discord. I've seen your tweets. I got a lot of I'm gonna be late tweets lined up for this week. Like I already used, um, Trade offer, you receive news that my baby is sick. I receive your blessing to be 15 minutes late. I think tomorrow is gonna, the tweet is gonna say something like, are you in a good enough place to receive information that may be distressing to you? Dot, dot, dot. And then a follow-up tweet that says, I'm gonna be 10 to 15 minutes late. I think that's the next, that's the one I got lined up for the next one. Why not just change the start time? You don't understand. If I change the start time, I would, there would be one week of adjustment where I would be like, I'm never gonna be late again. And then starting the week after that, I would equilibrate to the new start time, completely adjust my schedule until it was what it already is. And I would be 10 minutes late again. Why not make the schedule ooh, 10 minutes earlier? Cause I got more like going on in my life than being exactly right on time for stream. Like my, my stream fits into my life, not the other way around right now. Imagine if I said that to my own boss. Okay. Well, you know. Why don't you get a freaking sick ass stream, run that for a decade, and then you can say it to your own boss in the mirror. And we'll see how it works out. Damn. We're not so different. We're, we're the same dude. We just, you know. Why are you so in love with your boss? I would never say that to my boss. I respect him too much. Bro, I'm my own boss. I hate that asshole. He causes me all sorts of problems. He's responsible for, for everything right and wrong in my life. You're not wrong. I'm basically you plus Peloton. That's it, man. You know how there's always that one that's like, uh, that, that meme? That's like, sometimes there really is just one missing piece. And then usually they're inserting a puzzle piece that is like staying up until 3 a.m. Watching Netflix. The piece is actually a $2,000 exercise bike 
I would love to see a Peloton stream. Is is boring. Is you're not missing anything. I promise you, you're missing nothing. It's just me for half an hour, staring straight ahead and like sometimes uh, breathing louder than others and getting gradually sweatier. I don't want anybody to see that. If you want to watch that, I don't want you to see it. This is this is Shambara. Sounds like the perfect sleeping stream. You guys are so weird. Just go to sleep. You don't need to wait for somebody like across the world to start streaming the exact perfect thing so you can go to sleep. Just like get audible. <laughs> Bro, literally just close your eyes. It's free. Hey, Anel, who are your top three Peloton instructors? I'm actually becoming like a toxic chatter on the Peloton. You can't actually chat, so that's like, it's better that way. But like, I'm actually becoming like the kind of chatter who's like begging for different games and stuff like that. I'm becoming very entitled. Cause like I used to only ride with Sam Yo, okay? Then I exhausted like the entire Sam Yo catalog. And now I'm like, why doesn't this dude make more classes? Like. I'll wait like a whole week for a Sam Yo class and then it'll be like 10 minute climb ride. And I'm like, bro, I know like your work week's not just like 10 minutes long, but like, like why can't you make more classes? You're just riding the bike. So then I, I got, uh, I, I, I had to diversify just because I had uh, more demand than there was supply for the Sam Yo, right? So then I started riding with Ben Aldis, Dennis Morden. That worked for about two weeks. But then there was like one week last week where nobody made any classes. And I was like, is anybody working at Peloton right now? I know this is toxic, by the way. And I, now I know how the Isaac viewers must feel, man. Because they're like, really? You've made 12 Super Auto Pets videos uh, in the last two weeks, but you haven't made any Isaac? Like, not even a single one? I'm like, oh, so you make uh, eight... 45 minute low impact rides, but you can't even make a single like 30 minute hit and hills. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. That one felt good. We got in a little bit of trouble there. But I still stand. I mean, I hate the Peloton post so much. Just kidding. I love it. But like, dude, is there's no excuse for there to not be like two new lane break rides every day. There's not even an instructor. Wow, that was a great shot. 18th. I give you some credit on that one. Outside of the top 10 gets paid out. The highest highs and lowest lows. You can reuse the episode. Like, that's the, and it's the same thing with Isaac, right? Like, every Isaac episode is fundamentally, like, almost exactly the same. Every Sam Yo ride is like, okay, get started. 80 to 100, we're going to pedal, pedal out on a flat road. You know, add one to two resistance points every 30 seconds. Then you do a little hill. Then you do a little interval. Then you get a little break. Then he tells a story that'll like make you cry. And then you do a little hill. Then you do a little interval. And then he's like, you made it, right? But I'm like, I don't... Even though every episode is the same, I'm like, I want new ones. Now you know how we feel. The, but the, the catch is, I also know how I feel. So I have more sympathy for the instructors. And I'm like, you know what? You want to make 30-minute country rides, Dennis? That's fine. Maybe I'll, I'll come... I'll go scout out some other instructors for a bit, but you know I'll be, I'll be back. You know I'll be back to take your 30-minute uh, Reba McIntyre ride when I, when I miss my boy Dennis. Catch me on that 30-minute hip-hop ride. I did take a, an Emma Lovewell ride yesterday. I took her 30-minute Fleetwood Mac ride. Do you ever do the scenic rides? No, man, they're like... They're so boring. It's like... It, it, every time I see the scenic rides, it reminds me of like being at my dentist's office. Where like, he's just got a TV on the ceiling that plays uh, videos of American national parks. I've seen Joshua. I've never been to Joshua Tree. I know every nook and cranny inside and out. But I will say, I, I took a ride today, and I'm not going to name the instructor. But while we were riding, not together because it was on demand, he was like, hey, here's an insane resistance. Hey, here's an insane speed. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And then he stopped pedaling and he said, sorry, I'm a little tired. You keep pedaling. I thought the whole thing was that we're all in this together. I mean, you do this for a living. You, you called out something 
I get that he's talking at the same time. Don't get, it's like he's got it harder, but also he should be better conditioned than me. Actually based, though. I mean, honestly, I take it easy at work some days. Some days I play like Super Auto Pets, a new game I refuse to interface with on its own terms, even though it comes highly recommended. And then, uh, you know, just no lifing Zoms Royale to facilitate the casino. So I relate to it. Which Peloton instructor would you want in Smash? Dude, that's a great question. What about the one that killed Mr. Big? Because, like, she's probably got the highest kill count, which means she has the highest power level. No, it's not all Americans. So there's, there's American instructors, there's uh, British instructors, and then there's German instructors. And I honestly, like, Peloton must have decent software engineers. But it boggles my mind, like, every time I open the... Well, every time I turn on the bike, it's like, for your usual. And then it's a 30-minute, like, Guns N' Roses ride in German. I have never taken a 30-minute German Guns N' Roses ride in my life. And then it's like, for something outside of the box. And then it recommends, like, the same thing you take every day. It's, it's bizarre. Guns N' Roses! Yippee! How was the Peloton ride today? Shit's driving me crazy, man. Been waiting weeks for a new Sam Yo ride that, that fits my very narrow per parameters. 20-minute mental health awareness ride. I'm not knocking the mental health awareness, but first off, I need a 30-minute ride in order to keep me in zone three. And also, I want to listen to the music. I, sometimes you want to ride where you cry it out a little bit, and sometimes you just want to ride where you just want to, like, you know, pedal your bike a little. So I did a 30-minute Emma Lovewell classic rock ride, and I got to tell you, like, the, the playlist was actually fire. I love it when they put some Doobie Brothers on there. But it was a little bit on the easy side, but you know what? We've been fighting off the baby illness, so I think that um, it's okay that it was maybe like a 7 instead of an 8 in terms of difficulty, but that's okay. What's up, NL? You still grinding the Peloton? Thought people would never ask. I, I will say I happen to I happen to get I I, I happen to drop my Wii mode. I happen to drop my Wii mode. Will NL win this one? I happen to get a new personal best today. That's all I want to say is that I happen to get a new personal best today. For the first time since the third week of April. I was in the damn zone, man. And I hate to say this is very judgmental. Vegetarianism makes a lot of sense to me. Depending on what you eat, it can be better for you. It can be better for the environment. It can still taste delicious. It can be cheaper. You know, there's lots of positives. Veganism, I think a lot of that is the same thing, you know? And it, it, with the added, I guess, extra benefit of not supporting the dairy industry, if you find that, like, ethically compromised or whatever. And not, not judging. When you get past that, I'm like, you need a job. <laughs> I think I, I think past that is like you just you 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 just need like another hobby. You just rather than be like, oh, veganism isn't like enough for me. I also am taking it like one step beyond that. I'm like, you need to get like really into like, you know, Taskmaster or something. You just need to add one hobby to the to the suite of hobbies. Cause you just it it's it's like Magic the Gathering, you know? Like when someone gets too far into Magic the Gathering, they make themselves isolated from the other Magic the Gathering players because they make jokes about, like, they, they assume that you have a knowledge of cards that were printed 14 years ago just from the name of them. And then you're like, ah, and then, like, you can't talk to them anymore. I haven't seen a loyalty trigger that good since Jace the Mind Sculptor was banned in standard. I can't let you gotta just one, just add one more hobby. You, getting a hobby is great, but then you need like a second hobby in order to, to take some obsession away from the first hobby. And I'm not saying I'm innocent in that situation, you know? I talk about the Peloton a lot, but that's because you guys keep asking. And I did have a good ride today, thank you for asking. It was a 30 minute Dennis Morton 80s ride. That opened with "Express Yourself" by N.W.A. It's a, it, I, I mean, the the warm up wasn't a warm up. I was I was rocking out. Plus, I have Survivor, so true, and doing the dishes. I do want to say, by the way, this weekend. I don't know if if people are watching this from the the lower mainland. This weekend, 
my wife and my mom went into a cool clothing store. Okay? I stayed outside because like most cool stores, it did not have enough room for a stroller to go in there without knocking a bunch of shit over like Mr. Bean. So I stayed outside, and I will say, I thought I was copping a couple looks from people when they went in. I saw like some really cool people walk by and then like kind of give me like a, they do a sneaky little like, you know what I mean? And you thought you fucking got away with it. You didn't know I had a mole on the damn inside. As soon as my wife ends, my mom came out of the clothing store. My wife told me, hey, while we were in there, we heard somebody say, oh my God, I think I just saw a YouTuber outside. Guess what? You, well, you know what? They must not be watching because they describe me as a YouTuber. But still, just so if you ever see this, it was me. Tell Cersei, I want, I want them to know it was me. They knew it was you because of the toe walking. Well, like, I was standing still, but I'm pretty sure they knew it was me because it was, like, in Vancouver, the city I live in outwardly. And also, like, my face looks like my face. Like, it might surprise... I know a lot of streamers, they look a lot different IRL than they do on stream. They do, like, crazy stuff, like, wear headphones to kind of, like, obfuscate their baldness and stuff like that. Or they're, like, you know, they'll put on, like, a cool filter or something like that to, to make their skin look more even. I'm just, like, a guy. I'm just, like, what you see is what you get. This would be a great time to have like a, a switch that I could just hit and like give me a, like a, a shitty Snapchat hair filter or something like that. But they were staring at your ripped Lululemons. My Lululemons ripped earlier that day, which is why I was so pissed off. Because then I had to um, go change out of my Lululemons and put on my other Lululemons. But now I'm down to one pair of ABCs. But they didn't rip, like I, I do have to say, they didn't rip so badly that it's unsalvageable. I know they DM'd me, but also, I mean, I didn't give you permission. Don't care, didn't ask, plus you're a brand. My wife said she will just mend them using a needle and thread like it's the 1980s. So I am I think I'm going to be back in business soon. Yeah, they do have like a, uh, it's not a lifetime warranty anymore. They've changed the, the wording. It's no longer called a lifetime warranty. It's like, we stand by our products. We will stand by their quality, but notwithstanding any unreasonable wear and tear, which to me means I'm gonna come in there and they're gonna be like, whoa, holy, chugga, 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 chugga. Oh, we're not honoring that. Look at that dump truck. Uh, hey, anyone here play Pokemon Go? There's a Mewtwo in the store. Hey, Power T-Bone, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. They're gonna, um, they're not gonna honor it because they're gonna see, they did, they honestly, they don't expect those pants to work for anybody that's got nearly 200 Peloton rides under their belt. It's the first thing they ask. What's your, what's your Peloton PB? 386. Oh, what the hell? We're not honoring that. Are you crazy? This guy definitely just did a 30 minute Ben Aldis classic rock ride and then morbed off. Time to check Peloton off the bingo list. We gotta understand though, there's like a problem with the bingo. Which is that once people are aware of the bingo, they incentive like their chat activity changes in order to create bingoable things. It's like one hand washes the other, you know what I mean? I can't get inside of the room. You look like Morbius. OMG, he does! I think this is my first day on Twitch. You motherfucker, you. I thought you went real biking with Corey a couple years ago. You thought, right? So because I did it once, I'm supposed to what? Do it every day for the rest of my life forever? This is a problem we got with society, man. Everything's all or nothing with people. You can never just try something out and be like, you know. Here's the thing. For, for me to go real biking with Corey, that dude had to take like a train to come see me with this damn bike on the train. And then from where I lived, we went for a bike ride. That's really inconvenient for him and for me, because if he's like, you know, if we can only bike together and he's like, oh, I don't feel like going two hours out of my way this time, then I'm like, oh, I guess I can't ride.
So instead, I just ride the damn Palaton because it's like 10 times more convenient. Just bike to him. Does it not have a bike share? Corey is a serious cyclist, okay? He's not going to take a, a, a shot to go Moby bike out with me, okay? We're not going out for a damn seaside jaunt. We're going out to, to set new King of the Hill Strava records, okay? The, the time that Corey and I went out biking, I had been biking for like two months. And I thought I was good at it. And Corey had always gone on about how he used to cycle a lot, but he was not in that good of shape anymore. And then he just actually had to slow down to wait for me like 10 times. As I realized, you know, I had a long way to go on my cycling journey to actually hit what he thought out of shape was. I got, I, I exactly got ego checked. That's absolutely true. I got owned. It's true. He had, it, his time in the biking market beat my timing the biking market you're probably better now well i know better than i used to be i'm not sure i'm better than Corey because i say hey Corey, what's your watts per kilogram and he said i don't know probably one and i was like i see you, you little you, you weasley little liar i'm gonna tell you my watts per kilogram i'm gonna be like one you're like a little baby i'm like a 2.4 and then i'm gonna go biking with this guy and he's gonna bust out like a 3.6 or something like that and i'm gonna be like you fucking dick i have no workout advice because, like, my workout advice is so unhelpful. You, it, it, This is your certified forehead moment of the day. Um, my workout advice is just do it. I don't know if anybody else has come up with this. It would be a good slogan for a company. I guess the, the real advice is the worst part is always starting. You know, when you realize it, it, it becomes simpler. When you realize the real problem. The real problem is that starting is annoying and it kind of sucks for like the first two weeks but once you get over the first two weeks it sucks more to stop than it does to keep the momentum going so i think that and it's it's too easy to say this when you're already in the habit because it seems self-evident i can put myself in the shoes of when i was not in the habit you know 30 weeks ago if somebody gave me advice that was like, just start and then you won't want to stop, I would have been like, thanks for your help, bozo. But at the same time, if anything, I think the best piece of advice you could glean from that is don't look for the perfect piece of advice. Just nut up and do the work. Like I, this is not good advice, but in that, in its own way, I think that might be good advice, you know? Instead of waiting for like the life hack that's going to make it easier for you to start a routine, I think you just got to be like, I'm a grown up. I'm gonna like do the thing that's good for me. I know it's easier said than done, but like, why are you looking at me to give you the magic words to, you know, start a habit that actually gives you all the benefit? It's a little messed up. I'm gonna give you like the magic bullet. You're not gonna give me shit. Doesn't make any damn sense. But that's also why I stand by like doing it every day. Cause like, it, you know, I, I'm a, an enthusiast of the Peloton. I'm not sure if you, if I've mentioned that I use the Peloton. Um, but, like, one of the most common, like, pieces of advice on r slash Peloton is, like, don't ride the bike every day. And I understand. There's there's something called, you know, overtraining, obviously. And if you're, like, if it hurts, like, if your body hurts, you probably should take time off until it doesn't. But for me, if I don't do something every day then it's, vi it's a lot easier to slip out of the habit. If I do it every single day, then it's a lot easier for me to stay into it. And then I take a day off as necessary if we're like going to visit our in-laws or something like that. So, you know, you might, especially at the beginning of starting like a new habit, usually your enthusiasm outstrips your ability, you know? That's why people always flunk out a couch to 5K they do like three runs and they're like, I'm insane at running. And then they run for 20 minutes straight when the routine says run for four minutes straight. And then the next day their legs fall off. It's happened to a lot of guys, okay? So I think if, if we recognize that the most important way to build a good habit is to just start doing it as soon as possible and maintain like maximum adherence to the plan, then it's good to cycle or to do whatever it is to your level of enthusiasm early get you into the habit and then when your motivation inevitably wanes you're already in the habit so you're more likely to stick to it anyway just out of routine how is your well-being today uh good thank you 
I, I do have to say, I, I was very exhausted by my Peloton ride today, but I did not set a personal best. However, I think it was just because the ride was programmed to be exhausting, but not actually be that output driven, i.e. it didn't have many heavy climbs out of the saddle. It had a lot of heavy climbs in the saddle, which is possibly even better for building muscular strength and endurance, but it didn't actually allow me to get my output numbers up that much. Nobody cares? Okay, well, so what? Would Peloton be a, a good choice for me if I want to get a huge ass? No. Pillsbury would be a huge choice for you if you want to get a huge ass. For sure. It, it, I read that comment like 20 seconds ago. I was just like, think of a food item that sounds like... By the way, we did it. Um, think of a food item that's it's kind of sounds like Peloton. And I, I'd like to think that I found it, quite frankly. I haven't. Seen, I didn't know Chibli was doing a subathon until uh, today. I missed out on. The, oh, this is not even close. I missed out on the entire subathon. Uh, so I I got back from America yesterday, and boy are my arms tired. Don't eat, don't start with me, okay? I got back at six. Six to seven thirty. Dinner, baby stuff, tidying up. Seven thirty to eight. I went to the bathroom. I'm just going to be honest with you. 8 to 10 is how long it took to put the baby to sleep. I was in bed by like 10, 16. I slept from 10 until 7.03 a.m. Hopped on the Peloton. Got off the Peloton. Brushed my teeth. Took a shower. Helped out with the baby routine in the morning. Went live 10 minutes late. And you, you've now caught up to the modern day. You've, you've caught up to the present moment. Thank you for asking. The Peloton ride was good. 30 minutes Sam Yo Hidden Hills ride. Came out of the gates pretty hard because I had the rare two days of rest. Uh, slowed down during the, the hit intervals a little bit. Ended up with a 371. Not my strongest performance ever on the Peloton, but, but respectable. Respectable! How was your ride today? I'm just about to do it. I'm still, like, I'm a Peloton enjoyer. But I, I have... The game has kind of turned me into a Twitch chatter. I, I'm not going to run the casino. This is off the clock. It's turned me into a Twitch chatter. Because literally, like... They have, like, 70 instructors under contract. And there's, like, one new 30-minute ride every day. It, I know this is not the case because it doesn't make any sense. But it really does seem like the average... Peloton instructor has like a 45 minute work week which I consider to be unacceptable you gotta at least double those numbers they have to practice every ride's the same thing man 4 minute warm up uh, 80 to 100 20 to 40 then you go on a little hill uh, 60 to 70 cadence you could become an instructor no joke, I kind of think I could handle it. Because I thought you had to be in, like, amazing shape to be a Peloton instructor. But then, like, now that I'm taking classes, like, half of the instructors, they call out some insane shit that's, like, almost impossible to hit. And then they stop pedaling and just say, you can do it. I could do that. That's, it, like, anyone could do that. I'm not saying that they're not working hard. Because, I mean, like, they they are all in great shape. But, like... I would like them to at least pedal when I maybe it's petty. Maybe it's a bad take. Like they have to talk and keep up a dialogue while exercising. But I'm like, well, maybe that's why you should record like 10 classes a week instead of two. Imagine what your VO2 max would be by now. Record some Peloton YouTube videos. It's li like there's no content to mine there. I'm just being honest. There's it's. Just because you can't restream their content because that's theft. So you would just be recording yourself ah, sweating on a stationary bike. Which I'm sure some of you would like, and that's why I would never do it. You talked about your Peloton ride today? No, I have not. It was, here's the thing. So I, I woke up late on Thursday. So I didn't get to do my Peloton ride until yesterday afternoon. 
which meant that this morning when I woke up on time, it had only been like 18 hours since my last ride. So I think I was, uh, you know, I didn't have the recovery period that I'm used to. Ended up being a little bit lower than usual. I think I, I clocked in at like a 346 over the course of uh, 30 minutes. It's not horrible, but I definitely, I left it being like, okay, I was still a little tired for this. So what you're saying is you're washed? I'm not washed, okay? I'm, I'm the opposite of Wash. Didn't you see I crossed 200 rides? I gotta say, Peloton is actually, it's kind of turned me into a bat chest thing sort of guy, but like unironically. I thought I was going to be annoyed by the fact that Peloton has some riders back in the studio, but honestly, I was kind of feeding off of their energy. I was kind of like, uh, you know, people were in the studio getting shout outs every time a song played. Everyone in the audience went, woo! And I was like, you know what? It's kind of, I'm not going to deny these people what they're enjoying. But I will say the other reason that I like that they're doing classes in studio for some of the classes now is because when the instructor calls out like, hey, for the next 30 seconds, you're going to be on cadence 100 to 120. I look at the speed of my legs and then I look at the speed of the legs of the people that are in the studio. And I'm like, you cheaters, you're not, you're not going 100 to 120 right now. You're probably going like 87. Come on, you, it's, you've been waiting your whole life to take a Leanne Hainsby 30-minute uh, pop ride in person, and then you're half-assing it? It's embarrassing. You get any high fives? I mean, I get like a couple of high fives every run. I, I never am the first to send a high five, but I always reciprocate them, except I do get a lot of high fives from people. Like, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but every online... Uh, platform whether it's social media or not is now just u.s politics 24 7 so like at least once a week i get a high five from someone whose name is something like um let's go brandon thanks for the gas prices joe biden uh stuff like that and then i gotta be like i'm not gonna high five that man i'm just trying to go for a damn bike ride i don't even live in america but like you've made your whole like online presence uh, on like it's just it's a stationary bike why is why have you it should be your leisure time but instead you're like i am a i mean especially to me i'm a member of i'm a bidenist i'm a member of joe biden's uh, secret service it's just insulting to me recycled bit it's not it's not a bit this is real life this ain't SeaWorld. This is as real as it gets. I'm on a boat, mother effort. Don't you ever forget. I don't I don't have like a Peloton instructor tier list. Here's what I'm going to say, though. Go to rotation. Goated blunt rotation. Sam Yo, Ben Aldis, Dennis Morton, Emma Lovewell. That's, that's my blunt rotation on the Peloton. They've all got their pluses and minuses. Emma Love very well. Emma Lovewell by name. Emma love very well by reputation. That's the Austin Powers quote. I'm not being weird. What about Matt Wilpers? I took one ride with Matt Wilpers. I very much enjoyed the ride, but all of his other rides are Power Zone. So in order to... I got to change up my whole style. 50 said, go on, switch your style up. And if you hate, then let him hate and watch the money pile up. So I can't... Uh, I, I can't do any more Matty Wilpers rides until I start doing Power Zone. Do Power Zone? I'm kind of like in the vibe. I'm vibing though. I'm kind of like, here's my problem with the internet, okay? Every time you are doing something that works for you, people don't say, hey, great job, keep it up. They always say, hey, now that you got something that works for you and you're in a routine, you should just try something new. I don't want to try something new. I want to do the thing that I've already been doing that I find able to, I'm able to do consistently. I don't need to mix it. Get out of here! I got a good thing going on, right? I'm, I'm sure Power Zone, uh, you know, has got his positives for sure. The big negative for me is I don't want to take like a 20-minute test that makes me feel like I'm going to die just to gain access to the classes. Okay, I'm not playing very well right now. Novelty is a big deal for some people. Okay, not for me though. I mean, we're playing Isaac. You should be aware of this fact by now. Plus two, plus two, thank you. I love seeing one minus two from the previous joke. And then the flood of plus twos from the newest joke. From the, the lowest lows to the highest highs. 
I think you're right. I think Peloton should get um, celebrity appearances. You said Hulk Hogan. I don't know. I feel like that would probably cause like a mega thread on our slash Peloton cycle, but... There's no reason that The Rock should not have done a 30-minute ride yet. A Rick from Rick and Morty ride. Exactly. Wubba Lubba Choo Choo. Lance Armstrong songs to ride the bike while taking steroids to 30 minute steroid ride. <laughs> Taze, 30 minute Taze on day ride. Dude, I would be so into that. We get Keeper's Kin like literally every freaking time now. And I'm kind of into it. What genre of music's best for Peloton? I'm just saying, like, I don't think it really matters, but I do want to say, and I, I, I hate to insult my my favorite instructor, Sam Yo. I don't think I can hear another Def Leppard song. I just, I'm so, I've, I've def, since I got the Peloton, the graph of my frequency of uh, listening to Def Leppard has actually, it's like a hockey stick. It goes from zero to like five songs a week. I don't want to hear any more Def Leppard. I don't want to hear Armageddon 2. I don't want to hear Animal. I don't want to hear Pour Some Sugar On Me. What about Foo Fighters? I don't mind it because the only Foo Fighters song they seem to play regularly on the rides that I take is um, Everlong, which is probably the best Foo Fighters song, in my personal opinion. Based, based, based. No, I, I do not like White Snake either. Also, literally, I know we talk about bands that only have one song, like uh, Gautier, but like White Snake legitimately has one song. Here I go again on my own. I don't think they have they have any other. I don't know if they've ever recorded any other songs. The Everlong music video is a trip. You should watch it, bro. I was alive in like. 1996 when the color and the shape came out this is not like some hidden treasure that shit was on tv like every 45 minutes i've seen the everlong music video this shit was on mtv like you know every every time you turn on the tv you see the dude's hands get really big he starts slapping the guy around it is a banger I don't love the Foo Fighters, but I, I do like that song a lot. I mean, Everlong is a great song. I like Learn to Fly, too, but I, it's maybe a little controversial. But then I don't like anything the Foo Fighters made after, like, 2002. I mean, I it, it, to be honest with you, at the risk of making even more enemies in chat, I kind of feel like the, the way you feel about me when I talk about U2, the band U2, um, is the way that I feel about people when they talk about the Foo Fighters. Like, I'm... Whenever people are like, I love the Foo Fighters, I'm like, but how? Like, I, I like, like, five of the songs. Big Me, Everlong, Learn to Fly. There's probably some more. I listened to The Color and The Shape back in the day. But then when people are like, oh, I've seen the Foo Fighters in concert, like, ten times, I'm like, really? I mean, I guess... If you're into it, I'm not being a hater. I'm just saying, uh, I, I I guess this, you know, it, when you hear me talk about Pride in the Name of Love by you 2 and you're like, how could such a, a based individual like such trash music? I, I guess that's, that's how I feel when people start talking about you 2s like, you know, is someone getting the best of you or something like that. Monkey Wrench is a, is a good song. That's how I feel about the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I can't, I, it's one of those things, again, I've already... This, these are my honest opinions. I'm not just trying to, like, make people mad. But I really... The Red Hot Chili Peppers have got to be, like, the funniest band on the planet. I, I say this, by the way, as somebody who, in the sixth grade, uh, in French class, we had to write a menu for a fake restaurant. And I named my fake restaurant the Red Hot Chili Peppers because I loved the album Californication so much. But in my defense, I was literally... 11 or 12 years old. I just remember that I made the signature dish like a big pot of red hot chili peppers. It was not very creative. That's going to play with fellow Zoomers. 
Zoomers consider the Red Hot Chili Peppers to be like the Nickelback of the Gen X crowd. Dude, honestly, I think people in chat are probably catching strays, but I think that's very fair. It's gotta be, the Red Hot Chili Peppers have to be like Gen X's favorite bands. Nah, they're good. I always just think of the John Daly song from uh, Comedy Bang Bang. A bing a bong a bong a bong Burbank. Go 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 Glendale. You know, the joke is that like every Red Hot Chili Pepper song is about either California or like sexual intercourse. They're just like, I can't, they've been doing the same thing for like, uh, you know, 35 years. And that actually, the, I cannot hear uh, Give It Away anymore. That's the, the number one song on the Peloton. If you ever see a 90s rock ride, there's literally a 99.9% .9 chance there's going to be Give It Away. And I, I just can't hear it anymore, man. I'm just, I'm over it. When did you get so based? I think, honestly, I've always been based. You probably just got a little bit older. And now you're realizing how based I am. Like that classic Mark Twain quote, when I was 17, I thought my dad was the dumbest person on the planet. And then when I was 27, I was surprised how much the old man had learned in just 10 short years. Read between the lines. What a smart dad to learn so much in 10 years. Listen, I told you to read between the damn lines, okay? Uh, we're here. Um, no illness will stop me forever. It might stop me for like two days. It might even stop me for three days, but it's not going to stop me for the rest of my life, ideally, okay? So you might be asking, hey, NL, where have you been for the last couple of days? Well, so here's my hypothesis, okay? I mean, I'll just give you the, the primary sources, like straight from the horse's mouth. My daughter got sick with some kind of respiratory illness last Friday. So she had sneezing, she had a runny nose. I got a, did, like, Isaac has been wiped from my brain. Is this item any good? Hold on, maybe I'm amazing with it. Uh, I started to catch symptoms of whatever that is on a, around Sunday. But that's very normal, especially when you have a, a toddler. Um, I was, I had a little bit of a runny nose. I had some congestion. Uh, I wasn't playing the best Super Auto Pets of my life. You, you saw that. That was all on Tuesday. Remember my last words on Tuesday. I don't think I'm going to be 100% better tomorrow, but I promise you I'm going to be better. So that was a lie. So, so step zero of this whole ordeal was I think I had an underlying respiratory illness. A, a mild uh, cold or virus of some sort, okay? Then, Tuesday, the stream ends, and something is just not right. Like, something is, is I just don't feel right, is the, the only way I know how to describe it. Like, the stream ended, and I felt, uh, I felt like melancholy. I just felt, like, wistful. And, you know, sometimes it happens, you... It, I'm not gonna say streaming is like stressful. It's just like, you know, you're, it's, it's high energy. You're talking to a lot of people. Sometimes you kind of like, you come down off of it at the end, but this was different. I was like, I'm sensible enough that I, like the logical part of my brain was like, this is a little bit weird. And I took the baby out for a walk, which I normally do to begin with uh, after the stream is over, when, when she's at home at least. And it was like walking through mud. It was like, <laughs> I, normally, I like maintain a pretty brisk pace, and I got no problems. Uh, you know, I'm playing Pokemon Go. I'm watching the baby. It's, it's a great time, but it was like just not good. I was getting passed by, you know, little kids. I was getting passed by senior citizens. So I, at that point, I was like, something is not right, for sure. Uh, and I, I was making that clear to Kate as well. I was like, I'm pretty sure I might be, like, sick sick. Because I normally, and, and I don't see, like, this is a sign of, like, superiority or anything like that. But I'm normally, like, a fast walker. Which is why I've enjoyed uh, walking with the stroller. Because, you know, when you're just a fast walker, people, like, they walk in groups of six people. They walk uh, side by side by side by side. They see you coming from a kilometer away and they refuse to get out of the way. They're like, why would we make space? That means you owned us. We're girl bossing right now. We just got uh, back from 
happy hour at Joey's. We've got six frozen mango Yarita Ritas in us. Anyway, when you have a stroller, that all goes out the window. They move out of the way for you, which is nice. Instead, with the stroller, I was like a... I was an inconvenience. People were like, I need to wait for this person to, like, stop so we can pass this old man. Oh, wait, he's not old. He's just, like, bad. <laughs> Dead moving, I guess. Anyway. Uh, so I got home, and I was like, I don't think I can cook tonight. So we ordered something. Kay was like, what do you want to order? I was like, I don't care. We ordered ramen. I basically drank the broth, and then just went to lay down on the couch. And that was the next four hours of my life. And that was not even like, that was the best I would feel until roughly today. So Wednesday, Tuesday night, and this is where I apologize to you, and this is where uh, food poisoning became like a, a I, I think that I got food poisoning to go along with the flu-like symptoms. Tuesday night, I went to bed, you know, at like 9.30 p.m. I woke up at around 8 a.m., but I woke up every hour on the hour to use the bathroom. I've had norovirus before, and that was, I was like, this is probably something similar to that. Although, the, I've gone back and forth. Like, Kate's hypothesis, I actually think is, is correct. She thinks that I probably caught some kind of, like, I don't want to call it a foodborne illness, but like some kind of pathogen from cleaning like the cat's litter box or something because the cats also had diarrhea. And then I caught that in like the worst way that I've ever had in my entire life. But I don't think it's norovirus, which it, it all the symptoms line up, but apparently norovirus is like really um, contagious. And both Kate and the baby do not have any symptoms at all, which is like amazing. Basically, my entire Wednesday was uh, just being in the bathroom. Wasn't in the bathroom 100% of the time, but like every 10 minutes or so, or every, maybe 10 minutes is an exaggeration, but like, you know, it'd be like an hour off and then like, you know, three times in a half hour and then like 45 minutes off and then go again. And then like that sucked pretty bad. And uh, not being able to eat anything at all. So just, you know, your body's just flushing absolutely everything. So not, not feeling great to begin with. Then yesterday, I, I felt like I hit a breakthrough. I was able, I, I woke up normal time. I still got up like once every, you know, hour. Well, no, I'm probably like once every two and a half hours maybe to use the bathroom. But when I woke up, first thing my brain did was like, you've got to eat like a large meat lover's pizza today. And I took that as an incredible positive sign. Because the day before that, uh, I ate a piece of toasted whole wheat bread with nothing on it. Anyway, I'm doing a little bit better right now. Um, not like 100, I would say like I'm 35% of my normal strength, but that feels like incredible to me versus the, uh, the where I was the last two days. Like, bizarrely enough, being at 35% is like, I, I feel like superhuman right now. So anyway, that was that. And again, this way I was, I, I was laughing to myself whenever people were like, uh, we stay in a streamer who who's, he engages in practices of self-care. I'm like, there's nothing self-care about this, my man. This is... <laughs> it's like I'm like 85% dead and people are like if you don't want to stream today that's okay and I'm like yeah no kidding I'm fighting for my damn life out here every, every second I'm gulping down oxygen <gasps> running to the bathroom <gasps> I got triple ply toilet paper I don't even want to know like what it looks like in that area downstairs right now. I don't want to know. I can't do the normal wipe anymore. I got to do like a like a dab and peel. But sometimes I don't know if I'm only getting mess or if I'm taking off part of the tissue as well at this point. Like it's a it's a disaster. It's clean. It, it might actually be too clean. That's the problem. 
This is too far, too far. Okay, like five seconds ago in chat, people were like, NL's the kind of guy to Google his symptoms and think he's dying. Now I'm describing what it's actually like, and people are like, oh, gross. You need to, like, honestly grow up a little. This is the human body. That's why you use a bidet. Honestly, I think a uh, bidet would have cut me open like a damn fire hose. It basically would have been like anal waterboarding. It would have sliced me up like a like Darth Maul's lightsaber, man. What is he saying? I'm muted. No, nobody tell him, okay? You don't get to do Oh, this is gross. I'm muting. Somebody please type out a description of what he's saying. If you want the goods, you gotta suffer through it, okay? I don't think you understand. I'm like... I was not joking when Dan tweeted me and was like, the Peloton doesn't skip a day. And then I said, on Tuesday, I felt bad about skipping, but on Wednesday, I, or today, I'm just lucky to be alive. There was a slight exaggeration. I never thought I was going to die. But I did think there was maybe like a 25% chance I was going to have to go to the hospital and stay there for a bit. Will you return to the Peloton? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I've, I've been through this before, but like... Right, I've, I've said it earlier on the stream. It's not that I was like, oh, I don't feel like doing the Peloton today. Like there was literally... You know when you like could work out and you don't, so you feel a little guilty when you're in the routine? This was not that. Tuesday, I felt uh, guilty. Wednesday, I was like, can't, literally can't do it. I don't spend enough time not pooping to fit in one continuous uh, ride. Uh, also, I'm like dehydrated out of my gourd. So I'm pretty sure any doctor on earth would be like, don't exercise. Also, my butthole looks like a, an episode of Botched right now. So I don't want to sit on the damn seat. There's, there's some things, that the, the Peloton streak is an important, not the streak really, but just the habit is an important part of my foundation of life right now. It's, you know, taking care of my cardiovascular health is, is something I take not lightly anymore but also i had a different sort of streak to worry about and that was the one in my underpants yeah also like i thought that if i rode there's a chance i could have had a heart attack no doctor on earth would have been like oh this one yeah we just advise you to get like a little exercise i'm i'm hoping like i feel semi okay today but I still feel like probably tomorrow I, w I will not be good enough to work out. I'm thinking Sunday is possible and Monday is reasonable. Where's your gold play button? Sometimes people think I put on airs. No! No! I got the gold play button in the mail, but I literally haven't even opened it. Like it's... it's I don't actually... I'm, my wife tidied up the other day. I don't know where it went. It arrived in the mail, and I said, oh, cool, and then I have not even opened it. Why not? Because I just, like, no, no plaque is going to tell me how I'm going to feel about my career. I'm my own man. I'm an adult. You know, instead of YouTube, like, sending me a plaque when I hit a million subscribers, you know what would be nice? If they um, replied to my emails about all of my quarry videos being unmonetized as a result of false content ID claims. No, sorry, best we could do is an $8 piece of brush steel. By the way, when you get it, make sure you make a video that goes, whoa, so that we can reap some of that ad revenue on the top. How about a rich dumpling? I'm not like a, you know, I mean, I applied for the for the award. Yeah, they don't just send it to you automatically. You got to like, you know, fill in a little checklist or something like that. I I applied for it cuz I think it'll be nice to have and and put up in display. It's a nice, you know, memento, but I'm like it's not urgent. It's just a little I don't need an award, man. The the real award is the is the privilege of doing the job every day.
Same with the Peloton. I don't, I don't worry about, oh, the, my badge count on the Peloton. Oh, I've got to make sure I do a Father's Day class so I can get the 2022 Father's Day badge to display on my profile. Nah, man. Let me just do a 30-minute Cody Rigsby ride to Throat Goat by Kim Petrus. I'm in it for the love of the game. Are your watts improving? No, my body is fucked up. <laughs> I am not back in game shape yet. Even though I've stopped having so much bowel movement thing, I, uh, I am not back to my previous conditioning. You lost all that weight, though? I mean, it, I'm not, it's not like I've gotten back to, you know, before I even ro rode the bike. I just backslid a little bit while I'm still recovering but let me tell you something i'm not sure if you if you would like to draw a free body diagram of a stationary bike losing weight does not help you go faster on a stationary bike i guess in some way your legs carrying less fat might lead to you having stronger output but for the most part it's not going to affect you as much as it would on a on a non-stationary bike my watts per kilogram is uh is less relevant i guess honestly i think if you want to have a uh, insane peloton stats you should actually just be like 400 pounds built like mewtwo how's the peloton going honestly like pretty badly I've, I've been back on for three days now after the food poisoning but clearly like the the illness has it sucked something out of my body like it's gonna take longer to to get back to conditioning than i thought it would the the rides for the last three days have not been up to my usual standards but you just you know what are you gonna do you gotta be you gotta be patient with yourself i'm not out here trying to have a mr big on the bike or anything like that you just gotta just gotta be patient you look slimmer have you lost weight thank you for noticing um i started exercising regularly in about november and have maintained a, a rigorous peloton streak since then and then that progress was doubled over the course of the past week when I crapped my brains out 10 times a day with uh, food poisoning. I did have the, I had the first moment when I went to, uh, when I picked up my daughter from daycare yesterday, I looked in the elevator mirror on the way down to parking and I was like, you look like shit. <laughs> I like, you, you, you need to eat something. Not like I got too skinny, but like I got decrepit over the past week i needed to like i needed that refeed last night that saved me at this stage you need a lemon whoa what the heck i accidentally clicked on something in windows that made all my active windows tessellate out in front of me what button is that man that launched in windows 7 15 years ago listen <laughs> i don't come to this website to be abused okay where do you go to be abused then? Um, 30 minute 80s ride with Bradley Rose on the Peloton. I like Bradley's rides. He's a little too happy for me. So here's my, my current Peloton rotation. I used to be very particular about my instructor. I only rode with Sam Yo until uh, Peloton Studios put out a hit on Sam Yo. And for whatever reason, they only let him do 10 minute low impact rides, which don't interest me. I know you're all very interested in this, by the way. So now I go to the most recent classes and I'm like, okay, I, I, it's, for me, it's all about programming. Not, I don't vibe with all the personalities, but if I can get a Cody Rigsby ride, I know he programs some heavy hills. I like that. If I can get a Bradley Rose ride, I know he's, he's got a good mix of, uh, of speed ups and jogs. If I can get a Ben Aldis ride, he also goes pretty hard out of the saddle. I'm into that. Otherwise, hey, Dennis Morden, probably the best music tastes on the whole platform. Every other uh, instructor has god-awful, like, uh, boomer core playlists. Dennis Morden at least has some cool ones sometimes. Oh, God, here comes the copy pasta. <laughs> anyway, that's where I'm at. Occasional Emmy, uh, Emma Lovewell ride. Occasional Alex Toussaint ride. I would ride with Matt Wilpers more if he didn't just do uh, Power Zone. You know, I'll, I'll, if, I'll make it stop if, 
or it, will you make it stop if I read it? Hey, NL, been following your content since the EU four days. Much love from your far superior cousin, America. Always the case, no matter how much Canadian propaganda you push. Keep up the good work, man. You've always been funny just now that people are noticing it. So thank you for always being consistent for us rouge-like lovers. You're welcome. <laughs> Are we, are we done? <laughs> All right. I did Peloton today. I mean, that's why we got the uh, emoji, I guess, up there. I'm proud of myself for, for still getting on the bike. You know, every country's playing the same game. And don't, now that we're talking, because we should probably start playing games soon now that I got like my IBS anecdote out of the way. But... Don't even get me started, okay? Because I was on the Peloton today. I've, it's been two days since I've been on it. I've been dealing with some intestinal flare-ups. I booted up. It says, Oh, Canada, we're celebrating our Canadian riders this week with a bunch of Canadian-themed rides, including music from artists such as Rush and the Tragically Hip. I click on the banner. 30-minute Justin Bieber ride. 30-minute Celine Dion ride. 30-minute Canadian hip-hop ride. I don't want to do that shit. It was, I couldn't find the Rush. There's probably one Rush song in like the entire collection. They could do a 30 minute Rush ride so easily. There is a 15 minute Tragically Hip ride. But like, don't insult, 15 minutes? That's like, a, that's four Tragically Hip songs. Come on. I can't b b break a, a PB to four Tragically Hip songs. I'm ignoring the Daily Peloton update question just so you know because i didn't ride today because uh i rode yesterday my ride was not good and my legs are insanely sore and i don't think i have necessary i mean you might think that this is like the guy uh, doth protest too much i i need some rest quite frankly like uh i'm i'm not a hundred percent right now this is not a situation would honestly it would have been easier to ride the peloton rather than take the time off but the the strong decision was to the, the smart decision i should say was to take the time off don't say sexy stubble nl is back i'm in disarray right now do you see how pale i am i haven't been this lean since i was like 16 years old it's it's <laughs> disconcerting <laughs> Part of it is the Peloton, but part of it is also the, the, the gastroenteritis, man. If you look at the I don't have a rook clip, it's crazy. Well, th th I'm just being honest with you. Oh, baby, now we box him. Uh, rook. We got rook, 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 rook. Just keep rooking it. Rook, rook green. Uh, I don't even have a rook anymore! <laughs> You, you have no idea. That clip I'm trying to think, I'm pretty sure that was taken um, when I was still working out, uh, like lifting. When I was lifting, I, I got as heavy as like 205 pounds on purpose. Um, there was really no reason to be 5'10", 205 pounds when you're, like, like intentionally, I think. So most of that weight came off uh, eventually when I started riding on the Peloton. I do have to say that when people linked me to the Road Rage guy, I don't think he looks that much like me, but he does kind of look like 2020 me. I'll give you that one. When I was eating half a jar of peanut butter a night and uh, and squatting like 375 pounds, okay, he he has more than a, a superficial similarity to me from that phase in my life. Okay, now I like to think I look more like the other road rage guy that he's wearing a, a zip up hoodie and a snapback hat and he gets out of his car with uh with a baseball bat i look more like that guy those are the inside you there are two road ragers 
Thank you, the VIP Daniel. Thank you for the link. Thank you. I do not look like the I meant to kick your phone guy, okay? That's... That guy has like a like a ponytail. He has salt and pepper, like mid-length hair. I look nothing. <laughs> OMG, he does. You listen, you motherfuckers. Hey, 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 come on out. Come on out. Hey, 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 yes, yeah, step out. I love it. It gives me every time. Why'd you stop lifting? So I, I, stop me if you've heard this one before. What have I done? Um, but basically at the height of my lifting was March 2020 and uh, I, I was going to a public gym and things were starting to, you know, get a little scary. I said, you know what, maybe, uh, maybe it would be okay for me to take a week off until this COVID stuff starts to settle down. Um, tweets made moments before disaster. Then, so like I, I said I'm not going to go back to the gym for like a week. Uh, and then also, I mean, COVID happens. My wife, I mean, it's, it, I don't know how to say this. Because I don't want to, I've struggled with this for like more than two years now. I don't like this sentence, my wife got pregnant. Because that sounds like, like I had nothing to do with it. It sounds like, like, well, there's, I, my life was in a different place and then my wife got pregnant. But then I used to say, like, we got pregnant and then people told me it was stolen valor. They're like, well, what if you, you didn't get pregnant? You were just like a guy. But anyway, so yeah, but I impregnated my wife. That's like too much. That conjures like visual imagery that you guys didn't ask for. I would, ra I would rather you not imagine it, quite frankly. So either way, anyway, my wife got pregnant and then I was like, well, you know, it's, the, it's a pandemic. My wife is pregnant. Like I got a good reason to, I mean, I had other priorities in my life at the time. And then we had the baby. And then after having the baby, you know, it's a lot of work. And I, I basically didn't work out from like March 2020 until November 2021 when my wife made me a Peloton husband. Not keeping the beard. The beard is gone. I didn't do 247 Peloton rides from November 2021 until July 2022 to, to have to simulate a jawline, okay? It's, it's going bye-bye. You know, I just lost like 10 of the hardest pounds of my life while suffering from gastroenteritis for three weeks. I'm living my, my small phase loud and proud, man. I start go outside, wear a shirt that hasn't fit since like 11th grade. Apparently, I didn't know this until I got into running the last time I did. But um, apparently one of the things that is most likely to contribute to shin splints is having overdeveloped quads proportional to your hamstrings. When I read that, I was like, that's absolutely true. Because your quads are fun to work out and your hamstrings are annoying. So I could come, I, I diagnose myself with that being the truth. You were just overtraining? Nah, man, I don't think so. You think I'm overtraining just because I tore my meniscus on a very pedestrian run outside? I don't think so. Overtraining? Nah, man, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, it was like 10 years ago almost. Probably right. I'm a lat guy living in an ab guy's world. I hear you, man. Try, uh, oh, you piece of crap. Try building up your leg muscles with like eight months of nearly uh, daily Peloton rides so that you can show off your sick quads, hammies, and calves in the summertime, and then getting simultaneous Campylobacter and sal Salmonella infections near the start of June, and uh, watching red patches appear on both of your legs as they slowly scarlet rot away. Today's the first day I've worn shorts since like the middle of June. I had to wear long pants for the last month, so I didn't freak people out with my damn, with the, with the stanky leg. This feels like a very specific hypothetical. Surprise, I framed it as a hypothetical, but it actually happened to me not so long ago. NL's brave to talk about jawlines? What the hell? Dude, my, I've got an adequate jawline. Come on. I'm not going to uh, Amsterdam for that weird Dutch 
chinlet surgery. I'm not saying I got the most pronounced jawline of all time. Just I'm, I've never been self-conscious about my jawline, except when like I got overweight. Most of the time, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm even approaching. I, I know this was like when Mouth posted the photo of, of us from high school. I said last known sighting of my chin dimple. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to brag, but when I had two bouts of food poisoning simultaneously and almost died, I was starting to see the chin dimple again. It's, it's knocking. It's knocking at the door. I don't know if I can keep up that kind of weight loss regimen of losing like a troubling amount of weight in a very short period of time and having people comment things on my subreddit like jesus you weren't lying he looks like a ghost but i will say one of the cruelest things about like almost dying is that i really thought that um i was gonna have like a longer period of being able to just gorge and eat whatever i wanted before feeling any ill effects and don't get me wrong, there was like a week where my appetite came, like it was last week. My appetite came back, I was eating meats and chips and ice creamses and, and all sorts of, and I was not limiting myself at all. And then today, I was like, you know what? I'm starting to feel a little soft. I was going, I was going pretty hard on the dirty bulk. I think it only took like a week to, to return to my previous state. I really thought I was going to have like three weeks, but now I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I guess I got to get back to, I mean, you don't got to, you can do whatever you want, but I guess I'm going to get back to slightly healthier living, like not eating a bunch of ice cream, like right after dinner, just because you were sick a week ago. Back to formula. You back on the Peloton? I did ride the Peloton today. It was not a good ride. But it was not good in a much different way than my previous not good rides when I was really sick were. Like when I was really sick, the rides felt like I was pedaling through mud. This one, I was just like, oh yeah, it's been like two weeks since I was on this. Like I, I feel weaker and like more out of breath. So it's gonna, it's gonna take a while, you know, get back to those numbers. But then also I was like, when I was riding today, I was out of breath and like, you know, breathing heavy. And I was like, no, I've got to get to uh, 330 output minimum. Otherwise, I'm not going to be like happy with myself. And then I, I had like a moment when I was listening to Spice Girls um, Spice Up Your Life where I was like, why? Like you were like really sick. Just relax. Like I, I, I gave myself permission to just be like, why are you killing yourself? on this bike for like no reason why don't you just like work out like a normal person and i was like you know what i'm right <laughs> maybe maybe my conditioning will come back in time or maybe it'll always be dampened a little bit but like who cares you're fucking 33 years you're a 33 year old amateur stationary cyclist you're not trying to try out for like the tour de france or something like that just chill out just do your workout and then like do your job and then hug your kid and you know that's, you, you pretty much got it. Can you imagine if Fall Guy's head rocks <laughs> you? I'm just laughing at this guy, man. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. Can you imagine if Fall Guys had proximity chat? Honestly, I would just look up like the the MP3 of the USB sound when a device gets unplugged from your computer. And I would just, I would play that into the mic. 24 7. I think that would add to the atmosphere. Ding dong. Do do do. Ding ding. Dong. Ding dong. <laughs> oh. Pipe. I like Pipe Dream. You make me feel like a Fall Guys pipe dream. The way you suck me off. Tight skin jeans. We ain't ever going back. We ain't ever going back. Girl, you got your skin tight jeans and your pissed in jeans and your pipe dreams tonight. Another great song, Ruin. Dude, what are you talking about? Those are the lyrics. Pissed in jeans? Well, I don't know. She might not say pissed in. Oh, it's been a while since I heard it. I, I only just got back on the Peloton like two days ago. 
I took a Cody Rigsby ride today. Every song was about, like, either giving or receiving fellatio. It's a joke for the Peloton heads amongst us. Except it's not a joke. It's, it's real life. Okay, let's get some... Let's get some damn sporkle. How's your output on the Peloton looking? Pretty bad lately, but rising, which is nice. I honestly think I've, I've just come to accept the fact that even though the year is only just over half, halfway done, my 2020, I probably will not set a new personal best in 2022. The start of June is going to be my, uh, that's probably going to be my 2022 physical peak. It might take me a few months. I, I'm not joking, by the way. I know it sounds dramatic. I think it might take me a few months to recover from this. Like, I'm feeling a lot better, but, like, I do think I lost, like, some flesh or something. I lost some muscle for sure. It'll take some, it'll take some time to get back, but, like, I'm, I'm not really in a rush. Little Caesar was eating good. Oh, I've been riding. I've just been, like, you know, not having great outputs. I had a good Peloton ride, by the way. I have to say, it was, like, the first time I really felt like I, uh... Since the illness, it was one of the first times I felt like I was getting some strength back. Normal output was like, you know, but pre-illness was like 340 to 360. Occasionally higher, occasionally lower. On During illness and after the course of antibiotics, I was down there in the 270s to the 290s. It's like 25% fitness loss. That's, that's not great. How long of a ride? All I do are 30 minutes. So, and occasionally a 10 minute beginner yoga class. But today I got back, I got to 320. And I was, or 327 or something like that. And I was like, you know what? 327, that's, that, that's approaching what my average was pre-illness. It's on the lower end, but I'm feeling a little better. Anyway, so after that, I had some flatbread and smoked salmon, just cause I'm on a bit of a smoked salmon kick. And then for my last meal, I was going to have a granola bar because it was I was live and it's at 10 a.m. So it's kind of an inconvenient time for me to, to start a fast. Um, but then I remembered that my gastroenterologist would literally uh, kill me and hide the body if I ate like a nut before my colonoscopy. So instead, I just had a glass of kefir, which was not on the forbidden foods list. He's cracked. Peloton anecdotes? I just, there's no anecdotes. It's just a bike. Anyway, I had a good Peloton ride today. I can't remember. I mean, I, I rode today, which I wasn't thinking I was going to do to begin with because of the colonoscopy. But um, I, I rode today and I had a good performance. Thinking I was like somewhere between, I think I was at like 331 output on a 30 minute ride. So I was feeling, I was feeling a little more solid. Can I tell you though, I'm actually, I'm coming to bat for Subway just a little bit more. A foot long sandwich is more expensive than it's ever been. I don't know, in Canada, it's probably like, by the time you get out of there, even no chips, no drink, I think you're looking at like an 11, $12 foot long sandwich, depending on what you order. I ordered a sandwich, someone said you should support local businesses. I said, you know what, that's absolutely true. I um, ordered a sandwich from a local business. I went to pick it up. It came to, with, with a 15% tip, it came to $15.91. When I got there and got the sandwich, it was about that big. And they had the audacity to cut it in half. I, like, it, I don't have this moment, oh, by the way, start a prediction. I don't have this moment often, but I was like, I'm never going to this business ever again. It's like an amuse-bouche sandwich that cost as much as a Subway footlong. So Monday, I ate at Subway. Tuesday, I said, I'm going to get a sandwich from this local joint. Wednesday, I went back to Subway. Are you eating this Subway, like, daily? No, nah, like, twice weekly, I would say, on average. It's not every other day. I would, are you kidding? I would never eat Subway willfully on a weekend. I got a lot more time. That's so much. What the fuck? Hey, buy a Peloton. I'll DM you my username. I don't want a bunch of bozos following me, challenging me to 30-minute red Taylor Swift version rides. And we'll see who's got a better output right now. We'll see how much the sandwiches are slowing me down and how much your superior diet is helping you get ahead. 1v1 me mid on Peloton. How are you going to cope with losing? I don't think I'm going to lose. 
Most rides, I'm top 5%, and that's against people who are already on the Peloton. Okay, maybe top 10%. Occasionally, there's an exceptional performance. Top 5 is a bit of an exaggeration. It's more of a spiritual health concern. Okay, that's fair. I, I don't know where my spiritual health is at. I haven't watched Long Island Medium in, recently. Should people on the Peloton are like 85? Young people always do this, and I don't count myself in this because I'm about to make a, a value judgment on your character. They're always like, hmm, me, a 22-year-old guy who doesn't exercise versus a 55-year-old bodybuilder. Um, have you considered that the 55-year-old bodybuilder would like kick, uh, would get his ass kicked by me because I'm young and uh, six centimeters taller? No, do you get your ass beat. Like the human body, it does fall apart as you get older. Don't get me wrong. But you'll see people do that like online. They'll be like, who would win in a fight? A 30-year-old or a 24-year-old? And they're like, well, the 24-year-old's younger. And you're like, what are you talking about? They're the same age. The fall-off, I mean, look, you can see it in, like, professional sports. In the NHL, you peak at, like, 24. Like, 24 to 29. Other leagues, I'm sure, is different. Or it might be different, I should say. But, like, uh, in terms of, like, normies, come on. Like, obviously, who's going to win in a, in a fight? Mike Tyson at 19 or Mike Tyson at 60? Probably Mike Tyson at 19. Who's going to win in a fight? Um, Joe from accounting who doesn't work out. And Bill from human resources who does uh, yoga 2x weekly. I don't know. Who wants it more? Who's got the damn dog in him? Don't try to talk to me about Kim Petrus' uh, throat goat. You think I haven't done 30-minute uh, Cody Rigsby pop rides? I'm very familiar with Kim Petrus. I had an Alley love ride today. Does she always try to literally kill you? I don't know. You, you gotta ask Dan that one, okay? Dan's an, an Alley love rider. I, uh, I gotta be honest, Dan told me, hey, my favorite instructor is Alley Love. You should give her a try. I, I rode with Alley Love. I have to say, I didn't love it. Not in a not in a way where I was like, oh, this isn't worth doing. But she was just a little too, um, if you'll if you'll allow me to say it, almost a little too like motivational. I prefer the instructors who are like, you were a piece of shit. Don't give up or do you know? I I like that. And I'm like, you're right, I am a piece of shit. Let's do this. 60 to 70 cadence, uh, 70 plus out of the saddle. That's just the, that's the kind of, like, motivation that I respond to more. Like, I don't, I don't like when I join a Peloton ride and the instructor's like, no matter what bullshit you're dealing t with today, uh, just leave it behind and enjoy the ride. Do your best. And I'm like, no. I want the rides where you get on the bike and they're like, whatever bullshit you're dealing with today, like Matthew McConaughey in Reign of Fire. Use it! I much prefer that. And are you still handing out high fives like candy? I do, I do, whoa! I do hand out high fives quite frequently. That's all it takes. One, one slip up is all it takes. We go from second to, to 30 second. And then watch this, you just take the inside line. Have faith, oh my God. We're not gonna qualify. Don't hit, don't hit me. Don't hit, oh, oh, let me out. We're not gonna qualify. We're like, we're so far from the end. Bro. Maybe there's not 10 people in front of me. Maybe I can take the perfect line. Hottest lap one in history, worst lap two in history? Choose prediction. Well, we're paying out no on that one. 92% yes, that feels bad. <laughs> that doesn't feel good. You know what it is? I haven't had any water. My whole day, I don't know if I tell you, my whole day got ruined because my damn Peloton couldn't connect to the internet this morning, so I couldn't do a 30 minute Dennis Morton hit and hills ride. So how am I supposed to even get hydrated when I And they made a $2,000 bike that doesn't even have a, a, a reliable servers or a cache or a hard drive or anything. So, you like...
doesn't make any damn sense. You keep bringing the servers down? It's because I'm mashing the high five button so much every ride. Let's go, Brandon. 1961 is on a roll. Two week streak. That's a high five. Any day of the damn week. We may have our differences politically speaking, but at the same time, I'd like to issue you a congratulations for doing two weeks of rides consecutively. Yes, I ran. Not only did I ride the Peloton today, after the stream yesterday, I rode the Peloton. I had a good ride yesterday afternoon, although then I did a 20 minute uh, yoga class. And the dude says, ne to end the class, we're going to do this move called a supported fish, okay? So he says, put one yoga block on his high setting at the back and one yoga block on his medium setting uh, just in front of it. And then put your shoulder blades on the medium block and your, uh, your head on the high block. And I, I tried to put my shoulder blades on the medium block and the block collapsed. And then like I felt something rip in my right side trapezius muscle. And I said, I'm just going to stay in Shavasana for the next four minutes until the class is over. And then like it, it hurt a lot for like five minutes. And then it didn't hurt. This morning it hurts a little bit, but I think because I kept the pressure off it, it's okay. I'm not doing the supported fish mode anymore, okay? I, I had 351 yesterday, but it was in the afternoon, so I didn't have enough recovery time this morning. This morning, uh, I 334, which is still pretty good. But I gotta tell you, if you're, if you're a Peloton user, any Peloton users in the chat, if you're looking for a, a PB-able ride, Cody Rigsby's 30-minute pop ride from... Tuesday, I think. Almost the entire ride is out of the saddle. Low, low cadence, high resistance. Everybody else, shut up. <laughs> I have an exercise bike from the 80s. I, honestly, I'm just here to tell you, if you own one of those exercise bikes that has no screen, like not even the dots that tell you how hard the hill you're on is, if it's literally just like a, a, a little... I don't even know what you call it, like a gauge that you twist to make the sandpaper grain thicker so that it's harder to push the wheel. If you can do that for 30 minutes for six months, like if you do it four times a week for 30 minutes for six months, you are a fucking monk. They broke the mold when they built you. In the 80s, you didn't have any other options. Now, every workout is jazzed up with a strive score and you get splat points. You can redeem your splat points to get a water bottle in, in six months. If you can just sit there on a, on a manual bike and tilt the gauge and then just like, I don't know, watch something on your iPad for 30 minutes, you should, you're the next Dalai Lama as far as I'm concerned. They also broke the mold when they built your bike. You know what? Good joke. Plus two. I'll plus two you on that one. I have a Schwinn that just tells me the RPM, which is stupid, right? Because if anything, you'd want to know the relative resistance. I can tell the RPM. You just got to count. Uh, nobody asked, by the way, no askers in chat. Hey, Anel, how was your Peloton ride today? Thank you for asking. It was a 381 kilojoules on a 30-minute Sam Yo grunge ride. Three kilojoules off of the PB set pre-food poisoning, which I think officially means I'm back, baby. I thought I, I was going to PB, and I would have PB'd if I pushed hard through the cooldown, but I said to myself, you know what, I'm like really tired. So I, I let that PB get away from me, and I said, you know what, tomorrow. Or maybe not tomorrow, but next week, next time I feel like I'm going to PB, I'm, I'm coming for you again. So I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, with the Drake emoji. That's where Drake stands up and claps. It's possibly the most overused uh, GIF reaction GIF on the GIF keyboard on Twitter. Whenever somebody says anything you agree with, you just pop in and you type Drake, and then he shows up, stands up clapping. Hold is the first frame of that where it looks like he's getting out of his chair, but it doesn't move. It's just a stationary image where it looks, he's like, it's when you think that maybe it's about to pop off, Okay, actually, the triangular ruler is pretty close. Colon, triangular, ruler, hold. That is actually... I know how this looks. You're like, what are you talking about? But if you've ever seen hold, it that's such a good approximation. Your brain kind of fills in the gaps. That's crazy. Isn't Uber Eats the worst? Don't try to stunlock me right off the bat. 
I can't think of anything else except for Uber Eats. Hey, but they had positive like free cash flow in the last quarter as long as you um, don't uh, uh, look at their accounting too closely, <clears throat> which I'm sure um, nobody will. But like maybe that's actually not a joke. I don't know. What the, I don't work for the SEC. What do I know? How about the Peloton? Yeah, sorry I'm late. <clears throat> I don't want to brag, but uh, I was doing a Peloton ride today and T-Pain showed up. So I was going, hi, T-Pain, hi, hi, Teddy, hi, T-Pain. But he was, um, he couldn't hear me because I was just in my house. And he was at the Peloton Studios, um, New York. Is his name Teddy Payne? It's, it's Theodore something, T-Pain real name. T-Pain's real name, nope, okay, his real name is Fahim Rashid Najam. My mistake. <laughs> Better known by his name, T-Pain. But wait, in, uh, in I'm a Flirt, where he did a feature in 2007, I'm not gonna say who the main artist is, I'm just gonna say that his uh, mind was telling him no, but his body was telling him yeah. He says, uh, Teddy Payne was born the flirt. I think then he says, now I'm a pound dad. I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe like a fist bump or something. It stands for Tallahassee Payne. Oh my God, that's incredible. Ever heard him sing without auto-tune? Yes, I, I go to one of my go-to videos, t Payne Tiny Desk Concert for sure. It's very good. A lot of the Tiny Desk concerts are very good, but the, the T-Pain one is the most striking because it actually, at least for me, because uh, I had zero interest in his music in advance of it. I think this speaks for a lot of people. I had almost, I, I almost, I would say I looked down upon T-Pain's music, and then I realized that I was the fool once I heard how talented he actually was, and now I'm unironically, if, if you'll allow me to say it, I'm unironically bumping... Tallahassee pain in the whip. Singing like, I ain't even know it, even know it, even know it, even know it until she called me to the stage and then, and you know what I'm talking about? Also, yeah, he seems super affable and nice. I don't want to brag, but he, uh, he debuted a song during Camille Ramon's 30-minute all-for-one T-Pain ride today, so I'm probably one of the first, um... I don't know, a few thousand people to hear this T-Pain song. I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's about having uh, money and spending it. In the club. Mostly. Maybe completely. But still. Sounds like the perfect song for a Peloton owner. I'm going to be honest. The energy was like really... I've never taken a, a ride with Camille Ramon before, but T-Pain was like rapping this song while I was riding my bike, and I was like, this is a little weird. And then she just kept like, she was singing like interstitials in between the chorus, like some kind of cycling Gary V or something like that. I was like, this is a weird energy, man. Like, I feel like I'm on, I'm on an episode of the rehearsal or something right now, and I'm, I'm the one being filmed, but... Yeah, she was going, hey, hey, that's just tips. That's just tips, and she wasn't even biking, man. She and more than she wasn't just not biking. She wasn't even calling out uh, like cadence or resistance. So I don't know what the hell I was doing. I was just, I was just for ten minutes. I was just like, I don't know, uh, fifty-five resistance, eighty to ninety cadence. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. I I started uh, using my phone's built-in fitness app. What do you think it's spat out for here's how many steps you should take a day? 10,000? Okay, it did not spit out 10,000. It spat out 6,000? And even that, I'm like, look, according to Pokemon Go, I took 50-something thousand steps last week, okay? 6,000 a day, average, is not so bad. But like on Monday to Friday, come on. How are you, how you getting 6,000 on a Monday to Friday? Work in a warehouse? Okay, I, honestly, I feel like your step limit should probably be considered a little higher then. Don't have a desk job? Okay. That notwithstanding, because, like, that's not going to happen. 
Hey, what, what made you decide to go work at the Amazon Fulfillment Center? Oh, I was just trying to get my steps in. Live in a walkable city? I mean, I live in a walkable city. I'm just like... Monday to Friday? How do you find the time to get a 60-minute walk-in? I'm taking, like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm out, like, four or five hours. That's no problem. But, like, Monday to Friday? I think it should be a weekly step goal. That's what I'm saying. Plus, and the other thing is, I didn't realize that as soon as I um, started using this app, it was going to start insulting me every day. I woke up, went to the bathroom, looked at my phone, and I had a push notification that said, you have 15 of 6,000 steps today. I just woke up. Can you just chill out for a damn second? The other thing is, I, not only am I being insulted by the step counter, and it's giving me a goal that's going to be very difficult to reach Monday through Friday, that we'll make up for it Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I finished my Peloton ride today, and uh, my Peloton said 450 calories burned. I was like, I was sweaty. That seemed about right. I popped it into my Samsung app. It said 280 calories burned. And then I said, excuse me, um, I'd like to edit the amount of calories burned. I find that's one of the easiest ways to burn more calories is to just edit the amount of calories that your workout said that you did. And it said no. 30 minutes of, of stationary biking, that's 287 calories. I was like, what the hell? You don't burn 450 on a bike in 30 minutes? You haven't seen what I'm doing in these rides, okay? You haven't seen me out of the saddle. 65 cadence. 70 resistance while well, gravel pit by the Wu-Tang Clan is on, alright? You haven't seen it. If you haven't if you haven't taken the Wu-Tang ride, you don't know, man. Or when Alanis is pumping, you think I'm not getting my heart rate up when, when head over feet is on? What was your output? Okay, but you can't judge me, okay? Here's the thing. It didn't have a lot of out-of-the-saddle climbs. It was a lot of, like, flat road, steady state, low aerobic exercise, so my output was a little bit lower today, okay? I think, I think it was like 330, 330 kilojoules, 330 watts, through whatever one, I can't remember, it's kilojoules, 330 kilojoules. Can somebody run the calorie calculation? I'm about 80 kilograms, 330 kilojoules divided by that, Tim, I think that might be 5,000 calories. That's sick. I mean, that's a long bike ride. That's a lot of exercise to only lose like a pound and a half. <laughs> hey, NL, how was your Peloton ride? Pretty good. Uh, I did a, a 30 minute Sam Yo Muse ride, 357 output in 30 minutes. I, I feel like if you were a Muse fan, you could have PB'd, but I don't know what any of the songs are, except the one that's like, I'll never let you go as long as I promise not to fade. That's the only one I know. And then Knights of Sidonia when he goes, that's the only other one I know. I only know those two songs. But I feel like you could, you could PB it. If you are a, uh, if, if you're a Muse head. See, it had like much better programming than the Alanis ride, but I was, I was on like a spiritual vibe when she was like, you know, I recommend getting your heart trampled on to anyone who feel free. You know, she does that. So that, even though there was worse programming in that ride, I had a little bit, I mean, my, my adrenaline was pumping for sure. Did you get a good night's sleep? It was pretty good. Can't can't really complain. Had a good Peloton ride too. 30 minute Alanis ride, uh, I ran it back. Last 30 minute Alanis ride, 346 kilojoules. This 30 minute Alanis ride was like 361 or 363. It's a pretty good, for, for a, 10 days later, that's a pretty good um, improvement, honestly. All the blood's in the damn calves. It's true. What'd you have for breakfast? Turkey sandwich? Had a turkey sandwich? I am indeed. I'm riding the, the Peloton before breakfast. Because I, I don't know if, if this is a normal thing. I'm, I'm not saying DAE, by the way. Does anybody else? Because I know they do. But as a kid, when I played like, you know, rec basketball and stuff like that, I would rec basketball would start at like six. 
I would eat dinner at 5.30, and then the whole time you're running through the, you're running down the court. I was getting like stitches in my side. I was getting stomach cramps. So I think I, I cramp easily. And then when I was a, was more of a runner, you know, like seven, eight years ago, I would always get stitches in my side when I ran. Um, and I learned like you can help by like having a consistent footfall. Like I would, I would inhale on like a, a left foot strike and always exhale on a right foot strike and it, it did seem to help, but um, I find that if possible, I like to work out in the morning, at least for cardiovascular exercise, because then I don't get sides, side stitches. But any kind of like fullness in my stomach will lead to a side stitch for me if I'm, uh, if I'm working out. Hey, Anel, hope your day is going well. Honestly, at a good Peloton ride today, I couldn't find any classes I wanted to take, so I did it. I debased myself and took a 30 minute Green Day lane break ride. Cause at least it had a couple old Green Day songs in it. It did have some, some modern ones as well, but it was okay. Then I had a beautiful turkey sandwich for breakfast, of course. Breakfast of champions. How was the Peloton this morning? Um, I guess all of the um, good instructors get Labor Day off. So they've only got a skeleton crew making classes over the long weekend. So I did an instructor list 15 minute T-Pain ride and an instructor list 15 minute Beach Boys ride. Now I got the, all the T-Pain songs stuck in my head. We in the club like, ooh, ooh, ooh. You know what I'm talking? Anyway, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. How's the Peloton, Ben? Thank you for asking, paid actor. I, uh, I was saying at the start of the stream today, I was stoked because I set a new personal best for the first time since the 24th of May, which for me marks the symbolic end of the, um, of the food poisoning arc. Because I've, I've recovered past the fitness level that was destroyed when I had simultaneous salmonella and campylobacter infection. Go ahead, spam it. I almost died. I almost died. But I did, though, is the thing. But anyway, I'm alive now. I'm like that guy right there. How much do you think Biden cranks out on the Peloton? I'm going to be honest with you, Jack. I think Biden... He runs like um, he, he does low impact rides, so I don't want to be the guy who reigns on his parade by being like I bet his output. You know, we're probably talking like 30 minute low impact ride. I'm thinking 110 watts, maybe like you should ride it however you want. If you want to go and you want to, you know, just be casual with it and just say, you know what? I'm having fun in the Dennis more than 30 minute fresh Friday ride, then more power to you. If you want to do what I do and go join the um, prenatal cycling classes, crank up the resistance to 80 and just fucking cruise past people on the leaderboard. Hey man, you spent 2,500 bucks on the bike plus 60 bucks a month for the subscription. Get the dopamine however you can. That's called playing the matchup. Absolutely true. It's 60 bucks a month and they're bankrupt. I know, it doesn't make any sense. I know, it doesn't, it, it, it's, it's unfathomable. They employ 50 spinning instructors and put out eight classes a week and they're losing money. And, they, and not only are they losing money, they're, they're hemorrhaging. They're trying to hold it. They're trying to cover the wound because the clotting factor is not working. Hold on, hold on, where was this? CEO walked in on Kendall's class last night was looking for studio bikes for eBay. Wait, what? <laughs> that can't be true. He, he, he didn't he knock on the door. Hey, is anybody in here? We need to generate some quick capital. Can we put some of these on Facebook Marketplace real quick? I don't think so. I don't buy it, but it sounds plausible. I don't buy it, but wouldn't it be something? Imagine, as they say. I do want to say, you you know, uh, hashtag ad or whatever. Peloton is overly expensive for what you get, but also it has changed my life. I would rather throw my computer out the window than my Peloton. Because I know that I could get another computer faster than I could get the new outsourced third-party delivery of the Peloton. It would probably take like three weeks to show up and it'd be missing like 10 bolts or something like that. 
it would really screw up my daily routine. But it is too expensive. I feel bad because Corey asked me, should I get a Peloton? And I said, you can replicate the Peloton experience for cheaper, but for an all-in-one solution, if you're willing to pay for it, then I think it's pretty good. He bought one. He has six lifetime rides. He bought it in May. It's like 110 days have passed. Every day. Because I only have like three Peloton friends. Every day I check. Has Dan taken a ride? No. He does Nike Plus runs now. Has Corey taken a ride? No. Has my dad taken a ride? Yeah, like four out of seven days. So I'm still, I'm, I'm passing him high fives. Then my dad, he texts me like once a week and he says, great job on the spin classes. And I type back, haha, thank you. Certain well, the, the issue right now is How like... How is the Peloton today? Oh, thank you for asking. I don't think we're to automate much in this. Three, so small. Three, six, it's like day 15, we can franchise it though and then try 360, 30-minute Dennis more than 90s yeah. rock ride. It might actually be better in a bit. I've started to, to try to take 45-minute rides on the weekend to maybe up my endurance a little bit, help out the output in the 30-minute rides and two... Two good 45-minute rides this I weekend. Believe. I <laughs> believe in the team. Oh, you're a little mind-flooded? This I is what it's like to be a streamer, fun. honestly. So, like, this is this just feels normal. Ryan's muted. I don't know if you know you're muted, Ryan. Oh, my bad. I was talking a lot. Oh, uh, that's okay. Um, I think I'm ready, Anything though. important? No, I was uh, talking about the Peloton. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> or you're Am always I muted? have salad ready to go. Am I muted? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, it was a pretty good Peloton ride today. I can't really complain. You How many calories is that? I have no idea because the... Should we just buy this conveyor The island? bike uh, estimates it at like 490, need, but then I told people to, that it was 490, and right? they were like, that's oh. ridiculous. It can't no possibly really be. Having a blue conveyor. And then like the yeah, it's just to Samsung like Health oh, yeah, we need the grabber. says yeah, that 30 minutes of stationary cycling is like 250. I think like for to like, it's not... like the This, I'm sweating like a damn dog. Do dogs? Yeah. I thought um, dogs literally don't sweat. Well, now then that I think about maybe it. just one reroll since we got so many things. They pants, we might get like a cat anyway. or something. <laughs> yeah, I can do. Okay. We don't have like that much money, but you I'll get the idea. The if a dog could sweat, I would be sweating right. like that dog sweats. Looking good today, King. Oh, thank you. I originally I woke up kind of late today. I wasn't sure if I'd have time for a Peloton ride. Then I said, you know what? What if I just sent it? Then I just sent it. Didn't have the best ride of my life, but but did complete a ride in time. That's all you can ask for. <laughs> oh, good work. Okay, run, run, run. Okay. Thoughts on riding a real bike instead of a Peloton? Hey, thoughts on um, respecting stop signs? instead of expecting other vehicles to respect them, but you just get to go through them because my, my vehicle's powered by my legs. I can't come to a full stop because then I have to use a bunch of effort. I have to use three kilocalories to, to push my vehicle to get started again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have to ride on the sidewalk. I have to make myself a danger to, to the pedestrians because otherwise the cars would be dangerous to me. Thoughts on that? You sussy baka. Josh just gave me a plus four. And he lives in the purplest state in the union, which means his opinion represents the opinions of the entire country. I'm not, look, people are saying, oh, you're so pro car. No, I'm just stop. Be, why gatekeep exercise? Get a life. Like they didn't say, you know, instead of riding your Peloton, why don't you like, you know, ride a car? They said, instead of riding your Peloton, why don't you ride a real bike? Well, I don't know. You know, I like being able to ride it inside. I like being able to ride it at 7 a.m. and not get hit by a car or have to worry about pedestrians. I like to be able to um, push to my limit on this rather than uh, hook up the damn Strava and try to get the, the top strive score on a public road where people are mostly just trying to get to work or like not get clipped by an Uber Eats driver on an electric scooter while they walk to the office. I don't know, maybe because I can work out in like $20 shorts and a, a, a workout t-shirt instead of putting on Lance Armstrong's USPS skin tight gear. Maybe because I don't have to wear a helmet, especially a helmet that looks like that looks like this. I'm not that mad about cyclists. I got nothing, no problem with the cyclists. Occasionally the road cyclists I do get a little annoyed with. But that's mostly because I... Like, listen, okay, 
I come to a stop sign in my car. If another car is coming to the stop sign, this is literally, this is 99% of driver cyclist rage, okay? I, if I'm at the stop sign first and a car is coming, I can look at their wheels and know whether they're going to stop. So then I, 95% of the time, they stop and I get to take my turn or I get to proceed through the intersection. With a cyclist, it's actually like 60-40, whether they're going to stop or whether they're going to keep going. And I don't mind letting them go. It's just that I wish that there was at least more predictability. Right now, the predictability is if like a normie with a messenger bag and a button-up shirt is riding their bike, then I know they're going to stop at a stop sign because they respect order. And if somebody that's dressed in full road cyclist gear with a bike that weighs two grams is coming up to a stop sign, I know they're not going to stop because they think they're more important than me. So that's, it, it just makes it a little bit more complicated on the road. It makes it more unpredictable. And the more unpredictable it is, the more dangerous it is. And then when if you ever say like, oh, sometimes the cyclists are annoying, they go, well, at least my bike uh, only breaks pedestrians' arms when I go on the sidewalk instead of me getting killed by a, a GMC Suburban. And I'm like, that's true, but why don't you just respect the order of the road? And then everybody would have the best chance possible to get where they're going in the safest way. Anyway, sorry. I, I'm proceeding. <laughs> I just, I, as, I mean, I don't know, you probably wouldn't count me as a cyclist because apparently my bike has a flywheel instead of two tires. It's only real biking if during the winter you take your bike and then you put it on like a roller and then hook up an aftermarketwish.com power meter to it, okay? Regardless, I don't think it's fair that cyclists get to do whatever they want and then they get to pull the, yeah, but my vehicle doesn't kill people card. Yeah, but like, it's just, you can still be an asshole when you're walking too. You're not going to collide with someone and probably cause like a lethal collision because you're looking at your phone and zigzagging. But you should respect that you should maintain like a consistent through line and try to make space for people and not block entrances and exits to buildings and, and so on and so forth. B plus, like, don't take this the wrong way. Everybody here except Skylar who is actually here. Sorry, I had to do the ad. I crush you in wattage. I'm just saying, okay? Maybe you crush me in, in endurance. It's possible. I'm th I think I'm beating you in wattage. Because the time that you're zipping up and, and sucking the gut in to get into the Lycra, I'm already halfway through my warm-up, okay? I'm at 343 watts for 25 minutes. Okay, you would beat me. That's a lot. But I, wanna, I want you to recalibrate your bike. Okay, yo, A. Aaron, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. By the way, somehow we won that one. Stationary bikes are the worst part of biking without any of the enjoyment. Well, I enjoy it, and I'm the one with the bike, so shut up. Wait, wait why are you... People will be like, it's fucked up how divided we are as a society. By the way, I have extreme opinions about stationary biking. Get a life. <laughs> what an insane take. <laughs> Did, did Dennis Miller, as a federal judge, sentence you to ride a stationary bike? Well, then, okay, then why, why do you care? Don't buy one, don't ride one. Chill out. Oh, I just think, I don't think cosmic brownies should exist. Are you forced to eat them? Just let other people, some people just want 400 calories of fructose when they go to a gas station, okay? It's not, it's not going to affect your life, just relax. We're not, this is, one of the things that's so annoying about the internet right now is we, we went from like people having extreme opinions on important things to now people have extreme opinions on everything. It's madness. People are like, oh, I crack open a can of sparkling water. The sparkling water industry is a scourge. Oh, I'm just enjoying a little fizzy, uh, fizzy drink. Doesn't have to, it's lit. The cans are like 63 cents each at the grocery store. It's not that big of a deal. Like, sure, you know, pollution and climate change, and corporate governance and politics and stuff. Like, I understand the, the extreme opinions on that. But so you'll just be eating a sandwich. People will be like, bread's not good for you. And you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to, you don't get to have any of my bread anyway. The bread's for me. You don't have to worry about it. Just get a life. <laughs> Sorry. And then this is, this is the, the echo to the annoyance. Yeah. <clears throat> Fuck society for challenging preconceived, outdated worldviews and takes. Stationary bikes? 
This thing right here? What did it ever do to you? Did a stationary bike clip you on the sidewalk and make you drop your ice cap? I don't think so. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays in my office the whole time. I've been criticized for something. I guess I'll never do anything ever again. Real mature. Not, not juvenile in the slightest. My parents were killed by a stationary bike drive-by. It sounds like they were robbing my house. Because this thing... First off, it's not a drive-by. They were probably walking by and then just happened to be victims. But this thing's not going anywhere. So they were in my vicinity. There was a standby. <laughs> oh, come on. It was probably a climb-by. 50 to 60 cadence, 60 plus resistance out of the saddle where Gloria Estefan's um, conga plays. Sorry, I had to think of a Gloria Estefan song. By the way, you're absolutely right. I do need to correct myself. There's a little spoiler for the Sex in the City reboot here. I know a lot of people have been waiting until the whole series finishes in order to um, catch up on what happened to Carrie Bradshaw and her, her motley crew. So you've been warned. A stationary bike, specifically this stationary bike, did kill Mr. Big. It did kill Chris Noth on the, on the first episode of the Sex in the City reboot. So... And you know what? I stayed away from it. I boycotted it for 48 hours as a result of that. I was so upset. But then I hopped back on because, I mean, come on. There's a, a new Kendall metal ride. I can't. I don't know how to quit you. What's the difference between a Peloton and a normal stationary bike? What's the difference between um, your question and a question nobody asked? Nothing. <laughs> somebody just asked it though yeah but somebody else I guess if somebody asks a question you can't really respond to any askers in the chat because there's a because there is an asker I don't know I, it's, I think you've had your chance the, the honest answer is that the bike itself is, I don't know, I'm going to assume nothing special, but the content programming is special. The reason I respond snarkily is because it's like, honestly, none of your business, <laughs> I guess. is the Maybe that's not a, a nice answer. But like every time you're like, I had good exercise today, people are like, oh, really? I'm here to criticize that you could have exercised in a more efficient manner. And I'm like, okay, well, how was your ride today? Oh, you're, you were sitting down watching me play You Suck at Parking and typing PogChamp in the chat? I mean, you're exercising your dopamine receptors, don't get me wrong. You're exercising your Pog muscles. Minus two, I'm just a sane guy trying to understand. Your luck, unexpected loading error when I went to your profile. I was about to see how sane you are. I was about to see how many comments you had about Jerome Powell raising the interest rate by 100 basis points at the next FOMC meeting. Go back to bullying cyclists in chat. Excuse me, it wasn't bullying. They came into my chat and said, why don't you give me your lunch money? And I said, because I could pick you up over my head and place you in a garbage bin. And then they said, oh, the, uh, bullying, bullying. That's rude. They, they stepped to me with rudeness in the first place. What do you think about the Peloton rower? I think the company is not good. Like, I love the product, Bat Chest. The company is in a world of hurt. I don't think, uh, if the rumors of it being like 3,500 American dollars are true, it's going nowhere, man. It, like, that's just far too expensive. Because can't you get like a Concept 2 for like a, a 900 bucks or something like that? Ryan, I'm sorry about the bike comment. All is forgiven. Have I used too many audits? Have I used my audit pass? Because every time I click to open a user's profile, it now says, sorry, there was an error. I wasn't asking you. I meant on like a technical level. I think I, I need to pay for Twitch Platinum so I can get the... I can get unlimited audits monthly. I'm just... I'm trying to bring people together, you know? That's, the, that, that's why it was so disappointing for me, I guess. What do you mean a real bike? What, what makes something a real bike? That it actually moves? That it weighs less than a sheet of paper? That you can't uh, leave it in your storage locker because it represents 80% of your net worth? If someone broke into your building and stole it, 
you know, you, you would have to get a second job. Is that what makes something a real bike? I, you know what? Can we just bring everybody together and say that Peloton's a bike, a Schwinn is a bike, a Zwift is a bike, Lance Armstrong rides a bike, and we can all just hate on unicyclists instead? Who we not look, I'm sure it's great exercise, but I, whenever I see a unicyclist out in vivo, I'm like, here's that attention you ordered. Oh, he's some 65-year-old guy with a waxed mustache that's juggling as he rides along Beach Avenue. He's, you know he's soaking up the attention. Shit drives me crazy. Also, his wattage is probably crazy. Too far, too far. Okay, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'd like to apologize. Also, I can't hate on cyclists as long as motorcycles are still somehow legal. Stale joke? What do you mean it's not a joke? They haven't outlawed them, so I'm still beating the damn drum. They don't have to outlaw motorcycles, okay? That's probably too far. But I do wish they would outlaw them after the sun goes down. This shit is so loud. Go ahead, type it. Go ahead, type it, type it. Type loud pipes save lives. I don't know what it is about motorcycles that... Maybe they're like, they're anti-solar powered. Are they powered by the moon? Can you only drive them when the sun is down? Are they allergic to vitamin D? That's still the sun? Okay, well, you know what? Then, you know, it, it, you just keep your comments in your pocket. I suppose that's true, though. I think I saw you yelling at a cyclist at, the, at Chinatown in Portland. I don't yell in my car. I give people the finger, okay? But I don't even give people the finger anymore because I had that... There was a great... Oh, sorry, casino. Sorry, sorry. I know my role. I know my role. There was a great cosmic loop. It was like um, Paul Haggis' 2004 uh, embarrassing best picture winner crash. There was like, I did, someone did something bad to me. I did something bad to them. I had something bad happen to me. And then the person who did the bad thing to me had something bad happen to them. And I witnessed it. And thus the loop was closed. I've told you, I've told you this story before, but I was giving people the finger when I was driving almost exclusively when I have to turn left and I get the yellow light and then five cars cheat on the red so then I have to turn left on a red okay so I was giving people the finger one time I had the exact same situation happen I had to turn left through the red because a bunch of people ran the yellow going straight and then a cyclist went and then gave me like a he went like this and gave me a middle finger straight through the, the damn windshield. Even though, I do want to say, there was a no point. He, like, he chose to get involved in the conflict. It wasn't like we were about to crash into each other. We were very distant. But anyway. And I said, oh, is that how it feels when you get the finger? I had a moment of self-awareness. I said, that didn't feel good. Even if I, I didn't really deserve it. Um... But then, the, so I was like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Then literally the next day, and I, this sounds very fortuitous, but you can go back to a month ago where I told this story at, right after it happened. I saw a cyclist run a stop sign and a police car was like trying, they, they were going to the stop sign. They rolled down their window and shouted, pay attention to the stop sign. And I was, the whole, it, it, it really was a beautiful bit of like resonance. We had like the, Everybody, and I'm sure that later that day, that cop got yelled at, probably also by a cyclist. But anyway, I just came back. He's still stun locked. I'm not, we didn't, we're not still stun locked. We didn't talk about it for 45 minutes. And then I had a great opportunity to bring it back and, and make everybody happy. And then you showed up and went, he's still talking about this? Now I'm stun locked talking about you, idiot. <laughs> It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're, we're all part of the same Sisyphusian mountain, okay? I'm Sisyphus. You're the damn rock. Every day it gets heavier trying to push you up the Pog Mountain. Oh, I don't, I, I, I don't want to Pog. I don't want to Pog. Too bad. I'm Pogging you. I'm Pogging you. And the next day we start all over again at, in Resident Sleeper Valley. Only the rock's gotten even heavier. But you know what? That's okay, because I've gotten even stronger. Did you put something in your coffee today? I'm just like, I'm, these pogs are natural, brother. 
I don't even drink pre-workout. If Arnold Schwarzenegger didn't need pre-workout to win seven Mr. Olympias, then I don't need pre-workout. All I do is take a lot of steroids. <laughs> that's pretty much it. I find that's everything. Anabolic steroids, I think, is all you need if you want to become like a world champion bodybuilder or the world's strongest man. Or like a Hollywood action star, especially post-40. I'm feasting while there's feasts to be had. Because I know it's not realistic to, to win two games of a battle royale in two hours every time we play. So I'm enjoying it while it lasts. This will be the last one either way, though, I think. Because, like, at 2 p.m., I got a date with Sam Yo for a 45-minute... 90s rock ride that's probably gonna have the same it's gonna have fucking everlong by the foo fighters it's gonna have give it away by the red hot chili peppers i got lucky in a 90s ride recently somebody uh, that dennis morden put in uh possum kingdom by the toadies which i think is a is a song that i have not heard on any uh on any of the peloton rides up to this point get off the sam yo train he fell off he did not fall off, okay? I just, I don't know. Holy shit, I'm getting my ass kicked. <laughs> I'm getting blown away. I don't know what to do. Anyway, that's bad for my confidence. I'm just saying, uh, I don't understand why Peloton employs 60 instructors. And then when I log on, there's been four classes uploaded in the last 24 hours. I know this sounds like an insane boomer take, and, and maybe it is. Maybe I've got to embrace that. But like, if you're as, is, is it so much to ask that maybe Peloton has every instructor do five rides a week? Like one 30 minute ride Monday to Friday? Like, that would be awful. What do you do but bike? It's a half hour. I'm sure they got more, they got prep work. They got to make the playlist for the class. Maybe they got to like clear the rights to the music or something like that. But surely at this point, they just got a library they can pull from. Like you, me booting up the app and there's like three German rides. I'm like, really? A one 15 minute motivational you can do it ride. Eh, they don't remember. I have reached the, I mean, I guess this is like, it's a flex and the self-deprecating comment at the same time. I've reached the point in my Peloton rides where at the end of it, I don't just feel like my legs and my lungs are tired. Like I actually feel like I've stolen some energy from my brain. Like I, I rode last night or yesterday afternoon and at, I was legally brain dead for like two hours. I, try, I tried to record a, a Super Auto Pets video like 15 minutes afterwards. Uh, got two minutes in and realized my microphone and uh, game sound were both deafened. So I said, okay, I stopped the recording, started a new one, played for 10 minutes, got a 10 piece win that I was so happy with, then looked over, OBS wasn't even recording. I had like double tapped, <laughs> I double tapped start recording or something like that. And, uh, and then I just closed OBS and I went, you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna do some like brainless work instead. It's not, it's not for today. It's, it's not, not today. I, I went and I renewed my car insurance. Oh, dude, it's like the Call of Duty dead chat, dude. Sorry, the best I, paid part. Out the, I paid out the believers by accident. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Pay attention, man. Oh, sorry. Dude, that's... <laughs> oh, this is a riot. They're going to riot right now. What, what are they going to do? That's what Twitch gonna... needs to add a rollback to it, man. No, it has the option that asks if you're sure, man. They should still have a rollback. Just read the damn text. Oh shit, I never did my prediction. Ryan, my Ryan in Apollo's chat. My mods are asking me why I didn't know. You can rear a mod, you can do slash prediction, man. <laughs> it's like two buttons. I'm busy, I'm trying to keep up with this bald weirdo who can't do his own predictions right. I told you, man, I, my, my ride yesterday was so, it took so much of my glucose and my glycogen that my brain is like, is, is dying today. My brain is like, I don't have enough juice. Hey, I used to watch YouTube videos. Now I came into the stream for the first time in a year. The Peloton's paying off. Thank you. I did I, I did used to be uh, fatter. It's definitely true. I describe myself as less fat. And with much stronger legs. Like, the legs are popping. Little balder? Not really. Dude, you used to be so fat looking good now, though. Look, whether or not it's true, you shouldn't say it. On the, who are you, my mom? 
My mom wouldn't even say that. She would just say something like, mm, have you worked out lately? And be like, you know, I already know the answer. And I already know that you know the answer. It is what it is. I'm happy to be here. Kate and I, you know, we're doing, it's like a relay race. We pass the baton. We also, um, you know, we're, we're keeping ourselves healthy. I definitely feel like uh, for the past like two or three days, there's been like something attacking my sinus cavity, but we just keep uh, beating it back. Multivitamins and, and uh, vitamin C supplements of dubious scientific merit. But if they make me, uh, if they make me feel like I'm, not getting sick, then you know what? Then fuck the science. And the Pelotons have been uh, have been good. I know that that's like ultimate copium. But I've had I've had two three seventy kilojoule rides in a row. Those would be like top ten rides all time. Thirty minute output. So I mean, like it's going. It's it, I mean, could could a sick person do this? That's me making the cones of Dunshire. What kind of wattage is that? I don't know. Like two oh six average. Every once in a while, I'm like, man, I should really I do, like, do. dick skin December. I'm doing, I don't know, like, 30 to 45 minutes a day on the Peloton. I'm doing enough exercise. I should just get fucking shredded for, like, one month. But then I'm like, Monday to Thursday, I feel like that. Then Friday comes around, and I'm like, I love eating, like, a lot. So I'm like, man, maybe I'll just be, like, maybe I'll just be this. Dick skin December is, like, well, dick skin is a bodybuilding term for when a bodybuilder gets such a low body fat percentage and like subcutaneous fat level and like is so dehydrated that the skin on their whole body looks like it's made of the skin on their dick. That's why it's, and then there's only one month that starts with D. That's why it's gotta be Dick Skin December, which is not even like, it's not good because that month is like the holidays. It wouldn't like, if anything, like Dick Skin January makes the most sense. I'm telling you, dude, they gotta fucking stop updating games. Can I tell you, I gotta, I'm on a very tight schedule in the morning, okay? I, I boot up the damn Peloton, it's like 7.40. It's taken forever to spin. You know, it's giving me the Android loading. I'm like, oh shit, what is it this time? John Foley, fucking recently ousted his CEO, doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Mm -hmm. And it goes, it goes, oh, sorry, we have to update your bike. You couldn't have done that shit while I was asleep. You're always connected to the internet, sending my damn data to the, I don't even know. The central committee, Dude. and then like, then it's like, fine, we're downloading. But it takes ten minutes to download. So there's a ten minute delay. Then when I finished it, it's like we gotta install. But it's another five minute delay. It's not like they're installing a new wheel or anything like that. And then I, I boot it up, and it's like, oh, because all you you know, we had to flash the cache in order to do the update. None of this saved shit even works. So it takes like five minutes for it to like load all the thumbnails for the rides that I'm never gonna do. Thirty minute. Mela Vedekin indie rock ride in German with no subtitles, not even inter it, it delayed me by like 15, 20 minutes. This, uh, just for nothing, for nothing. Oh, that's fair. There ain't no games out anyway. Bad, yeah, maybe a little rumble for this time, we'll see. Oh, how, was, yeah. how was the Peloton today? Well, it, it fucking sucked because of like all the firmware updates I had to do, which didn't fundamentally change the hardware of the bike. You obviously. already did this bit. Yeah, but then I had I, I went to my when I have to just get in a quick workout. I did my my double stack of um, 15 minute lane break Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month ride featuring Japanese breakfast, Nikki 88 Rising, Mitsuki and Rina Sawayama Samawaya. And then 15 minute lane break, David Bowie hits ride. I missed your Peloton update. Oh yeah, I didn't even, I didn't talk about the Peloton at all today. 30 minute, a two for one Bradley Rose, Sam Yo, Moulin Rouge Broadway ride. I think I had 365 uh, output 30 minutes. I was feeling pretty good about it. It's a fun ride, went by fast. Output was a little, I mean, I, I worked hard. The output was a little lower than maybe for the amount of work that I did, but that's because there was a lot of uh, fast in the saddle work and not a lot of, uh, of heavy out of the saddle climbs. 365 watts. No, I'm not Lance Armstrong. 365 kilojoules produced over, over a 30 minute interval. Excuse me, I'll have you know, I have one more testicle than Lance Armstrong. Hello gamers, I'm here. Sorry I'm late. Been a long uh, 10 days or so. Baby got sick last Sunday. Rode that all last week. 
had her birthday the following Sunday. My wife is sick now. Just trying to keep the just trying to keep the lights on, trying to keep the floors clean, trying to keep the dishes in the drying rack. My my last T cell just just you ever see the movie uh, Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within? There's a guy in the movie, and this be uh, the city's being overrun by weird ghosts. So they're like, uh, there's too many. They know they got to abandon the city. So then there's one guy like his leg gets broken, and they just give him like a grenade, and he's and he's like, I know what to do, and then he just sacrifices. That's my last cell, my last white blood cell in my body fighting back against whatever illness my daughter has been trying to infect me with for the past 10 days. And honestly, I feel I feel pretty good. I had a, a 371 output today on the Peloton, a 30-minute rush ride. It's the the 10th time I've taken the 30-minute rush ride, and it was my, my best performance on it. I'm still feeling solid, man. How was the Peloton ride today? Thank you for asking. It was a 372 kilojoule 30-minute... Dennis Morton um, rock ride. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Especially considering there wasn't a lot of time out of the saddle. It was largely in the saddle speed pushes, which honestly is hard to build up. Uh, for, for me, I'm kind of an out of the saddle Andy when it comes to getting high output. So personally, I'm uh, when I have a ride where like they want your cadence to be like in the 80s for most of it, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm more of a... I'm more of a 70 to 80 guy. That's my natural rhythm. Dennis Morton, your go-to instructor? No, as Kim Kardashian said, nobody wants to work these days. That includes uh, Peloton instructors. It's not possible to have a go-to Peloton instructor because they only do like two rides per week each. So you got to have a rotation. So I'm a, I'm a Dennis, Emma, Cody, Sam sort of guy. The occasional Ben or Bradley. Hey NL, first time viewer came for the Peloton tag. That's it's called advertisement, sweetheart. A lot of streamers are like, oh, I gotta post on TikTok. I gotta post all my shit on TikTok. Nah, man, just throw like, just throw some tags under your stream. Works every time. Work works like a charm. I'm feeling good, honestly. I I people have asked, how was your Peloton ride today? I don't want to brag. It was my whoa, excuse me. Oh, <laughs> uh, what the hell? I'm scared. Um, it was my uh, it was my third best ride ever. It was not a PB, but it and it, it it was not even my second best. But it would have been my second best if I hadn't PB'd two weeks ago. Still pretty good. Oh, oh is is a top three ride out of uh, 300 total rides pretty good? Thank you for your validation. I really appreciate it. Would you eat for breakfast before you took your ride? Um, I don't eat breakfast before I take my ride. Okay. What did I eat before my Peloton ride? For your information, I don't eat anything before my Peloton rides in the morning. Because if I eat anything, my tummy hurts when I am on the bike, okay? If I, even if I have like a granola bar and then wait uh, an hour, eight minutes into the ride, my abdomen is like, Meh. Mm, my tummy, mm, you got a little stitch in your side. I, I resent the corporation of Peloton because I love the service, but just by using the service, you have to become like, uh, part of this, the Peloton street team and explain why the company's like going out of business, even though they sell an overpriced exercise bike with an overpriced monthly subscription. And you gotta be like, you don't understand. I, I don't work for the company. I just enjoy the service that they provide. I also don't understand why when you give them a lot of money, Every three months, they're like, we got to stop losing so much money. I'm like, what do you mean losing? I just gave that to you. Man, it's crazy how much my life has improved since uninstalling Rumbleverse. Had that great Dome Keeper run, playing some Bro Tato, two good Peloton rides. My life is in such a good place. Almost makes you think that you could maybe install like a competitive uh, Battle Royale style game real quick. My friends without kids drinking a McDonald's Sprite. Whoa. Have you? This is... I honest, this might be one of the best sprites I've ever had. How was the Peloton today? I mean, it wasn't spectacular. I did two, I did a 15 minute um, rock riot ride featuring Alanis Morissette, the Black Keys, Blur, and Muse. Then I did a 15 minute 
T-Pain lane break ride. I would say the average wattage was like in the 190s. But I was like, you know what? When I got on the bike today, I said, I'm just going to take it easy. It wasn't a day to hunt a PB. It was a day to just put another uh, another check mark in the ledger in order to, to keep the streak alive. Not to say I didn't, I didn't get a little bit of a sweat going when T-Pain was like... Um, she rockin', she rollin', she's a lord, I'm not going nowhere, girl, I'm staying, fell in love with the stripper. You know what I'm talking about? T-Pain has some, some rude lyrics, and I love it. 200 bitches in the club, ain't none of them hot, ain't none of them hot, except for one pretty thing that was working all the way at the top, all the way at the top. Shorty, what is your name? She gave us drinks to drink. We drunk them, got drunk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Looking good, King. How's the Peloton ride today? It was pretty good. I had a rough night, just like, uh, baby did not sleep too well. I was in her room a couple of times, making sure that, uh, you know, she was okay. So I, I was a little bit unwattaged with it this morning, but still okay. It was, it was literally a 351 30 minute Dennis Morton 90s rock ride. Yeah, I'm a boomer. Get over it. My friend keeps sending me videos of celebrities giving up on working out as advice. What? It, well, what's the... That's Hold on. There's a lot to get out of this. I love this. I love... I don't really know what it's about yet, but I already love it. Is he... Are they doing it to... Um, be like, hey, you could be stronger than this celebrity if you just work out more than they do? Or are they doing it to be like, hey, even famous people quit things sometimes, so quitting things is based. I guess there's no thought process, they just like watching celebrities quit things? Alright, I don't understand, but that's fine. There's a lot of things in this life I don't fully understand. No, he's telling me it's not worth it and it's hard. Well, I think there's actually, and, and don't get me wrong, let me, let me finish my bit here. I think there's something to it. You, you can't be like a 10 out of 10 at everything in your life. You gotta, no, we're not gonna make it. We gotta drop it. You gotta make choices. And I definitely feel like, like when I look back at when I was lifting, there's nothing wrong with lifting. In fact, there's a lot right with it. But I was like, you know, I was maybe 30 years old, maybe 29, I can't remember. Why was, and I'm just a guy. Why was I like, oh, you know what my goal is? Is to be like 230 pounds and lift a, a big misshapen stone in the fjords of Iceland. Like, why, why don't you just like go and do your time, take 60 minutes and work out, set your ambition a little lower. Instead of setting your ambition, like I'm gonna have like a 700 pound squat or something like that. Just have the ambition that's like, I'm gonna fucking do this shit four times a week until the wheels fall off. So I think it's setting that it, if you are like an athlete or a personal trainer or something like that, then I think it makes sense to be like, I want to have like a 6% body fat or something like that. But if you're just like a person, I think comparing the ambition down to a more reasonable level is, is very sensible. Like that's on the Peloton for a while. I was like, oh, uh, it's gonna take, I, dude, uh, my food poisoning screwed up my goals. It's gonna take me so long to get to 400 kilojoule output in third. Who cares? Just be like, you know, I'm riding seven days a week, and on the weekends I'm doing longer rides. Like, the you'll get there in time, or you won't, but you'll still have worked out, which is good. You know, it's good to have goals. Yeah, but like you gotta match the goals to your personality type. Like, if you're the kind of person who's like, you go on like one Peloton ride and you're like, oh, I'm going to become a pro cyclist, then any bump in the road is, I think, more likely to make you give up on it forever. If your goal is instead just to like work out so you live a little bit longer <laughs> or like, you know, your clothes fit more nicely, then uh, I think you're more likely to stay consistent with it. And the last bit, how was today's Peloton ride? It was good. 30 minute. Emma Lovewell, pop ride. You know I'm getting down to the, the wire when I start taking pop rides. I mean, there's times where I gotta, I'm, I'm scrolling through the class list, man. And I'm like, at least, can I get a yacht rock ride or a jam band ride or something like that? Can I, I'll settle for a classic rock ride, even though apparently there's only like eight classic rock bands that they use on Peloton. 
every classic rock ride is like we've got two Def Leppard songs, a Guns N' Roses song, an ACDC song. It just never ends, man. But it was a good ride. I think I, I had 367 output. You like Marquee Moon? Don't even get me started, man. Probably maybe the best rock song in 1977. One of my favorite 10 minute long songs, without a doubt. When you talk about Peloton music, it's almost always garbage. The music is probably, except for the price and the state of the corporation, the music is the worst part of the Peloton. But it is better to ride to their music because the rides are programmed like during the chorus is like when you push and during the verses is when you chill a little bit sometimes. So you might be like, you, you could just put your other, you could put your own music on, but it might be a little non-cohesive, which is fine. So what's good then? Well, the classes are good. The music is just bad. The Like the programming of the of the ride. I mean, if you want to listen to music, don't buy an exercise bike, would be my advice to you, Gen Z. Are there house music rides? Yeah, there's too many. Way too many. And they get way too like delineated with it. 30 minute house ride, 30 minute acid house, 30 minute EDM, 30 minute drum and bass. Why don't you just say it? 30 minute British music. British music to not to listen to after 3 a.m. Seven British songs not to listen to after midnight. You can minus two me. I know you're minus twoing because you hate that you're laughing. You're not minus twoing because you think it's a bad joke. You're like, that was kind of funny and it made me chuckle, but it made me, it revealed something about myself that I don't like. So as a result, I'm minus twoing you. Anyway, that's just to say it was like, it was an adrenaline packed morning. First, it was like not the greatest sleep, followed by thinking that uh, I'd lost monetization on my YouTube channel just to find out that it was a cruel joke from Google that they sent out to like, I don't know, 50% of their partners with no communication to begin with. Then I had a ham sandwich for breakfast, but like the, I, I only had like the, the, sli the bread that I have left was too thick to just be one slice, but too thin to slice into two. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to do, I've got like the scalpel out going, trying to make sure that I could cut the bread in half, but it's like, I've got no purchase on it. There's no anchor. Congrats on the 300. Thank you, thank you. And the other thing, I didn't even want to mention it, but it was a good ride too. I think it was like a 376 kilojoule, 30 minute Sam Yo 90s pop ride. Busting my glutes to some uh, British boy bands like Take That that I've never heard of before in my life outside of Sporkle quizzes. What about Five? Oh, I, I know all about Five. Baby, when the lights go out, every single word cannot express the love and tenderness. I'll show you what it's all about. And then the classic 90s boy band thing where you can't actually say anything sexual, but you can allude to it. Baby, say you will succumb to me. So baby, come to me. When the lights go out, you're like, yo, he said come though? How was the Peloton ride today? Oh, thank you for asking. It was like a 376 kilojoule, 203 watt, average 30 minute Samyo 90s pop ride to live in La Vida Loca. Did anyone ask? One person asked. It's not a lot of people, but one person asked. Do I, I don't know. I don't know how to tell my stats, but I feel like I feel like I did okay. Perceived exertion was was medium there. I'm ready. I'm ready. Check him bike. He's a good cyclist, but this is not normal. And how was the Peloton today? Oh, thank you. I, we had all these things we haven't covered. I had a. It was a, like a 365, 30 minute Bradley Rose. 90s ride? I want to say it was a 90s ride. I believe I listened to Boys and Girls by Blur. That seems like it's from the 90s. The Rhythm of the Night, that's from the 90s. How you doing? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. Had a good morning. Dude, I had an amazing sleep last night. I like, not, not amazing by like my friends without kids uh, standards, but like amazing by my, you know, friends with kids standards. I slept from 10.45 p.m until 7 a.m. on the dot. Now that's some that's some good stuff right there. I was, last night, I was like, oh, it's the, you know, I, I'm on baby bedtime duty, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. So last night was the first time since Friday that I had some like extra free time in the evening. And I said, what am I gonna do with this newfound leisure time? You know what I did? I went to sleep at like 10.45 instead of uh, 11.30 and uh, fell asleep almost right away, woke up at seven, felt well rested for the first time in like two weeks, had a, a, a fantastic Peloton ride, not a PB, not a PB quite, but a, a 381 30 minute Sam Yo Hidden Hills ride, that's 
It's nothing to sneeze at. Let me let me just say that right off the jump. PB is not guaranteed. Your safety is not guaranteed. I've only done this once before. Let me guess, Peloton music wasn't so good today? That's like saying, let me guess, the speed of uh, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. It's never good. There's literally, there's like four Peloton rides out of 303 that I've taken where I've been like, that was a good playlist. Dennis Morton has a 30 minute rush ride. He has a 45 minute uh, Beatles ride. Then there is a Sam Yo 30 minute grunge ride where 70% of the playlist is good. And maybe there's one more. Maybe there's an Emma Lovewell 90 minute ride. And okay, you know what? I will, uh, let's make it five because Ali Love has a 30 minute um, Alanis Morissette ride. That's all from Jagged Little Pill. That's true. There is the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month ride with Japanese breakfast, Mitski. And then the one that goes, how far down does your indigo go? Can I zoom down some samash man and moon? Then who type of you? You know, I don't remember who sings that. Oh, yeah, and Rena. That's true. I forgot. It's a good playlist. And of course, the 15 minute, uh, the 15 minute T-Pain playlist. Fell in love with the stripper. She's rocking, she's rolling, she's bowling. I'm rocking the goo at a boo boo. Theodore Painwell. Mmm, quite, quite. How was the Peloton ride? Oh, thank you, thank you for asking. Finally, it was another good one. I'm kind of, honestly, I'm, I'm getting, um, I'm, I'm spinning up for Dick Skin December. You know, it's still like six weeks away, but you gotta get your head in the right place early. You gotta build a good foundation. Yesterday, 381 kilojoules, 30 minutes. It's an average of like, I don't know, 212 watts or something like that. Today, 386 kilojoules in 30 minutes. Fundamentally, probably almost exactly the same amount of wattage. But, you know, we went a little, went a little deeper with it today. I bet, honestly, the legs have been feeling good. The hills have been heavy. The, the feet have been fast. I'm fe I'm, I still have never broken 400. But I'm, I'm scratching that like 380, 390 every single day. It's just a matter of time, man. Doing hour-long rides yet? I've, I've been doing 45 minute uh, rides on the weekends when I have more time in the morning. I need to do power zone, but honestly, like the thing stopping me from doing power zone is that the FTP test sounds like miserable. I know it's only like 20 minutes, but 20 minutes of like all out, um, like 100% effort sounds miserable. But then after that, you get to do power zone rides, which is you get. It's like you spend twenty minutes, but then you get an extra little bar under your under your output, right? That might be worth it. Unfortunately, then that means once I do it, I have to um, I have to start taking Matt Wilpers rides, and he's very good at teaching form and efficiency, but very bad at forming a cohesive playlist of songs that aren't fucking garbage. No offense, no offense, Matt, if you're watching, no offense, okay? But we can't go. Like, from Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody to uh, Billy Ray Cyrus' Achy Breaky Heart to the, the t uh, Chicken of the Sea jingle Price is Right theme song, Kenny Chesney, uh, Whiskey for My Men, Beer for My Horses. Like, we gotta, can we form a, a, a coherent playlist here? Something that flows naturally? Like, help me. I used to stay on the stair climber until it shut itself off at 99.59. That's probably a safety function, right? I used to uh, live in an apartment where there was an apartment gym. The gym used to have a pool in it. Then when new people bought the building, they plastered over the pool. They put like, you know, plywood on top of the, the pool and then um, like floor joists and stuff. They built like a stable floor on top of the pool. Um, and then they put all of their cardio equipment on top of the pool, okay? It's not a problem. It, like it's, it was seemed safe. Nobody ever fell in or anything like that. Um, but what would happen is like while you were running on the treadmill, I think it would, you, you know, you're creating these vibrations. The vibrations would then go into the, the cavernous pool underneath the floor, multiply by the other vibrations you're sending down there, like rattle off the edges of this of this pool and then like reflect back up through the treadmill. <clears throat> Every once in a while you would just hit like a a resonance and the treadmill would shut off. I don't, I don't think it was due to like electricity, electrical inveterance or something, but just like, uh, it just like hit you with a, a, a concussive blast that would make the treadmill lose all power. Very frustrating. You're, you're finally getting that runner's high and then, cause when, when a treadmill loses power instantly, that's very annoying. 
Because you're like in the middle of the treadmill and then a millisecond later, you know, your torso's colliding with the control panel. Anyway, <clears throat> I've said this before. If you got jacked using an, a stationary bicycle before they had electricity, you, uh, they should study your brain. Medical scientists should study your brain to learn about the science of motivation. Because I, if you were a professional athlete and you were just using one of those fucking, like a, a bike with a sandpaper conveyor belt and then like a little crank on the handle that you were just like, mm, I don't feel like my legs are working hard enough. Yeah, that feels about right. And then, yeah, you don't even have like a TV. You're just looking out the window. Your dad's built different, man. If you trained for, for competitive bicycle races on an analog stationary bicycle in like the 1970s and the 1980s, you'd, you need, they need to study your brain. I lost 120 pounds that way. That's crazy. You should be on every self-help podcast in, on the whole circuit. I wouldn't, I, honestly, I think if, if I found myself in a situation like that, I would be like, I, I would do it one day and then I'd be like, yeah, that wasn't that bad. I'll do it tomorrow. And I would never sit on the saddle ever again. I mean, if I stay in a hotel, I always check out the gym. And then if I, I you know, if the hotel exercise equipment is not the Peloton bikes, if they're Nordic tracks, I'm like, eh, I could just take a week off, I guess. I don't know what to, I, I can't deal with the, the LED pips anymore. I need a crank wheel and a digital display and stuff. Like I have no self-control. My motivation is zero. I need to, I need to stick with the ecosystem that I'm aware of. It's like switching from like an Android to an iPhone. You're like, what the heck is command click? What was that squirt noise? Oh, are you, are you jealous, Daniel? This is my um, Peloton branded water bottle. It has a digitally embossed signature of every single instructor. Let me see. I, I know Dan's favorite instructor. It's hard to tell. I don't read cursive writing that well. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm looking. I'm looking. I, I, I don't know if you can see this one. That's Sam Yo right there. That's Sam Yo. You can tell because it says S-A-M Yo. Um, but I gotta be honest, I'm, I'm having a hard time. Well, you know what? Here's Ben Aldis. I don't know if you've taken any, any EDM rides. There's Ben Aldis right there. Um, I, I'm having a hard time finding Ali Love, and I apologize for that. Oh, oh I don't think that, I don't know. Ali Love is goaded. Hey, a Ali Love, uh, she's got the a 30 minute Alanis Morissette ride that's only from, only songs from Jagged Little Pill. I would definitely, uh, I, I would recommend that one if you've never taken it. Or if you've never taken it twice. If it, with the climb to You Live, You Learn gets me every time. It's chicken soup for the millennial, the bald millennial soul. How was the Peloton ride this morning? Oh, th thank you for asking. Um, I don't want to brag, but check this out. Can I just let me uh, full screen uh, my, let me get a little closer to the camera here. You see, you see this right here? You see this, this vein? You see this vein right here? You know what that means? You know what it means when I've been off the bike for 35 minutes and you still see this kind of scalp vascularity? That means we had a PB. I am very warm. Vein is popping. This is, this is the least vascular it's been this morning. It was a PB. Heart rate check? I gotta say it's a little higher than, than typical. I'm not quite at resting yet. I would say I'm probably at like 90 right now, would be my guess. I did indeed shower. But I don't, it, I, this is like an age thing and a, and a body hair thing and a being a, a sweaty man just from an endro, endocrinological standpoint. I, the shower didn't take. That's exactly, the, it's the perfect way to describe it. I get off the bike. I just cool down for like five minutes. I jump in the shower. I scrub down. I put on a new shirt. And then within a, like 10 minutes, I have like a ring right around my stomach where it's just, it's wet and the shirt is like sticking to my belly button, but it is what it is. It's still, I, it's clean, I promise. It's all clean. Anyway, it was a good ride. I, you don't even have to ask, by the way, what, if, if you had to guess, what kind of 30 minute ride led me to, to the spiritual nourishment that allowed me to find deep within myself the means to PB? What do you think it was? What do you, it was not a 30 minute acid house ride. Loch Ness Monster's brother got it first try. It was a return to the 30 minute Alley Love, Alanis Morissette all for one ride. Insanely highly recommended. Starts with all I really want. You live, you learn. One hand in my pocket. 
You know, it's it's got all the classics. So yesterday I PB'd 402 kilojoules in 30 minutes, an average of 223 watts. Today I said, you know what? I PB'd yesterday. I'm gonna take it easy today. Mentally, I set a bur I, I set a, a threshold for myself. I said, if I get 360. I'd be happy. That's like a, ooh, a triangles with trees maybe early. That's a good opportunity for like some, it's a decent ride, but you're not pushing yourself to like the the maximum possible. You know what? 30 minute Cody Rigsby uh, pop ride. Took it easy during the warm up. Still ended up with a 397 kilojoules, an average of, I think, 221 watts. It would have been my best ride ever if I hadn't had my best ride ever yesterday. It's been a, it's been a bit of a crazy week on the, on the stationary bike. It's the just got robbed adrenaline. So true. So true. What was the rank? Nobody asked it, but I wanted to brag. The rank was 1300 and something out of 73,000. That is, and that's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. Yeah, there's no like Overwatch style ranks, unfortunately. It would be nice though. It's kind of, I don't want to say it was cheating, but like um, the Cody Rigsby ride, like, I mean, the whole thing was, um, it was out of the saddle, low cadence, high resistance pushes. The dude's calling like 55 to 65 cadence out of the saddle up to 80 resistance. I mean, no wonder those numbers were were crunching up there, man NL does your wife use the peloton not at all She simply bought it for me. I am the peloton wife. That's my secret captain. I am the peloton wife Can I tell you it's nice to get confirmation of what I said uh, like a while ago What I said a while ago was like everyone was getting mad about the peloton ad where this is before I even had one, where the husband buys his wife a Peloton. Everyone was like, worst husband of all time. I said, honestly, I can understand why you would say that, because like, if you have the, if you take the worst faith possible interpretation of it, you're basically saying, hey, happy birthday, honey, you're out of shape, okay? But I, if someone's like, interested in starting to build healthy habits, and your partner buys you a, a sick piece of exercise equipment, that's love, man. But instead, people, this is ridiculous. I can't believe the corporate messaging that would possibly happen. And look at her. Now that she's got the Peloton, she's got to wake up at 6 a.m. in order to do the bike rides. And I'm like, yeah, and she's freaking, look at her. She looks amazing. She's happy. I mean, she's a paid actress, but like, she's smiling. She's like, I'm glad we got this because, I mean, it's a paid ad. I'm just saying, like, what's what's wrong with it? I don't, I don't see what the problem is. That's the single person brain. My friends without wives be like, this ad is ridiculous. But I just like, e even, you know, before I had one, I was like, listen, you can make fun of the company for a lot of things. Like it is a $2,000 exercise bike. But like making fun of like, oh, like their Peloton wife is definitely going to divorce her husband for that gift. It's a great gift. I don't know what... Sorry for giving you a gift that's like, um, hey, I want you to be like happy and healthy and like, you know, live for a long time and have like a high quality of life. It always struck me as a, as a bit of a disingenuous take, I guess. And as someone who, you know, that's kind of like my bread and butter, I was like, takes one to no one, man. Like when Kay got me a Peloton, I, was there the subtext that was like, hey, you know, husband, you're getting a little out of shape? Yeah, I got eyes. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Thank you so much for this gift. This will make it a lot more convenient for me to try to get in shape. And you know, as a result of that, we built uh, we built better habits. And uh, and here we stand before you, a, 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 ha a happier, healthier man as a result. Please stop with the drill birth stuff. <laughs> Please, I'm I'm asking. I'm begging. I'm requesting. I think we have to go... <laughs> I think we have to go condenser and rush uh, auto overcharge. The auto overcharge... That's some granola throat. Condenser, overcharge, auto overcharge, better gadget ability during overcharge, I think is the ticket, man. I think it's gotta be... Overcharge? Where's auto overcharge? T 
10 and 5? That shouldn't even take that long to get to. No, like, I definitely think, like, I would say, like, if it's your wife's birthday and you, you Homer Simpson it, if you get her, like, a... If you get her a, a vacuum cleaner or a bowling ball, like, I think that's a terrible idea. But a piece of workout equipment is not the same. Like, a vacuum is, like, a duty that she... You're, you're suggesting that she has to do, like, to clean the house. I think suggesting that um, the only reason that your wife should have good physical fitness is to satisfy the male gaze. That implication is more troubling than uh, the the implication that you're a bad husband for purchasing her an exercise bike. I think, why, why are you taking away Peloton wife's uh, autonomy like that? Seems a little, I'm just going to say it. And if, if this is a problem for people, then they can tell me. But I'm just, it seems a little sus to me. How was your Peloton ride this morning? Uh, it, it was equivalent to yesterday. It was uh, zero. It was, it was roughly zero on the, um, on the output. Impressive. I'm not worried about the streak. I don't like work for the Peloton. The Peloton works for me, okay? But I care. Well, then you gotta like figure out why. Because that's fucking weird. <laughs> I care. I'm the, only, I'm the only person who really cares. Actually, my dad texts me like once a month and says, great job on the Peloton. Even my wife doesn't care that much. My dad texts me. My dad says, great job on your spin rides. Dad, they're not spin classes. They're indoor cycling training sessions. Don't insult me. Are you biking, son? Dude, being sick is so fun. You can literally say whatever you want and not be criticized. Me tomorrow. I'd like to apologize for my statements on stream yesterday. I understand that having the common cold doesn't excuse some of the fucked up shit that I said. I'd like to apologize to my sponsors and <laughs> my family. <laughs> I'd like to apologize for the messed up things I said to the chatter who said pre-toast bread was the dumbest idea they've ever heard of. Even though we disagree on uh, business ideas, that was no reason to resort to personal attacks. It was unbecoming of a streamer in my position. I'd like to say I'm sorry. That's not the kind of man that I am. Peloton will never drop me. Dude, if they if Peloton decided I was a brand risk and then they uh, like put an iron, what do they call it? It's not an iron lung when they put it on your car. An, an iron boot? If they, if they booted my damn Peloton, I'd be like, no! I mean, it never could go anywhere to begin with, but at least the the flywheel could spin. Dude, that's, yeah, if they ever want to, like, uh, get someone to cancel their Peloton subscription, just start giving them shoutouts. But, like, negative shoutouts? Can you imagine if you got, like, 15 minutes into a Dennis Morton Fresh Friday run, and he was like, you know, Hey, Northern Lion, you sack of shit, you fat piece of garbage. Get out of my ride, you piece of shit. I'd be, I'd be thrown off my stroke for sure. I didn't come to this bike to- I don't pay 60 bucks a month to be condescended to, okay? Dennis. Also, I don't know if you guys ever go to the, uh, Peloton subreddit, r slash Peloton cycle, but it's very funny to me. And th this is extremely judgmental, so I'd like to apologize. But people will make threads. They'll be like, hi, I'm a 55-year-old man. I did my 300th ride yesterday live with Ali Love, and I didn't get a shout-out. I know it's silly, but would it be absolutely insane if I deleted the ride that I just took and then did another live ride for 300 so that I could possibly get a shout-out? And uh, all of the replies are like, no. You should definitely do that. What you should actually do is do 99 five-minute warm-up rides really quick, and then for your 400th ride, go back. You're more likely to get a shout-out for your for your 400th ride anyway. Or th th people will say, like, and you're entitled to use it however you want to use it, for the record. I'm just judgmentaling you. I'm judging you. People will say things like, um, Oh yeah, the American instructors are kind of stingy with their shout-outs. What I do is wake up at 2 a.m. for all of my milestone rides, and then I take a ride with a German instructor. And people are like, do you speak German? And they're like, that's the funny part. No. Just 29 minutes and 50 seconds of uh, complete confusion, not knowing what's going on. Then the brief little dopamine hit when you hear something, 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 your username, something, something. Yes! It was all worth it. It was all worth it to hear Mela Vedekin say my username for the first time. 
I guess people are just lonely. Maybe I should stop, like, punching down. But it is kind of crazy. I'm like, you're a grown adult. I just can't imagine riding a bike so a stranger says your name. But then again, I, I do know what business I'm in, so... That's a good point. We're right here. Yeah, but, like, I very rarely say people's names. Instead, I just steal what they say in chat. And then pass it off as my own. It's the way... Justin from Justin TV intended when he made the website. It's basically like a joke aggregator. Chat is like, you know, 5,000 people type what they think is the funniest thing at any given moment. I read them all and then just pick the funniest one and people go, wow, this guy's hilarious. Hey, 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 hey. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Wow, wow, wow. I, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say your names. I'm gonna I'm saying them mentally and I'm appreciating them mentally. I'm not gonna say them out loud, okay? Because I'm I'm principled, okay? I know you didn't do it just to get your name said out loud, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it. I it would I know that you're too smart to to give twenty five dollars to Twitch to have me say your name. So I'm not going to do you a disservice by insinuating that that's what you wanted. Also, I got to say, I was talking about how, to Corey about how I ripped my Lulu's, showed my damn Spanx off at the old spaghetti factory. And then uh, he, Corey said, Lulu, here you go. Lulu's are old, man. That's, Corey, Corey's into like the raw denim stuff. He puts his jeans in the freezer. He'll tell you. He says, the new thing is there's a local pant manufacturer called Dur, D-U-E-R. They make unbreakable, stylish pants with a gusseted groin. And I'm like, honestly, I was like, I got to check that shit out. I got to make my way down to Kitsilano and see what's going on at the Doors showroom. I do need some new pants. The Lulu's, one of the Lulu's is fine. The other one didn't even last six months. Now, the, I will say, in the Lululemon company's defense... Their social media team did tweet me and say, why don't you come into the store? We'll see what we can do. Um, and I just, I went straight up truth social on them in my head. If I, uh, uh, simply put, I would not waste my time going to your store. I would rather just purchase uh, pants from a store that don't break. Now you, you made some pants that were not as good as I was told to believe that they were. And now I've got to cancel my afternoon appointments to go to your store so you can give me a pair of pants I already bought in the first place. I bought five Lululemons because of you. I didn't regret it one bit. Now I'm cutting back on food. Why'd you do this to me? Oh, you're going to be fine. Unless you're as caked up as I am, the pants are probably going to last you a lifetime. I'm just built different, man. I don't know if it's like particularly acidic sweat or, or just like fucked up Mewtwo kinematics or whatever. Too many Peloton rides, but... Give me a soft package. The... I'm telling you, pants don't... St the shirts last forever. The pants, they get blown out like with reckless abandon. How come you can't hula hoop if you got the cake? Mm -hmm. I would say like I got the ass, but I don't really know how to use it. No one ever taught me how to use it. Have you ever heard someone try to explain how to hula hoop? It's like Wayne Gretzky trying to coach hockey. They're like, you just sort of spin it and then you go, ooh. That's, it, there's got to be another trick to it. People are just like, they, you just sort of hold it like this, and then you just go. You draw the rest of the owl. Throw that shit back like you're trying to knock pudding off of a table. What are you talking about? <laughs> hold on, wait a minute. I've got to get a hula hoop. NL, did you see that Kanye's music was pulled out of all Peloton rides? Listen, I got to feel like that's probably, I, I think it's the right thing to do. Don't get me wrong. I feel like Kanye's got bigger problems right now. I read online that something like point. 3.5 cents of royalties get paid to the artist every time their song is not used, but every time their song is played during a Peloton ride. So if like 20,000 people listen to it, they would like do the ride. They would get 20,000 times 3.5 cents. I think he's got bigger problems. Oh, it's only for new classes. All right. Yeah. Peloton, they don't have that kind of technology. They don't have the kind of technology to, to remove stuff from older classes. It's a small indie fitness company. 
Yeah, I'm into fitting. It's fitting this. It's fitting eight songs into a thirty-minute new wave ride. No, nope, not so. Plus two. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Fitting nineteen cops into this mouth. Come on, it's beneath you. No bike update. No, I didn't ride today. Listen to me. I do. I will say the literally the first two thoughts I had this morning when I woke up. I swallowed and said, holy cow, my throat's not sore. And then I said, that means I can ride the Peloton tomorrow. Probably going to be a shitty ride because I'm not going to be like 100% good to go, but that's completely fine. That's the start of getting back. No, the routine is not ruined. You got me confused with like someone in their 20s who's like, they do two rides in a row and they're like, yeah, I could do this for 45 years straight. And then they miss one day and they're like, I guess I'm not a cyclist anymore. Could a sick man do this? La 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 He's back. He's cured. I'm like, I would say I'm like 90, 95% cured. I did, um, I rode the Peloton this morning. I don't want to brag too much. Uh, 366 kilojoules, average of 203 watts. Listen, that's not PB territory, but it's like 90% of the PB, considering I coughed up an oyster while I was on the Peloton and just had to look at it for the next 22 minutes as it lingered there on my gym mat. I'm pretty proud of that, honestly. Me singing to my, uh, to my loogie that I coughed up on the gym mat, you know I'm such a fool for you. Had you wrapped around my fairing steer. Did I have to? Did I have to? Did I have to let it linger? But I did have to let it linger because I was clipped in. You sound normal today? How was the Peloton ride? Okay, so check this out. I, uh, I woke up a little bit late today. Our Halloween night was great, but it screwed up our bedtime routine just a little bit. So I woke up late and was like, I'm just going to do like the first 30 minute ride that I see. Click on 30 minute Dennis Morton classic rock ride because there's a Steely Dan song on the playlist. OK, then it gets started and it says 19 minutes, 45 seconds remaining. And I said, what the hell? Peloton's having a glitch. I couldn't have possibly made a mistake. Turns out I made a mistake. It was only a 20-minute ride, okay? Finish the 20-minute ride. It's the first 20-minute ride I've done since November 2021. So I, like, tripled my previous PB. And I was like, you know what? It still just doesn't feel like it's that good of a, a workout. So I threw in a 10-minute Ben Aldis climbing class afterwards. But here's the thing. Every single extra ride that you add has a one-minute warm-up and a one-minute cool-down. So that two minutes, and this is how tight things are scheduled right now. It's like a Canadian doctor's office. That two extra minutes was enough to push me out of having like a good shower window where I could shower and then get out and still help my daughter get ready for daycare. So I had to choose, am I going to shower early or am I going to help my, my wife get my daughter ready for daycare? I chose to be a good dad and that's how we ended up with the knock-on effect of it being 9.14 right now. I took like a 90 second shower at 8.58 a.m., popped out, took me longer to get dressed than it did to, to shower. What was your initial motivation for riding the Peloton? I was, like, fat, <laughs> to be honest. You are not? No, not now. Maybe a, a little softer than I'd like to be because I'm eating eight mandarin oranges a day. But, um, I was looking pretty puffy in the, you know, videos from, like, November last year, for sure. You were not? You got to remember as well, like when you look at me, and this is a little streamer trick. I don't really want to, I don't want to blow up streamer spots. My eye line is here. My camera is like, I don't know, four inches above it. So you essentially have no idea what I actually look like. That's so why I was getting annoyed by all those Halloween photos. Everybody, because we, we take them with our two-year-old, everybody gets down, like, on their knees to take the photo and then takes the photo from, like, the least flattering angle looking up. And I'm like, why the hell would I... I did 300 and, uh... 
15 peloton rides in 11 months just to have people take a photo from like three feet lower than my damn eye line from the daddy pig angle so basically i'm trying to say like i look like i'm like 5'10 but actually i'm like 6'7 i'm like i'm taller than steve nash i can tell you that much for sure why don't you kneel as well then why don't i kneel in every single photo so that um, people don't take a low angle photo of me. I guess because I'm not a psychotic um, freak. <laughs> I'm not a. Because <laughs> because a Halloween photo uh, with my toddler is not so much about me as it is about getting a family photo like with my daughter. Just start taking every photo from like no 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 you can't take that. Let me do it and then take it from the MySpace angle. And then go. Please stop lying. I'm not lying. I'm probably taller than Steve Nash. Although someone in chat said he's 6'3". I think they're lying. How was the Peloton ride this morning? It was It was great. Thank you for asking. I, well, great is maybe a stretch. It was good, though. 365, right on the button. 30-minute Emma Lovewell 90s ride. The playlist was all over the place, though, man. Listen, it had some Third Eye Blind. It had some Sublime. But then it also had, I don't know why everyone's like so fucking in the Lenny Kravitz, man. Lenny Kravitz makes like the most conventional music for a dude who dresses like David Bowie. Like, I feel like he's a very cool guy, but his music is not cool. His music is just like the, the standard, like, da 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 to be made by a guy who looks that cool. Okay, necessary caveat. It ain't over till it's over is the exception. That's a good song. He, he gets like the, he gets the same treatment as Andre 3000 where they're like, he's like uh, the modern day prince. And you're like, yeah, like when you see a photo of him, when you listen to his music, Andre 3000 is like, you know, a little bit prince-esque. And Lenny Kravitz is just like, I don't even know. He's just like John Cougar Mellencamp. I would never talk smack about Andre 3000. The only thing that I could say that would be perceived as smack on Andre 3000 is that I do think that even to this day, his popularity means Big Boy gets not enough credit. People underrate Big Boy just because he raps about stuff like, um, you know, having intercourse, which I think people consider prosaic. And Andre 3000, of course, is, you know, she trapped in my cadmium palace. But then when Andre 3000 raps about intercourse, everybody goes, bat, bat. So I type a text to a girl I used to see saying that I chose this cutie pie with whom I want to be. So I apologize if this message gets you down. Then I CC'd every girl that I'd CC'd around town. Hate to see y'all frown, but I'd rather see her smiling. Wetness all around me, true. But I'm no island. Peninsula, maybe. Makes no sense. I know crazy. See this all, see all this uh, cat up in my lap. No looking back, etc. It's like I, I fell asleep at like 11, 15. Then I woke up at like 1. And you ever like wake up, because I listen to like audiobooks while I'm falling asleep because I'm a scholar, as you just saw from me not knowing the uh, SI unit for electrical resistor, resistance, in, electrical inveterance. Um, so I, I woke up and I was listening to like an audiobook. And they have like that half asleep, half awake thing where you're like, I know I'm not asleep but I don't remember anything that I've heard for like the last 45 minutes. And then you look at the, it feels like a minute has passed and you look at your clock and like 45 minutes have passed, but you know you didn't have like a restful sleep. You're just kind of in that like 50 to 75% awake zone. So that was like two hours. And then I, so I slept like 11.30 to one. I was hypnotized from one to three. And then I slept from three to seven. So I don't know if that's like a good sleep or a, it's, it's certainly a below average sleep, but I don't, I don't know how to, how to quantify it as how much sleep I had last night, but. I, w I wasn't getting any REM there. One of the, one of the least fine rapid eye movement minds the world has ever known. I'm okay, though. Like, it's not that bad. Still had a 356 Peloton ride this morning. How's the Peloton ride? Oh, thank you for asking. <laughs> 
It was a good one. It was a good one. It was a good one for a couple of reasons. One, 30-minute Cody Rigsby pop ride um, at a 385 kilojoule output. I don't know what the average is um, in terms of wattage. I, I wasn't paying that close of attention. It must have been like a 213 to 215 wattage average. Pretty, pretty close. It would be like one of my top 10 rides, I think, in terms of output. Is he the horny one? Yeah, he did say he had his face up in a lot of people's crotches, for sure. But you, you are going to love this. First, a couple of things. He played two Carly Rae Jepsen songs. So already, anybody that was like, oh, I don't like this guy necessarily, all of a sudden, they're like, whoa, actually, he's my favorite instructor ever. And then he also solved a, a like five-year-long mystery for me because he played Bang Bang by Ariana Grande and Nicki Minaj, the song that Mouth has been referencing for five years despite not knowing anything about the song. He just knows the part where they go bang, bang into the room. And then he would keep saying it and we would be like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I don't know, it's just a song. So now I know it's, you know, I, I know the song now. I know it's a real song. I'm not trying to throw shade on Jesse J. It's the first time I've ever heard the song. I was, um, you know, doing intervals out of the saddle during that period. I was going, <gasps> did you have a good Peloton ride this morning? Thank you for asking. I did indeed. I, I went to the class list and it was, uh, it's all 20 minute, 15 minute classes. Shit's pissing me off. So I did the classic uh, NL stack, 15 minutes, T-Pain, buy you a drink, all for one music festival special, 15 minutes, Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month ride. Combined kilojoules of, of 360. It's not bad. How was the, uh, how was the Peloton ride this morning? I've been getting a little pissed off because they, they, they don't make enough 30 minute classes. Five minute warm up class. 45-minute power zone endurance ride, 20-minute uh, 90s rock ride. Shit started, I'm, I'm scrolling back in the list like three weeks. So I'm doing, I finally, I did a 30-minute a, a Bradley Rose uh, 90s pop ride. S Club 7, Spice Girls, NSYNC, 5. And, like, the output was good, but, like, it was, like, a mid-370s, like, a 375, 30-minute ride. It's maybe, like, a 205 uh, a watt average. But, like, I just, can you just pick, like, a, you just put, you put some good music on the Peloton? Like, why, why isn't there a 30-minute um, Leanne Hainsby... Hatsune Miku ride, where she's like, okay, um, you know, 80 resistance, 150 to 200 cadence, get ready, it goes, sure, I'll add who asked as a channel emo. If you just get a normal bike, you can listen to your own music, it's crazy. Yeah, and then your ass will like, no offense, but it'll be like lazy. You know, you're just out there riding like your own bike on the bike path or something like that. You're not going, you're not putting out 250 watts in the damn bike lane. You know, you're going to T-bone an SUV. I do wish that that who asked was just like a little smaller. <laughs> it's uh, why is it so wide? Damn, that is it, it might be one of the most toxic emotes I've ever seen, but that's OK. Here's the thing, like, you may not have asked, but, like, at the same time, like, you're here. So, like, in some ways, implicitly, you did ask. If you didn't ask, you would just leave. Or hit, like, the, the button that skips forward, like, 15 seconds on the podcast. I missed the Peloton report today. Hey! That's because Sipson Mouth didn't ask me about it. Very selfish. Uh, it was, like, a 373, something like that. Average of around 200 and uh, low 200 watts. 30-minute Cody Rigsby, Carly Rae Jepsen ride. I didn't really know Carly Rae Jepsen's uh, audiography that much. There's some slappers in there, man. Cut to the feeling. Um, uh, emotion, run away with me. I really, really, really like you. I will say I did not know that um, 
she did she did that song that took over the radio in 2015 that was like you don't even have to lie it's always a good time oh oh oh, oh it, no that that one i'm like mm, but i think that's owl city bringing carly ray jepsen down a little bit also not my boomer ass getting mad like clicking on hmm, 30 minute carly ray jepsen ride uh and then getting mad that there's someone in the background going the whole fucking, the whole fucking ride, every song. Singing it out, going. I'm like, excuse me, ma'am, I'm here to bike. I know some of us are here to party. I'm here to bike, okay? I'm here to bike. Based guy, it, it, was, it was a young lady. She was having a great time. Also, like halfway through the ride, she took her shirt off, but she did have like a sports bra on underneath but i was like holy cow like midway through the song she's like she's going at a cadence of 80 to 100 and then she goes she was she was really feeling herself anyway you want to talk for a minute well you know it was like um the other bit i wanted to do was i said like my arms hurt so much from from working out not that the workout was that intense i just haven't done like weights in a long time the shit the, i can't get out of my head like iced tea from law and order svu um being like doc in the lab says it's called delayed onset muscle soreness but kids are calling it doms some of these juiced up freaks are going so loco on the leg press they can't walk straight for 72 hours you know what i mean Anyway, sorry. <laughs> it just like this. Sometimes the bits just pop fully formed a little like into your head. Would you go to war for Canada? I would like rather not. Um, ideally. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. it kind of depends on the circumstances, I think. I would really rather not. Like, I don't have the skills. I don't think I have the temperament. I don't have that kind of like fervent patriotic desire. What if they tried to take your Peloton? Well, you know, every man has to know his limits. That's true. And I am sick and tired of being pushed around. You know what? Fine, I'll do it. <laughs> I think I would rather just move. I think, like, honestly, I, I would like to think maybe, like, if, if, if we were being invaded or something by, let's just say, the United States of America, okay? Part of me is like, I've got to stay and fight because that's not fair. And part of me is like, you can catch me in Belgium three days from now with a textbook that says learning Flemish, Flemish for dummies. You could catch my ass hiding out at the 1900 Strasplas. I don't know, I was just trying to come up with a, like a Belgian street address or something. And saying things like, you know, whenever a new Jim Carrey movie comes out, be like, uh, ah, did you know Jim Carrey's from Canada, actually? Very interesting. No, I just, uh, I just happen to know a lot of... I studied there. I went to university there. I lived in Vancouver for a bit as well. Was born there, uh, in many ways. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to think about it. It depends on the situation, man. Like if it was a John Wick thing and somebody like killed my Peloton, I don't know. I can't be held responsible for what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do. I know they don't want me, but I feel like you know, if I couldn't live in Canada and I couldn't live in the U.S., I think a Nordic country would be sweet to live in. Not just because of their robust social safety net, but also because it seems like in the like they seem and and if you're from the countries in the region, correct me if I'm wrong, but they seem. Uh, anti-social like me like they don't talk to each other uh, strangers don't talk to each other that's sweet I could get down with that I don't know if that's enough to like pass the citizenship test or whatever but if the quiz was like you know are you you're waiting for the bus and uh, you want to remark upon the weather to the person next to you. What do you do? I would say, oh, lock that shit down. I'm not, I'm not talking to them. I, I turn, I put my headphones in and turn up the volume and pretend not to notice anybody else. You know, I was taking a Beatles Peloton ride and uh, Dennis Morton, the instructor, was trying to tell me that Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds is not actually about psychedelics, even though the letters spell out LSD. He was trying to tell me that John Lennon's child brought home a picture that he drew at kindergarten 
and John Lennon asked him what it is, and he said, it's my friend Lucy in the sky with diamonds. I don't buy that shit for it. You must think I'm the stupidest motherfucker on earth. Picture yourself in a boat on the river with tangerine trees, and you telling me that this little kid drew tangerine trees and marmalade skies? He drew cellophane towers of yellow and green dancing all over your head. You telling me he drew all that? I don't buy it. Unless his kid was on LSD. John Lennon did say that, but I don't buy it either. I don't buy that shit for a damn second, man. 371, 30 minute, 203 watt average, Emma Lovewell 90s rock ride, okay? They've been slacking a little bit on the 30 minute rides. I had to go back in the catalog a little bit. I like the 90s rock rides, man, but they, it's too much like, too much Everlong, which is a great song, don't get me wrong, I heard it so freaking much now. Too much, uh, I, I, please, please, I just never want to hear uh, Give It Away by the Red Hot Chili Peppers ever again. Can I get some, uh, listen, they played the Possum Kingdom by the Toadies. That's a that's a song that I, you know, I could do some some pedaling to. They played uh, Tomorrow by Silverchair. I, I can do, a, you know, two and a half minutes out of the saddle at 60 to 70 there. That That's a good song. Can I get some, like, uh, semi-charmed kind of life, baby, baby? Yeah, can I get some my neck, my crack? Lick my something and my something? Pog Crazy featuring Ryan Gary. Okay, let me take a look at this. Yeah, sure. Well, let's just add that one right there. I'm, I think it'll become one of those Twitch streamers that just has, like, a billion uh, better Twitch TV emotes. There it is. Look at that. Peloton ride. It was, it was fine. 30-minute Samyo pop ride. It was like a 196 average. It's a lot of a lot of in the saddle fast speed. That's that's not the kind of rider I am for like peak output. I'm a, I'm an out of the saddle heavy climber, which is it, it's fine either way. It's, you know the the stuff that is harder to do uh, makes you stronger. Best pop song on the ride. I mean, it's not even close, bro. You got to go. Uh, Without a doubt, <clears throat> you got to go uh, uh, Elton John's Crocodile Rock. But I, I got to say, I got a soft spot for Stop by the Spice Girls, too. Just a nice slice of, uh, of summer pop from 1997. You ever fallen over with the shoes clipped in? I think I'd be dead. I think I would, I think I would die. I would at least break both of my ankles. And I, I think like just looking at the kinematics of the bike, like looking at the, the free body diagram... I'm reasonably confident um, that I would uh, like the I would fall over, both of my ankles would snap in half, and then um, the bike would fall over on top of me and shatter like my right. Which one is the your thigh bone? Is that the femur? Yeah, I I think I would break both of my ankles and then it would destroy my femur. <laughs> Yes, femur, I broke mine. Was it on the peloton? I think that the femur's got to be one of the worst bones to break, right? I don't know. What do you think? Listen, in terms of like the raw pain, like in the moment, I was thinking pelvis as well. I was thinking pelvis might be the worst. Okay, breaking your skull seems bad. Yeah, break, breaking your spine could lead to you literally being deceased. Okay, that's true. I think in terms of the ones that don't, like instantly kill you, <laughs> then like uh, probably um, I feel like the pelvis is pretty bad because like your your hips, your legs, everything, your your pussy and your crack, they all connect to it. <laughs> oh, that's the one I should have said when the overlay was still up. I couldn't say it with a straight face. Peloton ride. It was a good ride. Listen, it the output was only I was maybe like three sixty. It wasn't too incredible. Um, but it was a 30-minute Dennis Morton Fresh Friday ride. Those rides, the, the premise of those rides is he plays a song that generated a sample. So like old soul and funk and stuff like that. And then he plays the song that used the sample. So, you know, Michael McDonald's, I forget what the song is called. Oh, oh absolutely. Me for a second, hey, she wants grape juice. Wait, wait, 
Oh. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Yeah. I keep forgetting. Into uh, Warren G and Nate Dogg's Regulate. Into like some, you know. Yeah, you get the idea. No, they're not playing uh, Kid Charlemagne by Steely Dan into. Uh, in the champion by Kanye West anytime soon, but they could still play Kid Charlemagne. Did you post your Palaton wrapped? Excuse me, the annual isn't done until the end of December, but I, I, I would be happy to tell you my Palaton stats from this year, although I don't think chat wants to hear them because I talk about them every day. I was back on the bike today and I woke up early, so I was like, you know what, instead of the normal 30 minute ride, let's do a damn uh, 45 minutes Dennis Morton I don't even remember what the, the superlative was, but I do know they played a lot of Eminem. Help me. No! What? <laughs> it's incredible! We're definitely dead. What a play. Well, uh, we're going to have to pay out the doubters on that one. That was six. Are all the songs radio rated? I, I don't know what that means. Radio rated. Do they say the F word? They say the F word all the time. They say the F word persistently. They played uh, Bombs Over Baghdad today. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the song. It's by a little band from Atlanta called Outcast. Say a lot of bad words in that song. 45 minute Dennis Morton 90s ride, 516 kilojoules. Rough, rough uh, wattage. I would say we're looking at like 191, 191, 192. There you go. I know it was on all of your minds. I know it's, it's always the first question. I've been trying to, well, not trying. I've been, listen, okay? I've been pulling 12-hour shifts at the dad factory. I've been, I, I finally understand the meaning of burning the candle at both ends. You ever wonder why dads, they'll be like 60 years old and they'll be like, oh, it's 6.15, time to wake up? It's because it's like the only like personal time I get uh, all day. So, you know, getting up at 7 allowed me to, like, get my stuff done. Getting up at 6.30 allows me to drink a cup of coffee on the can and then do a 45-minute uh, Peloton ride in the morning. So I've been waking up at 6.30, pulling a little bit of time for my mornings. Have I caught up on Andor? No, I, I haven't. I will never catch up on Andor, but I definitely have not. Did I have a 45-minute Dennis Morton uh, jam band ride this morning? Yes. Yes, I did. That's the one thing that... that if those, if, if that routine starts to consistently break, you need to actually send like a mental health treatment officer to my door. Don't actually, but like someone in my family who cares for me should. <laughs> Gamers, I got to tell you, I got my tires changed yesterday. It's very, this is very Vancouver pilled, okay? Got my tires changed. They said it'll be about 90 minutes. Turns out that was a lie. It took about two and a half hours, but I'm not going to sweat that too much. Either way, I said, you know what? Maybe I'll get my ass a cheeky little sandwich while I wait. So I, I went for a little walk. It's a neighborhood that I'm, I'm unfamiliar with. Then I look up places to get a sandwich on my phone, and I see a place that was recommended to me by another daycare dad called La Grotto del Formaggio. I walk in. Catch my ass getting in a long line at a at a old school style deli. I wait, uh, you know, five minutes trying to figure. Every time you go to a new sandwich place, you're like, "Is this? Do I, am I supposed to know what's supposed to be on the sandwich in advance? Do I? I'll take a foot long cold cut combo on Italian herbs and cheese, please. I don't know what kind of toppings and breads you got. I don't know the ordering process. So I was like kibitzing on the people in front of me that were ordering. And then I got to the front and I said, "How large is your large sandwich?" And the lady held up a, a bread, like a bun, like a ciabatta, I would say. It was about the size of a, a regulation brick. Which doesn't, like, for a sandwich, when you're used to a foot-long sandwich, that seems reasonable. A, a brick-sized piece of bread sliced down the middle. You would not believe. Then she says, okay, what, do you, what kind of meat on it you, do you want on it? You can have up to two. I said, give me salami and mortadella. She said, what kind of vegetables do you want on it? And I looked at what appeared to be a, a 100 value comma separated list. 100 uh, length, I should say. A, a, an array, let's just put it this way. We instantiated it at size 99. I said, give me everything but the, the pickled eggplant. Then she said, do you want me to put it on the grill? And I said, you know it. Four or five minutes for it to come off the grill. She handed me the sandwich 
It's the single largest sandwich I've ever seen in my life. You know how Subway does sandwiches that are six inches long? This sandwich was six inches tall. It was unbelievable. I, I ate half of it and I felt like a like a, a, a molten cannonball of pork inside of my stomach. And then I said, I'll save the other half. And then I got bored and I eat the other half. That was at like 1.30 p.m., 2 p.m. yesterday. I uh, ate a very small dinner, went to bed, woke up, ate a very small breakfast, and am still not hungry. La Grotto del Formaggio, highly recommended. That being I will say, the large sandwich was $15.99. Listen, here's what I'll say. Even by Vancouver's standards, that is a pricey sandwich, but it's like 30% more expensive than what I would say the average Vancouver sandwich is and like a doubling in terms of the food. And I mean, versus Subway, don't even get me started on the quality of the ingredients. Fresh baked bread, meat that they, I don't know if they just slice it there, but they slice the meat right in front of you. It's not sitting there in a hopper with like, you know, tissue paper on top of it. Artichoke hearts. Roasted red peppers in the oil. They put some balsamic on it. They put some uh, fresh olive oil on it. They put a little pesto on it. They put some Dijon mustard on it. They got olives. They got pickles. They got hot peppers. They got yeah. They got you. They got me. They got yeah. Also, the, only two slices of tomato, but the freshest tomato I've ever... This was not a tomato where like you bite into it and it's like... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Like it's grainy. You know what I mean? This was a tomato that was like this. This most tomatoes are vegetables. This tomato is a fruit. Now I understand that most, uh, literally all tomatoes are fruits. But you know, most tomatoes when you eat them, they taste like a vegetable. This one tasted like a fruit. Meaty? I wasn't meaty though. It was like I don't even know. It was like biting into an orange. Must have needed a good Dennis Morton classic rock ride to burn that off. Um, listen, I'm not going to say that I got, um, 191 watt average 45 minute Dennis Morden rock ride this morning. I'm not going to say that the baby was dropped off on time. I'm not going to say that I was only two minutes late, which is pretty much like on time for me these days. I'm feeling good. Was the tomato orange in hue? No, it was, it was a deep red, man. Like a deep red. I'm trying to think of what it would even compare to. I can't think of, of... How much more deep red could it be? Like none more red. Yeah, it, it was like it was close to blood red. Exactly. Like a like a ruby in the board game Splendor. Sure. Why not? It was as red as a really red tomato. Hey, NL, I work for Peloton in the EU. I tune into this to escape. OK, well, honestly, no disrespect. But if you work for Peloton, shouldn't you just be thankful um, that you still have a job? Because. <laughs> Not to be like insanely rude, but they laid off like like 65% of their staff this year, right? The stock price is down like 92%. Everybody's out here saying, why would you pay $2,000, then $60 on top of that every month just to use it? And I'm like uh, the only person that's like, it's good, guys. It's good. So honestly, you should say like, you know, thank you to me a little bit. Or at least like not complain. I guess I don't need you to say like I'm a hero or whatever, but you shouldn't be out here like complaining. I'm a little scared. We're up against Smash Boss 19 RP87. I love looking at usernames in this because it reminds me of. Uh, I don't know if other people know this. As a millennial, I'm kind of the bridge between Gen Z and um, Gen X, right? Did you know that the average person whose name is Gen Z on Peloton, their name is like their full name. That's it. They're, they're built to brand themselves as individuals online from the word go. Every man between the age of 45 and 55 on the Peloton has named themselves and chosen the appropriate profile picture of like a side character from The Big Lebowski or Anchorman or Zoolander or Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Jurassic Park. Every day on the Peloton, I'm passing Jackie Treehorn, I'm passing Brick Tamland, I'm passing, uh, you know, Cameron from Ferris Bueller. Like, I don't know what it is. Are Gen X men okay? They're all named after, like, side characters from Will Ferrell movies. So what's your name? My name is Holmes and Watson. Holmes and Watson. The other one that, that, that you see all the time, and this is like, I, I'm sorry, I have to flip the genders, so I'm going to offend some people here. A lot of uh, middle-aged women out there whose names are like, I bike for Pinot. I bike for Chardonnay. 
nobody's biking for Merlot ever since Sideways came out, but I, like, I just can't imagine where you're at in your life where you put that in your username. Where you're like, oh, I'm here to like uh, get healthy. What should I put in my username? I'm only biking so I can drink uh, more Jack Daniels. Okay. I love wine. And popcorn. I feel appropriately dressed today for this, by the way. We'll bike for absinthe. I don't see them on the leaderboards, but I have to assume it's because they passed me. I'm not breathing heavy. My conditioning is goaded right now. I didn't even tell you I did a, a 45 minute Dennis Morton 90s ride this morning from like pre-pandemic from 2020. I didn't even update the, the damn Peloton stats. What's your FTP? Excuse me, I haven't done FTP yet, okay? It's kind of like my New Year's resolution for the Peloton is to start doing Power Zone. I just haven't done it yet because I'll probably miss a couple of days over the holidays. I want to get a fresh start early January. Did I miss the Peloton update? No, you did not miss the Peloton update. I had a good ride. 45-minute Emma Lovewell 90s ride. Wasn't feeling like uh, I was going to have a great ride this morning. 196 wattage. 520 something kilojoules 45 minutes feeling good feeling this eight minute climb kind of nasty with it but but felt uh, felt good when we got it done and then a w 60 seconds on 60 seconds off interval to nine inch nails closer i want to pet you like an animal i want to touch you on the outside <laughs> You bring me closer to dog. I, I hid the illness for, for two days, but I, I was a little stuffed up this morning. It affected my, my Peloton ride. Only happened to get a, a, it was like a 485, 45 minute Dennis Morton reggae ride. But then I thought that maybe part of the reason I didn't do so well on the ride is because I don't know any reggae. But it was still like a pretty good, it was a pretty good ride. Can't really complain. Thoughts on Bradley Rose? I find his demeanor a little grating. No disrespect. I guess a little disrespect. Um, but I, I like some of his playlists and I like his, his programming. So I do occasionally ride with, with, with Bradley Rose. Peloton Sporkle? No, we won't be doing that. But I, I appreciate the suggestion. How was, uh, how was the Peloton today? It was, it was pretty good. It was like a 5.02 kilojoule 45 minute emma lovewell classic rock ride dude we're running out of 45 minute rides i'm scraping the bottom of the barrel when you start to hear that i am doing um 45 minute edm and like acid house rides please check on me i'm gonna i, I am i'm gonna have to start doing a 30 and a 15 but the problem is that like half of the fucking like the 30s start with like a seven minute warm up, and then the 15s start with like a three minute warm up. So now you got a 45 minute workout, but it's a, a quarter of it is, is warm up, and then the animals are leaving, and the, you know, you get the idea. Dan got his Peloton. Dude, I'm so happy that maybe I'll have someone to be on the leaderboards with. Like, I, for the last, when I first started riding the bike around like November, December 2021. Everybody on my friends list, which is was two people at the time, was riding. Peloton country, let's ride. I'm 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 stunned that we did okay there. I'll take my five wins and be happy. Then like slowly, slowly they just bled off. For the last nine months, it's just been me riding every day. My dad riding three times a month, Dan riding never, and Corey has six lifetime rides. That nothing is, and Corey, I don't know if you're here, maybe you're streaming right now. Nothing is more insulting to me than the fact that you bought a Peloton, and you have six lifetime rides. Like, I've gotten to the point, maybe it's toxic, maybe you would not do this, but I, like, once a month, I, go, I will send Corey, like, a message on Discord that says, like, um, maybe a delicious package. Um, that, that says, like, Corey, ride your Peloton, and then the puncher's emote. And then he always says, like, lol, I should. And I'm like, you piece. <laughs> I'm excited, because Dan, he's, a, he's, a, he's Mr. Consistency, he, and he's a little competitive. It'll be nice to have someone to, you know, like, not compare numbers in, like, a negative way, but, like, Compare numbers in a motivating way with on the platform. Can chat add you on the Peloton? 
Uh, my profile's on private, and I, uh... I'd say, like, once every two months, I just decline a random friend request. And oftentimes, it is, like, a, a male in their mid-twenties. And I'm like... They probably... They did something like data mining to figure out what my profile is and then send me a friend request and then I'm just like, boop, decline. Get it. <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in a great uh, place with my exercise routine right now. I don't need uh, people jumping into every ride that I do going, high five, high five, high five, high five, high five, high five, high five. Hey, great ride today. Hey, whoa, cool. What, you had like 500 output on a 45 minute ride? That's cool. I remember when I used to, I had 700. I had 700 today. I had 715 today. No, thank you. That's what Dan's gonna do? Yeah, but I know Dan in real life, so it's like not a, it's not as annoying. Yeah, I also don't wanna like, maybe I'm like sick one day or I'm not feeling it. People are like, oh, hey, NL, no ride today. You feeling okay? You didn't do your usual 45 minute alley love jagged little pill ride. What happened? Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put that evil on myself. Hey, NL, why? Oh, you did the. 10 minute uh, post-workout stretch with Hannah Corbin again, I see. Personally, I prefer the Ben Aldis ones. Because I like to hear him say, mate, you're crushing this workout every 45 seconds, even though he has no idea who I am. I'm just trying to keep like a healthy work-life balance, okay? You can add me on Peloton. My name is, as you, as you predicted, my name is Dwarf Fortress Enjoyer 2021. My name is Let's Go Bucks. Mother of seven. You can, it's more easy to find me by the, by the tags that I ride with. You can find me riding under the... Um, <laughs> this, is, this is looping back to a, pre a previous bit, which is people go way too wild on their Peloton names and tags. Name will be like, I ride for Chardonnay. Their number one hashtag, hashtag will be like, Blue Lives Matter. And I'm like, I'm just so confused about what... I know too much about you for somebody who is, like, I'm just riding my bike next to you. That's not even, like, that's fictionalized, but it's based on extreme reality. <laughs> it's fictionalized, but it's based. That's, dude, you can say, I'm not gonna say it. There are a lot, I honestly, like, I feel like, <laughs> this is, I don't really care, I guess is the first thing I should say. But I feel like Peloton instructors should stop calling out names that are like, I ride for beer, hashtag beers after, will ride for wine. Because I'm like, I'm getting on the damn bike at like 6.45 in the fucking morning. I'm just trying to mind my own business. Like every third name that they shout out. Is, well, usually there's like, doc if someone's a doctor, they put their, their profession in their name. Dr. Peloton, 64. Podiatrist on Pelo. And then the, the, the middle third of names is Gen X men who are named after a movie character. You, I, I am your Huckleberry, Doc Holiday hashtag whiskey after, you know? But then the other one is all like, we'll ride for Chardonnay. And I'm like, I'm just over it, man. Yeah, Peloton, Bateman, Patrick Bikeman. Riding so I don't go crazy. That this is my me time. Like you could do hours of of just Peloton username scrolling, and you would laugh like every ten seconds. What's worse, the Mordhau community or the Peloton community? Probably the Mordhau community for sure. You don't see too many people on the Peloton that seem to actually believe that life was better in like the Middle Ages. Hey NL, how was the Peloton? It's like a classic uh, forty-five minute Emma Lovewell '90s ride. I think we were 512 kilojoules. It's not bad. It's the first Peloton ride in three days where I didn't uh, cough up an oyster on the, on the ride. So that's how you know we're on the up and up. I will say Peloton came out with their Peloton wrapped. And it is extreme ass. I was so looking forward to seeing like my stats. But it's like a 30 second video that's like... You c -c -c killed it in 2022. You rode for... Zoom, zoom, zoom. 1,300 kilometers. Your favorite instructor was Sam Yo. And I'm like, this is the best you could do? Peloton update. Yeah, we're doing the early game part of this, early stream part of the stream at the late part of the stream. Uh, it was good. It was like 525, 45 minute Dennis Morton jam band ride. I don't know any of the bands that he played, except I've heard of Fish. 
but I had a, I felt like I was, uh, I was primed this morning. I felt good. I went to bed at 9.30 last night, partly because, you know, it, it snowed a lot in Vancouver. Uh, so I took my daughter out in the, in the sled to go tobogganing, you know, to go sledding. Then it's, I dragged her like, you know, two kilometers to the park on the sled and then we did two sled rides, and she was like, Daddy, I don't like sledding. Can I go on the swing? So they catch me with my gloves on, cleaning like five inches of snow out of the swing, and then putting her in it in her like marshmallow snowsuit, just wondering how I'm going to get her out of the, the swing when she's done, and then dragging her the two kilometers home. So I think I was just really tired, but that meant that I went to bed early. Like, I, I, I'm a shell of a man, but I'm kind of living for it, if I'm being honest with you. Like, I, I was on bedtime duty for the baby last night. I put her to bed at, like, 9. I walked downstairs, had a piece of bread, and was like, what am I going to do? Nothing sprung to mind. I said, let's brush our teeth and get ready for bed. I got nothing else to, <laughs> nothing else to do. Mind you, I got up at 6 and, like, you know, worked out for, like, 90 minutes or something. And then, you know, hung out with the baby a lot yesterday and you know, doing domestic stuff around the house. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't like I woke up at noon and then went to bed at nine, but still. These days, I'm like, you know, it's, it's 9 p.m. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Maybe I'll watch something on Netflix for five seconds. And I'm like, nah, man, just it's not worth it. Just go to sleep. Bro, men are so stupid. And I'm talking about myself. You know, new today. It was going to snow. Thought maybe we could drive. Woke up in the morning and was like, I'm not driving in this. You got to be crazy. Instead, I'm going to drag my daughter in her sled all the way to daycare. It's a few kilometers, whatever. No big deal. It'll be a nice opportunity for like another workout after the Peloton this morning. Pissed off because we were like later than I wanted to leave. So I knew I was going to be late getting to daycare. So I knew I was going to be late getting home and starting the stream. Walked, uh, walked her to daycare, huffing and puffing the whole way, dropped her off at daycare, walked back, was like, oh, it's freaking 9.30, I'm so annoyed with myself for being late, just annoyed with the day, threw the sled outside to uh, make sure that it melted so I could pick her up from daycare at like, you know, 4.30 or whatever, closed the door before moving my hand out of the way, crushed my thumb between the, the hinge and the door was immediately like, fuck. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was about 18 minutes ago. I, I don't think it's broken. I, I, you're going to laugh because of the extended food poisoning bit, which is not a bit, it was my life. But I, I really don't exaggerate industries. If anything, I actually kind of understate what's going on. I, I can show you the thumb, okay? It's all taped up. This is after having compressed it for a little bit and, and put a little Band-Aid underneath the gauze. And I can still bend it, which is, I think, a great sign. But definitely, like, it was bleeding like a son of a gun. And the, the bottom of the nail turned, like, completely white. So I think that's going to be an interesting kind of narrative arc to follow over the next day. <laughs> Uh, which is going to be interesting. You, I think you can tell also, maybe you can't, but I got like, I have adrenaline in my, in my voice. Like I'm still, I'm a little shaky, but not as, not as shaky as I was like, you know, 15 minutes ago. Let me put it that way. It's not broken. It's, it's a little fucked up, but it's not broken. I can move it. I can bend it. There's not extreme pain. I don't think I'm in, um, shock right now <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think i'm in shock i don't think that there was to that extent but i definitely think that this hand is gonna be fucked up dude <laughs> i think it's gonna be it, this hand is gonna be fucked up for like just a little bit but that's okay how was the peloton it was good 45 minute emma lovewell 90s ride 526 kilojoules. Real question is how tomorrow's Peloton ride is going to be. I might have to just do a, a 20 minute core class <laughs> on the on the floor. Yeah, you need your thumb. You need you need your thumb to 
hold the handlebars out of the saddle. I mean, if you had like an insane core, maybe you wouldn't need it, but otherwise you need it. It's not like I'm going to fall over, but still, you ride with your thumbs. I mean, you need like your, your whole body, basically. I'm not saying like your thumbs are the things pushing the pedals, but you, you need them. I was going to make a tweet with my Peloton rap stats because I, I literally biked 5,300 or 400 kilometers or something in 2000. Like I put more miles on the Peloton than I did on my car. Then I just knew as soon as I tweeted it, people were going to be like, actually, you put zero miles on your Peloton. Because it's a stationary bike. It doesn't go anywhere. Can I tell you something? Speaking of someone watching me, I, my Peloton is right here, right? I was about halfway through the ride this morning. My computer woke up out of sleep mode. And I was like, what the hell? And I got it. I, I had OBS open. I made sure like it wasn't recording or streaming. But just in case I was getting spied on by the FBI, I got to be honest, I kicked it into like the next gear. I didn't want them to be like, whoa, dude, look at this loser. Look, here's all his data. And he's not even in good shape. Give me a second here. Give me, I gotta move myself. I'm doing this all one handed for the record. And doing it one handed after getting the 522 kilojoule output on an Emma Lovewell 2000s ride. Now, I know yesterday I did a 535, so you're gonna be like, that's actually represents a downgrade. Well, first off, you can't really look at, you know, progress as if it's just a line that goes straight, you know, up and to the right. Like it, it, it has, on a short term basis, it has little wobbles and, and turbulence and stuff. It just tends to go up and to the right. It definitely goes to the right. It tends to go up, let's put it that way. But then the other thing is the playlist was complete ass. That 535, I was riding to the damn Beatles. That 522, Sean Paul, Black Eyed Peas, Jennifer Lopez. Soul Decision? I didn't even know that Americans knew what Soul Decision was. VIP Daniel, are you here? Did you know Americans know about Soul Decision? She was talking about this song like it was some kind of gem nobody had ever heard before. I was like, lady, I heard this song every eight minutes on much music. Kind of faded, but it feels all right. Think about making my move tonight. But the end of the night, I'm gonna go down and I'm coming on home to do, do, do. Anyway, how'd the thumb handle the Peloton ride? It was no problem. It was a, I, call me Mr. Consistency. It was a uh, 526 kilojoule output yet again. 45 minute Hannah Corbin classic rock ride. This lady's crazy, man. Like the ride is not that hard. But she doesn't tell you what the segments are going to be before you do the segments. So she's like, there's a juicy Jimi Hendrix section in the middle here. I'm like so uh, conditioned to like, you know, three to six minute bursts. She plays like some kind of uncut version of uh, Voodoo Child that's 14 minutes long. It's out of control. Still, it, went, it was good though. It was good. I got no water, man. <coughs> Yeah, no, that's how I know my Peloton ride was hard today. I basically drained both water bottles. <sighs> Just doing a classic 45-minute uh, Emma Lovewell 90s ride. One of the two rides she's ever made where she didn't use um, Good by Better Than Ezra. You know that one? Ah, uh -huh. it was good living with you, ah, uh -huh. It was good. Ah, you know that it's a good song. Don't, don't be a hater. You remember that one that goes, "I am barely breathing. She is barely there. Something on a hoodoo, pretending that you care." You know that one? <laughs> I am barely breathing. Okay, it's uh, someone is common posting from Sesame Street. How was your Peloton ride? D d okay, go ahead. Who asked? Who asked? It was actually really good. I, I don't know if anyone else here is Peloton pilled. I got sick of Emma Lovewell. Like, I think it's, it's good to pepper it in now and then. But it, I, the last ride I did with Emma Lovewell, like every 90 seconds, she was like, accelerate your legs to 100 to 120 cadence. And I was like, lady, you gotta, you gotta give me like a little period to slow down. You gotta give me like a three minute out of the saddle jog at, at 65 to 75 or something like that. You can't just constantly be like 80 to 100, 100 to 120, 80 to 100, 100 to 120. So I got, I got back on my Sam Yo BS. I had a great ride. It was uh, 
45 minute 80s ride, Billy Joel, We Didn't Start the Fire. It's probably my third best 45 minute ride by output. It was, uh, I think it was 541 kilojoules. And also, listen, there was a, I'm not trying to be an extreme hater, but midway through the ride, a woman in her 70s joined the, the ride, okay? And I'm just going to say her output was a little sus. I'm not saying that, the, that no 70-year-old woman could hit the numbers that she was hitting. And I know you're going to say you're just mad because she was ahead of you. No, I was smoking her. She was getting absolutely crushed. But she was putting out like a 160-watt average for 45 minutes. And I was like, come on, man. I, I just, I simply don't buy it. I think she tweaked her machine. Or maybe like her, her son or her daughter is riding it or something like that. It's just, it's just too much. I, do, I don't believe, maybe she was hacking. Check him Peloton, exactly. He's 30. Have you seen Slackers? I don't think I can imagine any other streamer who might have seen it. Have I seen Slackers? What a ridiculous question. I love you, but... I hate you, which brings to mind how much I love you. We could have worked things out, you know, in my little room, in my little locked room. I'm sorry that you had to settle for Dave, the one dimensional man. He's filed under cocksucker in my little black book. Sweetness can rot your teeth, bittersweet, cacophony, and you hold the key, you hold the, you think I don't know every word from Slackers? Devin Sawa, Jason Schwartzman. Kind of insane this information occupies space in your brain. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that sometimes when I like, I hear a song, usually like during a Peloton ride, I'll, I'll hear a song that I've literally not heard since like 1998, and I still know 80% of the words. I'm like, what are you doing in there? 